Well, I know that must be some people's favourite record, Steve. Well, it's certainly one of mine. Thunder Road. Bruce Springsteen. I won't hear a bad word said against the boss. A lot no. of people dismiss him, as you said in the past, as mm. being some kind of stadium rocker, but you can't listen to Will a song you... like that and not be moved. Surely, Carl. It's alright, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> a passionate man. Yeah. What? So, Carl. No, 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 it's right. So, oh, there's certain songs like that was that was all right. It didn't sound mm. anything. If it wasn't Bruce Springsteen, if someone new came out saying like that, I'd, I'd go, yeah, it's all right. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're a regular yeah. Simon Cowell, aren't you? <laughs> I, I don't know if I like music as much as I used to now. That's what happens when you work in it, isn't it? Because was yeah. a, a, Danny Minogue was on the telly. In the Is week. it like when you work in a sweet factory and you, you don't you don't nick the Mars bars after a couple of months? Yeah. Yeah. Danny Mo Minogue was on the telly in the week, right? Yeah. And. Uh, she was doing doing a medley. Yeah. Why do people do them? Well, to try do and get all the hits. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. But who was that busy that they haven't got time to listen to a full album or? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, like it's like a meal in pill form. Yeah. Well, I like most of Danny Minogue's hits, but I don't like the whole song. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to just like pop the best bits down, thirty seconds. Put them all together. Yeah. Well, I've got, um, a Stars on 45 record from the 70s. Do you remember those? Yeah. Stars on 45. But it's that, like you say, it was, I mean, this one had kind of, it would be a snatch of Stevie Wonder, followed by the MASH theme, followed by Layla, just the intro. <laughs> it was sort of, it's yeah. not music. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Well, we do a bit of that, don't we? That's what DJing is, isn't it? It's a bit of everything. But we play the whole song, don't we, often? Mm. Yeah, we're, we're better, aren't we, Carl? Oh. So, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, do you want to look at the list? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's got described looks. That's our list we've put. So this is a very amusing sort of link about describing your look. I don't know. What's this? I don't remember this. No, I just was thinking, like, uh, you know, everyone's got an idea in their head, right? Of what well, well. Careful, <laughs> 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 Carl. Don't open yourself up to criticism. Go on, yeah. Everyone's got no, an idea. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got an idea of, uh, what they look like and stuff. Uh, if someone wanted to know what, what I look like or what Ricky looked like or what you look like, Steve, if that. Yeah. Um, what would you use to describe yourself? Do you know what I mean? Words. Not really. I don't understand. What, what do you mean? Well, like, uh... Someone who doesn't know us, we've got to describe and we've... What, what's, what's the game to hopefully get some sort of interpersonal language going so you know they've got the same image as you? To well, a certain yeah, I, extent. I'm just thinking, if I was to meet Steve in a restaurant, yeah, right, I'd, I'd, I'd nothing I'd, untoward going on. We're just hanging out. We're no, just having a chat, just yeah, having sure. a normal night out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Who's paying? Because I mean, <laughs> is it expensive? Go Dutch, go Dutch, go Dutch. <laughs> I mean, right. So, I, I I say to you, I'll I'll see you at eight, right, in yeah. this in this restaurant. I turn up at the door. It's a bit of a posh place, mm -hmm. right. Uh, so he's uh, Steve Merchant in. Yeah. And the waiter sort of goes, I I, I don't know, what does he look like, right? And, uh, Where's he from? Just a f little French fella. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, what does he look like? So I'd, the th thing I'd pick up on first, tall, tall lad. Tall, yeah. And then he goes, oh, well, you know, we got lots of tall people in. Right? Yeah. And I go, oh, big eyes? <laughs> big eyes? Yeah. And then he'd go, yeah, he's over there. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, you can have dinner and you can buy me dinner. I'm not sure you're gonna get anywhere with me. If you're slagging me off. <laughs> no, no, I'm not slagging you off though, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just yeah. using using what comes to mind when and you And can I just- can, Tall can and I, big eyes. Can I assume that they know, like, could I say, like, the easiest for me would, I'd say, uh, looks like Reg Varney from On The Buses. Would they understand that? Can I use sort of, like, kick yeah, references? Yeah, he's, he's, he's 30-odd, this, this waiter, so he'll- yeah, So he'll I go, go oh, yes, it's, it's, uh, Reg Varney is sitting over there. Yeah. So yeah, he went right. German towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> See, I describe you more, Rick, I think, as- I would imagine, I'd say, have you ever seen that Johnny Vegas on the telly? <laughs> yeah. Imagine he was inflatable and he just let out a little bit of air. <laughs> well, at least that's, that's nice. what Ricky would look as like. As opposed to like, you know, pumping harder. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, um, I'll describe, Carl I'd describe as, you know those little red monkeys that you see on wildlife programs, they're little, they're in the trees and they scream when they see a, a, a <laughs> leopard or something. <laughs> I think so. Shave that. Just right. shave one of those little red monkeys and put some sort of, um, you know, old sort of Manchester gear on it, maybe. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean? A, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, yeah. Banana rack and some baggy jeans. I'd uh, like to see how the waiter would react to that. I yeah. Sh he's got a picture of a monkey, then he's got a picture of it shaved. <laughs> so he's got no hair, he'd and then dressed like some kind of mank scally. There go, he's, he's over there. Yeah, he's over there, Carl's over there. That's what I'd do. Brilliant. So, uh, 
Now, now coming up the verb, after that, an um, amusing link about gay handkerchiefs. <laughs> really? Looking forward to this. Lucky Man by the Verve on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, what's the problem with gay ankies? You were, you played Bruce Springsteen last week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you said he had, uh, got a load of trouble on his hands when he had, uh, had a hanky in his back pocket. Did I say that on air or? Off well, we were just saying that famously on the cover of the Born to Run, uh, Born in the USA album, it's just him, isn't it, with a, just a, the, his backside basically, with yeah. a, a red handkerchief. I wasn't looking. Well, I just, uh, well, I, well I did it for research purposes. <laughs> for this amazing link. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, he had a red handkerchief, I think, in his right hand pocket, and apparently yeah, that signifies, uh, homosexuality. Apparently, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I thought it was which way you take, I don't know. These, these myths, aren't they? Right, yeah, well, exactly. I don't even know if, if this is... No, well, I, I read up about it. Okay. Right? Just research. And, uh, it's all sort of, you know, you've got all different coloured ankies. Are they? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? And, uh, it depends what pocket you put it in yeah. as well. So you've got, like, the different colours, yeah. different pockets. Yeah. And, uh, Sorry, how many variations are there? Different pockets is what? Well, you've got, like, your, your back pocket, your right back pocket. But what do they mean? Pocket. What do you mean? Well, what do they signify? You can't just tell us they signify something. What do they signify? Well, some some stuff that we don't really want to talk about, to be honest. What? Sort of uh, stuff that gays are into. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? So what do you mean? With, uh, with Barbara Streisand records. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eurovision. <laughs> no, like a couple of things that were there that I know we can mention. He said something about. I love that. What he thinks he can't mention, yeah, I love yeah. it. Decency. What is this? 1956. No, no, no. But I mean, it isn't just you know having it away. Having <laughs> <laughs> it away. I love him. No, having it away. <laughs> you get up to some weird stuff. <laughs> I love the fact he didn't want to offend, but he's yeah. offended a lot more people yeah, yeah. by saying they get up to some weird stuff. Right. In your opinion. Yeah. What do you mean? No, do I, what, no but don't, 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 if it's, if, if there is something that I don't know about that it's like you can't say on the radio. Yeah, I don't, but, I'd, I'd rather not. But what do you mean weird stuff? Well, one of them, right, if you've got a red anky, right? <laughs> yeah. In your right pocket. Like yeah. Bruce. Yeah. That's that exactly what, what Bruce had, yeah. Right. Well, apparently then, Bruce is an armpit freak. An, ar an armpit freak? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> really? No. No. But Carl. that's very specific. Carl. Seriously. Well, what, right, okay, right, okay. What else is there then? Sorry, is there some kind of homosexual body that sat down and, and came up with this at some point? Well, you said we've got, well, this is getting crazy. You've got like a blue handkerchief in your top breast pocket. I don't know what that means. You need to sit down and some kind of summit, figure out what it means. Yeah. It, it, it's just that you're not, you're not free from it either. So if you were to go in, in, in like a gay bar, yeah. Which, you know, you might do if you're straight anyway, because they're, you know, good, good places, I think. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, you can't actually go in there if you've got a cold, because every coloured hanky represents something. Right. So, if I was to go in, add a bit of a, a sniffle, sniffle, I could get into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> right. Well, for that, a Marks and Spencer's white linen hanky, that means you Ooh. like to be tied up and whipped. Yeah. There was another one, um, Armpit freak we've covered. Uh, yeah, armpit freak is done. <laughs> we've covered. An armpit freak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So, I know. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah. But there was just one other thing, like a blue and white one, <laughs> is if you're into sailors. To so, sailors? Yeah, if you have a little blue and white anky, that's in your left pocket. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, blue and white equals sailor. That's so, it. I wanted to ask you something. You know, uh, but again, we've got to be careful here. You know when, um, uh, you wouldn't leave the, the building that was on fire because um, uh, you were, you were standing proud. Hang on, we need this, so some people know, don't know what you're talking about. You, Carl, you're on holiday. Yeah. On you, holiday in Tenerife, right? Yeah. You'd, you'd had a moment of intimacy with your girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. A knock on the door, you had to stop and get up, and you peeked around the door, it was a fireman saying get out, but you didn't want to leave because you had a, yeah. Yeah. It was a little, yeah. yeah. But, what I, I, what I don't understand is you maintained that while looking at a, a Spanish man dressed as a fireman. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Is that, is that the fact? You maintained, I'm sorry to say, you, you maintained a, um, you know, arousal whilst looking at a gentleman dressed yeah, as a fireman. No, 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 is, is that, these are the facts and they are undisputed. What, did but you I'm maintain- not, I'm not a, a machine though. Do you know what I mean? I can't turn it on, turn it off. 
Oh, but, well, yeah, but you talk, you, I, I just thought, talking to a fireman, you'd have probably lost it. I don't know, but you didn't. No, you, but the you... other thing was, I mean, <laughs> I was talking to Suzanne about it again, right? Yeah. She said, what are you talking about that for? Right. I said, oh, it just cropped up, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the dilemma was, she said, I wanted to try and make sure that it was a proper fire because that was the last condom we had, right? <laughs> so it would have ruined the night. So yeah. I was, I, I didn't want to like, it was like, you know, well, what's going on? Is yeah. it, is, is, is it, do we yeah. need to get out? Yeah. Is it a proper fire? Yeah. And you, uh, and, and talking so, to this man in uniform, was he, what, what did he look like? Was he quite, was he good looking? Did he look like Ricky Martin, say? Was he good looking? Was he good looking in his uniform? Uh, I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember. Did he have a moustache? <laughs> Better play a record, didn't we? Oh. Is this bringing it back? What? You look uncomfortable. What, what? Did you just switch this on with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> the flaming lips, and that's fight test. Lips and test. <laughs> lips <laughs> test. On M. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking there about uh, homosexual people, and I'm sure we'll move on to other topics. Um, but I just mentioned, my, I was talking to a friend of mine in the week, uh, Rufus, and he overheard, uh, he pieced together the, you know, sometimes if you overhear a conversation, you can piece together what's going on. Yeah. You know, and, um, it sort of transpired from what he could, what he could make out that one gay guy had just realised or just found out that his gay boyfriend uh, had um, maybe been having an affair and was on the phone um, and had called this person, the third party. So the other one was crying, wasn't it? The other one was crying in tears. Obviously, they just had a, a big argument about it. And all he heard on the phone was, was the guy saying in a very kind of earnest tones, I'm gonna do everything in my power to destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like to think what that was. No what was he, you know? No more guest list to <laughs> GAY. GAY. I am going to, uh, slash your diesel jeans with a pair of scissors. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, well, they're listening now. I know, I mean, it's probably an emotional time for them. Yeah, but they probably don't think we're talking about them. No, not those. It's people. probably happened quite a lot this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly. I, uh, I, I do know quite a lot of, uh, gay people, mm -hmm. right? But they do, um, they do jump about when it comes to partners. Right. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> no, Lee, Lee, freedom of speech. Yeah. Let the man speak. No, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's quite, it, you know, they don't, you know, if they get bored, they move on on that. <laughs> Which is fair enough, but they do, uh... And they How do piece this together? And they go out late, don't they? Well, we've covered that, haven't we? We've done that. Yeah. How have you... So, you're... You do you know how we covered that? His favourite record is Killing a Georgie. And he went, at the end of the record, he went, see? But how late was it? Yeah. If he'd have been sort of going out at a decent time, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> do you know what I mean, Steve, though? They're, yeah. they're always getting ready to go out about half past one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Asking for trouble. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, I should just point out that, um, oh dear. that, uh, we've had an email, I've lost it here now, but anyway, it was one of our listeners saying that we've slightly embarrassed ourselves because, of course, Bruce Springsteen on the cover of uh, Born in the USA doesn't actually have a handkerchief in his back pocket, it's actually a red baseball cap. Right. So, um, well, well, I don't know if that also counts, I don't know if it's what any kind of object. What does that mean, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, into Ed's. Into little round heads. Ah, If Bruce Springsteen, and he's obviously not gay, but if he said, all right, Carl, um, just, you know, little cuddle, would you turn down Bruce Springsteen? Yeah. Well, no, but why? Just like, all right, mate, you, know, you, you hug your mates, don't you? If Bruce said, all right, Carl, I like your show, love your head, little cuddle, little cuddle, a mate's cuddle. No, I, I just, oh, what you, I'd say, what are you doing? <laughs> He just say, look, we're yeah. a couple of old friends. Look, Bruce Springsteen, I've got those great songs. I like what you're doing. Let's cuddle. Let's have a little. All right, the mate. The only thing is, right, Steve. Right, do you know how he likes to squeeze me head? How yeah. If you like to squeeze me head. Yeah. He had a, an old mate over this week. He's got a similar shaped head, apparently, as mine. Yeah. Right. He's hardly gave me a call or anything because he's he was busy with this other f fella's head. <laughs> oh, you feel ba quite bad about that. Oh. Is he's a better head to squeeze? I'll tell you why. Because he shaves his every day. Right, he's got the same sort of hair problem with him. Shows every day, right? A problem. No, I know, and it's because he's had it several times. Like Carl's is sort of comes through a bit long at the side sometimes. It looks a bit unkempt towards the end of the week. I've, I've seen there's a little, there's a couple of little pimples under there. Mm -hmm. Right, I really have to do it. Just like get there, slap my hands on it, squeeze it. With this one, I can sort of, 
get my thing, do you know what I mean? I get my, mm, really, you know. You like, you like a gay the way you jump about from head to head. <laughs> That's no record. You like saying, a gay. Just saying. <laughs> right, still coming up then. What have we got going we up? We got Rockbusters. Oh, uh, has any monkey news this week? It's been a problem. Why? It's not much has been going on this week. What, in the I monkey mean, world? In the monkey world. I don't know if they've caught on to the fact that they're getting coverage. <laughs> <laughs> They're keeping their behaviour uh, hush hush. Be a bit careful, but uh, I found something. Have you got uh, Rockbusters? It, uh, it's your last chance, don't forget. Is it good, these? Got Rockbusters, got some good prizes. Steve will look at them in a bit. Uh -huh. yeah. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Oh, Have you got a Cheeky Freak of the Week. Got that. Got yeah. That. Uh, so, what deformity is it this week that you're ridiculing? <laughs> well, keep listening. <laughs> <laughs> Out of Time by Blur on XFM 104.9. Alright, Carl, what are you thinking? Just thinking about stuff. <laughs> You're an enigma, aren't you? Yeah. I would just say hello to, we've got an American listener apparently, Karen. Anyway, well, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might fill up four seconds. We're not struggling, are we? No, no, I mean, no, no, no. We, we well, do. Just consult the list of, uh, of Dr. Fox-esque amusing Wife, topics. Wet Ones, Screwball, Shop Train, Cheeky Freak, Ronan. Ronan. What's what that? was Ronan? Ronan. I just was, uh, telling you the other day about... You know that, that song that he does? Uh, loving every day as if it's your last one. Right, yeah. I'm just thinking he's saying that as if like, oh, I'll have a good day. But I reckon if, if you knew it was your last day, I don't think you'd be in the mood to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what? That's true. But what, well, yeah. I but think the point is that it's living a day like it's your last, so God, God, imagine if it was every day like the last, right, let's go mental. And the good thing is, we've got tomorrow. So he's got the best of both worlds. That's what Ronan's saying. He's saying cram it in, because it might be the last. I think it's more like, uh, it's the not knowing, isn't it? Live every day. See, I'd be, see, I'd actually be happy if, if I never knew mm. when I was going to die, yeah. uh, and I was definitely going to die in my sleep, what a brilliant life you'd have. Do you know what I mean? What, so you don't get an illness, but one night you go to bed and- I know that I, if you knew you were going to die in the sleep and never knew when you were going to die, it wouldn't matter if it was tomorrow or thirty years time. It wouldn't matter, would it? Yeah. I've lost you, haven't I? I've lost you somewhere. I can't, I can't, that was, see, I thought that was pretty easy, all that. I said, die in your sleep and not know when you died. There was no high concept there. No, no sleight of hand linguistically. What, where did I lose you? I think you lost him on sleight of hand linguistically. <laughs> <laughs> Just then. You lost him again. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the way I'd, I'd want to go. I don't, I don't want to know about it. That's why I don't go to the doctors or anything. <laughs> That's a good, Brilliant. good approach. And he, 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 do you know, remember him saying he, uh, he's gonna die of cancer because he, uh, doesn't check his balls, he doesn't like the feel. Of course, of course. What do they feel like, your balls? Like a, like a wet chamois leather. <laughs> <laughs> With two marbles, two kumquats in a wet chamois leather. No, but, I just- I Why are they wet? Sweaty. No, they're not, I'm just saying smooth. Are they smooth? Yeah, because a, a, a chamois leather's smoother when it's- Do you smooth. shave them? No, I don't. Do in, case a, in case a fireman pops around, you won't look your best, <laughs> and it's like your head. You know, the fireman pops around, there you are, and he goes, oh, nice, smooth. So you never go to the doctors? What, even- I don't, I don't like it. But if you found some bubos under your arm or something, you- I'd wait for a bit, and I'd, I'd say to Suzanne, what do you think of that? <laughs> Just see if it develops into place. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you know, don't you? you An know, old bandage around <laughs> exactly, your head yeah. and a bell. Yeah. Suzanne, yeah. what are you about? Can you get me a bell? Exactly. Brilliant. I don't, you know, I, there was this kid at our school we took the piss out of for the basically the rest of his time there because when <laughs> he was about eleven, someone said, "How oh, would you want to die?" Right? And we do that thing, drown in fire or that. He said, "I want to die of old age in my mother's arms." <laughs> <laughs> How old was he? <laughs> like eleven, <laughs> Lucy. <laughs> Oh, my God. mother's arms. I was like, no. What, getting off with her? What does that mean? Die of old age. You don't want to old cheat. <laughs> Brilliant. I want to die of old age with the nan in my mouth. Yeah, all in the same bed. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. So if you, if you, if, if it was the last day, if you had what, one day to live, okay, yeah. what would you do with your day? Now let's assume that um, it's, you're not, you're not in a state of ill health. There's not much you can do. Though, it's just the end of the world. And you what do you mean day? there's not much you can do? I mean, that's what we're asking you. It's the last day of your life. It depends, doesn't it? If, if, if we're all in the same boat, if someone says, oh, unlucky, 
um, without bitterness, like, oh, we accidentally exposed you to some radiation poison, you've got a day, or if it was like, there's a meteor coming this way, we're all in the same boat, it, I think it would be different. It depends whether it's you yeah, and, make and the rest of the world. No? i do the same thing. I'd steal a car and go joyriding. <laughs> but, like, go mental. I'd be smashing stuff, I'd be knocking people over for a laugh. I'd yeah. be going crazy. It'd be like Grand Theft Auto. Right, <laughs> okay. Extraordinary. Brilliant. Driving through parks. That's what I, that's what I did in the getaway. Yeah. I tried to play it seriously, and within about ten minutes I was just going around areas I knew yeah, trying to exactly. knock people over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't think I'd want to do that much. Seriously. You can watch telly, because you, you might not know how the thing ends. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, free waste uh, of time. You could watch 24, couldn't you? If you had a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On DVD. Do that then, do that. <laughs> do that, yeah. Well, but I mean, let's be honest, you, let's say you, you know, you can take all the money out of your bank account, you can fly anywhere in the world, you can do whatever you want. Well, you not a long got, flight, you could. Well, no, but you've got your girlfriend. Australia, girl you wouldn't make it, would you? No. Um, oh, why, why, you, why, why, why wouldn't you go to the monkey sanctuary down in Cornwall and just go around cuddling as many monkeys as you can? I'm gonna tell you something now. Go on. Go in there next week. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Taking my mum and dad away, cause like, Suzanne's mum and dad are <laughs> What, you're donating them? them? <laughs> Most people put them in our home. What are you gonna say? How you a monkey sanctuary? It's cheaper. Second, taking them down, uh, yeah, taking them down to Cornwall. Oh, God, I uh, thought you said you'd never go away with parents again. No, no, but that was Suzanne's mum and dad. Oh, this is, is this to get so, even or something? So, yeah, so we'll do that and then, then we'll can it then. <laughs> 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 that was your outing. Oh. Your phone and both set to parents and it goes, right, you won't be seeing us ever again on holiday. We've taken you away, we've taken you away. Be careful that the monkey people don't buy you off your parents. Yeah. You and know, don't make sure, monkey. make sure they don't leave any of the monkey's food in the telephone box, cause dad'll have that away. Yeah. No. I was talking to him about that the other day. <laughs> about the, uh, nicking in phone boxes. And he, uh, Should we just me. explain that to Well, they live in a small village in Wales, and, uh, it's like one sort of utility store, and when it's shut, they leave you shopping in the telephone box across the road. And Carl's dad <laughs> found out about this, <laughs> goes and helps himself. Yeah, to other people shopping. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, go on. And, uh, I was talking to him about that, saying, you know, have you picked up any surprises in the phone box? And, uh, he said, no, no, no. We were talking about other stuff he used to do. Uh, one of them used to be going in this supermarket, right, in Manchester. Yeah. Needs a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Go in, take a new pair off the shelf, pop them on, leave his old ones there. Really? And walk out again? Yeah, brilliant. Floor. And then you go in after and buy his old ones back like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd go in the next day. They look nice. <laughs> yeah. My dad's got a pair just like that. I've always wanted to. <laughs> Can I have those? <laughs> Incidentally, we don't advocate the stealing of shoes from shop. Or, or, or the joyriding and killing people. <laughs> Unless you've got one day left. Okay. <laughs> or phone boxes. <laughs> John. Fighting. <laughs> M. Gervais Merchant Pilkington. <laughs> Rockbusters. Oh, brilliant. Is there a jingle for Rockbusters? I don't think there's ever been one, is there? No. Could you come up with one quickly? Oh! Rockbusters! <laughs> brilliant. All right. Well, the prizes this week, there's not many. I have to say, Carl's not sourced many, but what he's got are actually, uh, good quality. Well, I've tried to insist on him that it's, you know, quality, not quantity. Absolutely. As opposed to, like, 15 copies of, you know, Fools and Horses Christmas Special with a giveaway three-wheeler <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> car and, uh, Primal Scream's greatest hits on 11 CDs. <laughs> yeah. Not Just Primal Scream, in Spiral Carpets. Oh, that was it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spiral Carpets. Anyway, yeah, we've got, um, this new Kiss FM hip-hop classics compilation which has got some really good stuff on there. Uh, new stuff from the likes of, uh, you know, Outkast and the Wu-Tang, but some old classics from Public Enemy and, of course, LL Cool J's Mama Said Knock You Out. Mm. It's, one, it's worth having alone. For yeah, that track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is, is this four CDs? No, two CDs. Um, the best air guitar album in the world, volumes one and two in a special box set. Yeah. You've got all sorts on there. There's May. Brian yeah. Adams is on there, Robert Adams, Palmer. May, but Palmer. also excellent stuff, Beastie Boys Clash, we got the Kinks, so that's good. Abigail's Party, the, um, the DVD thing with Alison Steadman, I know you're quite a fan of that, aren't you, Rick? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Which is, um, for many years ago, if you've not seen it, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, this, uh, later with Jules Holland DVD, it's got, uh, live performances from PJ Harvey, the Cardigans, Rollins, is But he is, he is playing uh, Boogie Woogie over their tracks. I would hope so. Okay. Okay, good. And also, is this the new album from The Thrills? Uh, yeah, it is. Is it the album? Yeah. yeah. so that's a little, uh, little... Wow. Uh, is that exclusive? It's not even out yet, is it? Well, not even well, out. Not even well, out. Well, that's the sort of things that Carl can come up with if pushed. So there Let's, you are. It's all about the game, though. It's all about the game. The prizes are just for fun. Mm. It's all about the playing the game. Let's oh. see what Carl's come up with. This week, this is his last chance. If I ever hear 
anything like new odour again, <laughs> that's the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they, they, they did get it now, didn't they? So yeah. They're working out, they will do it. Just a little, uh, let's have the jingle again. Alright. Oh, Rockbusters! Alright, uh, if you haven't heard it before, Cryptic Clues, uh, that make up a band and some initials to help you on your way as well. Mm -hmm. right. So, uh. Well, first, you'd never get it without, but go on. First one, uh, that fella likes sucking on iron. Alright. That fella likes sucking on iron? Yeah, the initial, uh, M. Right. Okay. That fella likes sucking on iron. Right, that's the first one. Second one, uh, the Jamaican fella spots a boat. Oh, God. Say that again. The Jamaican fella spots a boat. Spots a boat. Yeah. Right. The Jamaican fella spots a boat. Yeah, that's right, yeah. All right. Initial there, uh, D. 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 Okay. D. 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 All right. And, uh, the last one, uh, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, you own it. Right. Interesting. I, I've just got number two. Right, uh, do you want- Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, The God. third one, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, you own it. And what's right. the initial? E. All of them again, quickly? Right, so the first one, that fella likes sucking on iron. That's M. Second one, Jamaican fella spots a boat. Right, that's, uh, D. And the last one, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, it's, you know, you own it. Right. That's like it finishes it, like it's a whole story yeah. by the end. That's, right. uh, that's E. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email 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 only. Email and we cannot be bothered to answer the phone. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Why right? Excellent. We're Dr. Chili Peppers, universally speaking on XFM 104.9. We're halfway through, Steve. I'm Ricky Gervais. That was, uh, Mr. Merchant I was referring to there, as Steve. <laughs> Familiar. <laughs> Friends by now. Five years in the making. Carl Pilkington, I've known him a year and a half, but he's a good friend as well. Alright. Alright, <laughs> XFM, where paths cross. <laughs> Alright. Oh, so, uh, any interesting things to talk about, guys? Dr. Fox style? Uh, any amusing observations? Have you taken a sideways look at the, the week's news or anything, Carl? What have you? I'll tell you what I did here last night. Go on. Go on. Um... Five Live. They yeah. do like a, a review of what's going on in the week. We've been busy in the week, I haven't always got time to, to follow what's going on. In the world, sure. Yeah. Uh, someone's made a chicken with teeth. <laughs> 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 what, for what reason? <laughs> Don't know, because they can. <laughs> Just because they can. And, and like, they, they so it chooses a, food, yeah. It had a, they had a few guests saying, well, you know, where will it all end? Uh, so are you, are you sure you weren't watching a Wallace and Gromit video? No, s seriously, right. It's, uh, they're doing it. They're a chicken with teeth. Why would they spend millions researching? What do you mean they've got a chicken with teeth? What the f what do you mean there's a chicken with teeth? Sounds mad, doesn't it? What are you talking about, Carl? That's what they've done. Do you know, like- Why? I don't know. They're just messing with science and that. And that's what the people were saying. What- why are you doing that? Do you know what I mean? Where- where will it start? What's the next thing? They did the sheep. They did the cloning. <laughs> right? The rat with an ear on its back. Did that. Um Can hear a mouse, uh, cat coming, can't yeah. it? Uh, what else were they talking about? They were talking about that sheep again, that, that cloning one. Yeah, Dolly the sheep. Do you think it's that clever? Because they, 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 they do all look the same anyway. What's it got to do with its cleverness? The being cloned. Being cloned, is it, is it, do you think that's a good thing? He doesn't think it's that impressive because they look the same anyway. Right. They could have just put any sheep in there and go, look, no. they're the same. Yeah. Brilliant. So there was a program, people were talking what about- What are you talking about, a chicken with teeth? That's, it was the latest news, it was like all about the war and that, and I was like, yeah, 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 and then it's a chicken with teeth, I say, hang on. You mean it's pretty tough. Yeah, yeah he, didn't, he didn't hear anything about the war, did ya? That was like, they might have been like speaking French, or just like whistles. What? And now, story about a chicken with teeth. Yeah. You stop washing maybe, up maybe there. Maybe someone, someone can let us know, you know. Oh, God, don't open the floodlights. No, but I'm just saying, I don't know the full thing. They just- Of course you don't. Surprise! They just touched on it. Yeah. Anyway, other stuff I did do proper research on in the week. Go on. Uh, having, uh, testicles done. <laughs> having, it, having your testicles done? Yeah. What does that mean? Same magazine that was doing the hanky coverage. Uh, <laughs> right. And you know what all that's about. Um. <laughs> it was like a great magazine. How can we get him as a pundit on these new shows, like Newsnight, do you know what I mean? Sky, Sky News. On there, wouldn't just on there, just asking what they think. Wouldn't that be amazing? Is there a producer out there that would take a chance on Pilkington? It's Pilkington, Raggy Omar, Ian Hislop, and they, a panel of people, and they just ask, ask people. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so you can have, you can have your testicles made bigger. Why would you want to do that? Well, that's what I was asking. What's the point? Well, the actual testicles, or do they just inflate your ball bag? Because you could do that, couldn't you? You could, uh, have some air injected so it was like a big, so they'd look bigger, but they'd rattle around inside, wouldn't they? Make a little noise, wouldn't it, when you're at, like a, manacas. <laughs> like some kind of <laughs> instrument. Yeah. Like was sort of one of those African instruments, it's like a big sheep's bladder with yeah, all- there's Pedro on the manacas. <laughs> yeah, they just, they just, yeah. Yeah, just strip to the, strip to the waist. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, with this hanging out. Why, and then why, when, why then when you're sort of like, people, the neighbours would think, what's he doing? He's, he's, he's been playing those manacas all night. And really, you were- Yeah. You know. <laughs> why, why- The mouse with the ear on its back, go and keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really <laughs> loud to me. <laughs> hey, why, why, why would someone have that done then? What's you brought it up. Yeah, well, presumably so that they could draw a little funny face on them. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. And you could let them down after the holiday, like you do a lilo. <laughs> exactly. <and just> let, <laughs> yeah, yeah. On holiday, you're floating round, you know, like, yeah. just in the sea, with your big instrumental manacas, right? Just floating. <laughs> you're having a whale of a time, for yeah. people playing it as they go past. Exactly. All right, Carl. Right, become yeah. a bit of a sort of local celebrity. Yeah, look, there's Carl with his floating manacas, like a big yeah. jellyfish, right? Yeah. And then the end of the holiday, or Saturday. <laughs> if you've got a little pair of tight speedos, it'll be, it'll be like Jordan walking around. <laughs> and then he's like, <laughs> just let him down when he comes. Let the knackers down for the plane. Mm. Yeah. Because they, apparently they do, uh, they do get bigger, don't they, as you get older? When you're an old fella. No, I think they get lower. I think that's it. That testicles and breasts get lower. Is that purely gravity? I think so, yeah. Probably stretching a bit, isn't it? So is it- is Wear the old, and tear. Is the old fellas who are walking about saying, oh, sick of these. <laughs> yeah, they don't tread on them. Well, that's you know, why old people have always got to have a little sit down. You know, yeah, yeah. Meters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stick them in the socks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Or they can have a, I suppose you can have like a little ball lift. You can have a face lift, can't you? Have a little nip and tuck. Or, not, or probably a face lift would help, wouldn't it? Because that, if you pull oh, your yeah. face up, that's gonna that, bring the skin up. Bring up a little bit, yeah. Don't go too far, you'll have a little knob as a tie. But you can, <laughs> you know, it, you can tighten stuff up. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Steve with his kipper tie. That's a lovely tie you've got there, Steve. <laughs> and you look so young. Yeah. <laughs> What's that little sack underneath it, that little brooch? <laughs> well, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Playing um. with your little manacas all night, Carl. So, a chicken with teeth. And you can have your balls done. That's imagine, imagine Kirsty Ward, whatever her name is, on Newsnight saying that. And now <laughs> two features of the <laughs> week: the war in Iraq. Let's forget that. Who wants their knackers done? And look at this chicken. Careful, it bites. I think we should send this link to Doctor Fox and see if, <laughs> it, see if he thinks it's an improvement on what he heard during the show. Play a record. Play yeah. a record. Yeah, get this link. Send it to Doctor Fox. He'll love it. All right. Right. Plus, you'd be offer, able to offer some kind of medical explanation. <laughs> yeah, exactly! <laughs> Teenage Fan Club. Oh. Brilliant. One of Kurt Cobain's favourite bands, apparently, Teenage Fan Club, and that was the song Radio. He loved them. We've just had a, a, an email here. It says, apparently, the, they created the chicken with the teeth in order to prove that DNA can be reverse stimulated. The theory being that if you can revert chickens to a state in which it has teeth, I don't know if it ever had teeth, you can alter someone's DNA to stop them going bold, Carl. Did that, does, did they mean that because birds came from reptiles that had teeth out crops and th then changed into a beak or whatever, mm -hmm. that they revert, I don't understand, they revert DNA? I mean, there's not, not quite enough science here to, for me to be able to answer it in detail. Well, not for us, maybe, but I think Carl's probably grasped it. What do you think that means, Carl? <laughs> yeah. What, what does he say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Life's too short. What else is that? Have you got a monkey news coming up soon? Um, like I say, it's been a struggle. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Do you want to? Oh, definitely. Should we do Cheeky Freak we of the Week? Freak of the week? I can't wait. I've, I'll always do these. I'd start off with these. All right, well, let's have the jingle for Cheeky Freak of the Week. Oh, no. Do you remember it? No. I remember it. Oh. Uh, oh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Brilliant. Something like that? <laughs> I want some more because that was slightly a half hour. Oh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Excellent. Right. This, uh, we're going back again. Yeah, 17th right. century? Uh, well, it was, it was 1829, right? Oh. I'm impressed. Um, yeah. Now, the problem is with Cheeky Freak of the Week, um... Not so much the week, is it, if you're going back to 1829? Well... Not even of the century. You haven't even done Cheeky Freak of the century. 
Mm. There's what's the problem with Cheeky Freak of the Week? Just because <laughs> other than the sort of moral implications. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, last week, it was a fellow with two heads. Yeah. Mm. We've done Siamese twins. It's Siamese twins again. Oh, it's no, Siamese it was Siamese again. twins. It wasn't a fellow with two heads last week. It was Siamese twins. Conjoined twins, sorry. They're two different people. Mm. This is what I'm telling you. But this is the problem. They're gonna crop up quite a lot just because they've got double a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh, uh, please don't write in and complain. He knows not what he does. You understand, don't you? Uh, Carl will actually feature one day in this section. Yeah. So, right, go right, on, well, Carl. We're, go we're going back to, uh, 1829. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the way back there to 1829. The retro conjoined twin link. <laughs> uh, a couple of guys set up a business. Uh, they were called Chang and Ang. Oh, they're the first, that's why they were called Chim Siamese twins, because they were, weren't, weren't, wasn't that what it was based on, those two, Chang and Ang? Was it? The original, yeah, that's why they're, they're called Siamese twins, because I think they were Siamese. So these are the first ones? Uh, well, they're not the first ones, but they're first the ones one. that got to fame, I think, and why people started calling them, the people started calling them conjoined twin Siamese twins. I mm. think I'm right there. Anyway. Good. Um, well, the, the sort of, uh, set up business, sort of going around, uh, the US. Well, both of them. And Europe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what they used to do, people were amazed by it anyway. Yeah. People wanted to know how they get through life doing certain things. That, that you, that you think about, when you think about some of these twins, you think about, you know, how do you get through a day like that? Yeah. Right? Um, and the thing that cropped up the most with people was how they take a bath. So they used to go on tour around the US and Europe and, uh, sit in a bath. <laughs> have a, have a wash and that. Mm. And, uh... Did they ever wash each other by mistake? They go, oh, 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 oh that ends there. That ends there, like those things in supermarkets. They put <laughs> yeah. one of those down. We go, oh, 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 oh. What do you, you mean? put that there. What do you mean? You know the things on the conveyor belt, the little the little dividers. Yeah, they but, wind me up those dividers. I sorry, I was just a complete tangent, but I, for some reason, it's my own psychosis. But I get so annoyed if I'm in a supermarket. I've got my shop, and I'm just about to get served. And you can always see there are certain people who stand behind you getting edgy, itchy, worried that I'm not going to put the divider down to separate my shopping from theirs. It's like they're terrified that I'm somehow going to deliberately pay for their Sneaking shopping. Sneaking their onion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't get an onion. I'll have that. Mm. And it's just, but what annoys me is it's not so much that, obviously it's a practical thing. Mm. It's the fact that they get a little bit edgy. You can actually see certainly kind of, um, dare I say it, certain breed of woman and a certain breed of fella will, uh, just get a little bit itchy, a little bit edgy. And they just, they just look at you, you can just see them sweating, especially if they can't read. I just lean over and do it myself. Well, I know, but it's the thing is that it's like they almost feel that they, uh, they ought to wait for me to do it, as though somehow it's my obligation. And it just, annoy for some reason, it's, I know it's ludicrous, but it really annoys me. And I actually deliberately don't put the divider down just to see them sweat. I like the way that they're, that they're actually quite well made. There's some that are brass with like a yeah. felt bottom. Yeah. Like you really care, like a, a twig would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? But, uh, I just leave a slight gap. And then yeah. when it gets to the, when the woman's putting it through the, the till or the guy, I just say, that's my stuff. Do you ever look at other people shopping and go, oh, I should have got that? Often. Oh, yeah. That's annoying. It's, I'll tell you what it is, it's the same thing, and again, it's my psychosis. When people, if you're on a bus or a train, and we're pulling into the stop, but there's a good, you know, kind of 35 seconds before we're actually going to come to a halt, they that. leap up, they get and they're first, straight yeah. by the door. Yeah. Look, but it's this fear that something, they're going to miss out. Oh my god, what if I fell over yeah, now and broke my ankle, I'd never to, get out. To be fair, I've never had that that, um, commuters worry, I've never commuted, but every second counts, doesn't it? Because you miss a train, it can make a difference of half an hour. So that's why commuters literally run to but, get their connections. But the thing is that with a bus, yeah. um, you, you know, there's often you'll be people who are sat right next to the exit, will get up and stand up for a while, waiting to get out. It just, again, I'm not saying what, it's not, it makes perfect what, sense to them, got a day it's to my live, psychosis. They're gonna be mowed down in the streets, <laughs> <laughs> They will you're just gonna, be a few You're gonna be in a lovely Chrysler. Exactly. Yeah. Just well, I will be going straight through a branch of Waitrose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> taking people out in the in the. So in the well, aisle. we do not condone going through Waitrose in a car. <laughs> in a car. Now, it's Chang and Ang, they're in the bath. They're washing their own bits. They've got one of those dividers, right? They go, "Well, that's that's definitely yours. I marked mine. Mm. That's definitely mine. Mm. Don't wash that, Chang. I won't. I wouldn't, Ang. I wouldn't wash that. Right. So what what are they doing? They're in the bath. Carry on with the story. Uh, that's about it, really. I mean, Jesus. that's, that's the, <laughs> the fact that people- So, two people, 
Two little oriental fellas joined in the hip, had a bath. No, 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 That's no. your story. No, they didn't have a bath. They sort of, everybody, they must have done some sort of research, right? Who? Changarang, right? And they said, well, what do people want to see? Isn't that basically Roller's song? But it's an idea that people have queued up, they've paid the money, they're in a tent, they're like, well, I hear they're gonna have a bath, they're gonna have yeah, a bath. Two, two Siamese people are gonna have a bath. How would they possibly do it? Well, I've heard they'd get into a bath. But that, uh, that's what they, they, they wanted exciting. to see them nude and where, where the join was. No. More than uh, how do you get in the bath? I don't know. They just that's that's what they picked. <laughs> they said, "What what would be good to see? What what, what do you, you know? What do you want to see them do? Having a bath? How would you get into trousers? Was there was well, exactly this, this is all part of it, and that's why they picked having a bath. <laughs> <laughs> this is all part of it. Well, they want to get dressed afterwards. Yeah. Who was the best out of Chang and Ang? Who was your favourite? Uh, they both look the same, to be honest. <laughs> A surprise! One was a short ginger woman. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, is there anything you you know? What what would be better than having a bath for you when you'd seen them? What what would sort of make you go? Oh, I wonder. Uh, one of them pulling and the other one going home alone. Yeah. I go look look. Oh, just, she's definitely up for it. I'm taking her home. Go, oh, God, what am I going to do? Can I watch? Definitely not. Definitely not. Look, you go to bed. I want to. I want to wine and dine her. But if they're if they if he's got her back to their place <laughs> and they're going at it, hammer and tongs. But are you saying one of them? No, hammer and tongs were their cousins. <laughs> right. They lived. They lived miles away. Yeah. Um. <laughs> if one of them gets knackered, can the other one take over? <laughs> God. I think we play a record. That annoys me. What? what? That that sort of being at it all night. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's <laughs> put a song and I'll come back. What to do you it. mean? Come on, we'll no, no, no. Come seriously, on, seriously, because okay. R.E.M. yeah. Well, uh, after oh. R.E.M. Night Swimming, being at it all night <laughs> and why it annoys Carl. Night Swimming by R.E.M. Well, before we played that track, you remember Carl was on the, uh, right, teetering on the cusp of telling us why he's annoyed at going all night. I assume you, you mean... Intercourse. Relations. Yeah. What do you mean? What annoys you about that? What, what? Sexual relations all night. The concept. Or people keep you up. Is it your next door neighbours, wasn't it? No, just just that thing of people who say, "Oh, was that it all night last night?" <laughs> who says that to you? You know, lads who think they're you know they th think they're a bit of a lad and think that that means it's good. What like yeah. Sting and his tantric sex? Sting. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair, it goes for eight hours, but only three minutes of that is going for it. The the other sort of you know. Seven and a bit is sort of laying next to each other, isn't it? <laughs> right. And right. sometimes in a different room. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is that why it's called Sting? Hey. <laughs> well, if you're at it all night, but it <laughs> it's gonna sting. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your problem with this notion of going at it all night? It's just that thing of uh, you know get it done right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Get it done. Yeah, get in, get out like the SAS. Once you've done it, you've done, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no fanning around. No messing about. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just that, isn't it? It's like, you know, <laughs> do it right the first time. Once you've washed up, right, you put the pots away, you don't dirty them again. <laughs> what a lovely analogy. That's one of the great- Is that, is that what you say to Suzanne? Come on, love. Once you've washed I've up- I've already washed up. You don't dirty the pots again. <laughs> God. What a romantic Ding song. Up. Hello, is that a fire? Oh. Hello. <laughs> Did he have a moustache, the fireman? Oh. Radio Ahead, they're there on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington with the answers to Rockbusters, the, the biggest quiz on radio, probably. Mm -hmm. Do you want to remind us the quiz? No, 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 you mean the crappiest quiz on radio. Yeah. Right. Um, first one was, uh, that fella likes sucking on iron. Yeah. Right? The, uh, the initial was M. What was the band? It was Metal Liquor. Alright. What's or Metal Liquor? No, no, wait, wait, I've never heard of a band, Metal Liquor. Metallica. It's metal no, Liquor. You said, yeah, you said Metal Liquor, I don't understand. Yeah, me Metal Liquor, Metallica. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, say yeah, it again, say it again and try and make Metallica sound like Metal Liquor. <laughs> me metal Liquor. Metallica. Me <laughs> metal Liquor. <laughs> Is he having a fit? <laughs> Say it again. Make Metallica sound like metal liquor. Metallica. Metal liquor. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Uh, second one, the, uh, Jamaican fella spots a boat. That, yeah. that was easy. That was D. That was Debarge. Uh, you got that. Make it sound like the band? Debarge. Make it sound like a Jamaican fella saying, spotting a boat? Debarge. <laughs> right. So you got that one. Okay. And, uh, the last one. Do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you. You own it. Yeah. Right. That was E. That yeah. was your rope. Right. Europe. Europe? Right. Who did the final count though? So that, that's the... No, uh, what, what, we've let that go? <laughs> that's the three answers for this week. Who's the winner, Steve? Well, again, I mean, there are lots and lots of people who got it right, Rick. So I don't know if it's just us that think this is rubbish. Right. But, who's the winner, um... Who's the winner? Well, you know I'm always a fan of people with just something... A, a name, I don't know, that maybe tickles me. <laughs> yeah. And sadly, I did want to give it to... <laughs> I wanted to give it to Daniel Jowett. <laughs> Because I just, for some reason, Danny People Jowett... People are gonna start, start, But start sadly, I just realised he got it wrong, so I'm gonna give it to a different Dan. So not only did you ridicule his name... He's not even getting the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, better luck next time, um, <laughs> Danny Jowett. Instead, I'm giving it to Dan Mason, um, of Ilford. So he got them right and he wins those prizes. Alright, well... Okay. More of that next week? I mean, what, what do we think? Uh, we'll, do uh, we'll do it next week, then. Yeah. Again. Okay. What are you doing now? Got a record or what's that? Uh Hoople. But I'm not the Hoople. Oh, it's Hoople. Hoople. Yeah. Hoople. The Hoops is. Monkey News? Next. Alright. Mot the Hoople. Roll away the stone. Classic little ditty. On XFM one oh four point nine. Alright? Play the jingle. Oh, is it it? Is it it? Brilliant. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news extra. Is <laughs> <laughs> well, there monkey news? Uh, I tell you what, I've been having a bit of a problem this week. Why? Um, I, I, it's just been a struggle. Normally, I can come into work on a Monday and there'll be something that's happened over the Saturday, over the Sunday night, do you know what I mean? Over the weekend, the monkeys have done something. <laughs> been very quiet. I thought, I'll be alright. Let's see how the week goes on. Uh, I don't know if they've caught on to the fact that we're giving this coverage now. Mm. Or, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Normally people are emailing me stuff all the time about monkeys. Uh, been very quiet week. I've uh, been checking, uh, I was looking in books last night and stuff. Uh, so Is there any monkey news? I, I've, I've got some, but just because it's not that good, something else I found out that I thought I'd share with you. Go on. I was looking in the Guinness Book of Records, right, because I thought they'll have something in there about monkeys or something, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a little monkey, I think it lives in Asia, right? Uh, there's loads of them live in Asia. Might and, just be travelling, but yeah. And, um, some of them found out, I don't know if they've got it right, and that's why I want to bring it up. Uh, apparently, it's the mammal, right, that's got sort of the, the pointiest eyes. Eyes that pop out of the red. Steve. <laughs> The thing is, right? I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Apparently, it's 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 the biggest with the sort of goggle eye type thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, go on. Apparently, they they come out of the red. Um, one point six centimeters. One point six centimeters. What you mean? They protrude. Yeah. They uh, protrude uh, from the head at one point six. Okay. What? How, how long? Have you got a ruler, right? <laughs> one point one point six. He's, he's having a go. I'll tell you, I'd be a little bit annoyed if the monkeys beat me. <laughs> well, I don't think it has. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Is there anything we can? I mean, what's one point six? Can you? It's about drop your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh. Um, uh, well, oh, about three quarters of an inch. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have they got it right, or what? <laughs> Maybe I should come down to Monkey World with you next week. Uh, uh, so anyway, so that's, that's not the monkey <laughs> news, that's just something that cropped up and... <laughs> sure. <laughs> I do know once, when we were playing pool in the office, I think Lucy was your partner. 
Yeah. It was me and Ash versus you and Lucy. And um, you were having trouble because his glasses kept slipping down. So Lucy pushed his glasses up his nose, but the glasses touched his eye. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he started it. He started it. Well, you're the one who joined in. <laughs> no, I know, and I feel, I'm, I feel bad now. Yeah. <laughs> he makes me nervous when he goes, yeah. It's like, play record. No, I'm just trying to think about which part of your fat, middle-aged physique I can pick on. <laughs> the tits would be a good Yeah, stuff. yeah. Oh, the belly. Sure. Or what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, that, that's, what is that? Play a record. <laughs> Is that Monkey News for this week? Have we not got well, any other Monkey, Monkey News? Well, well, it's just, it hasn't been that good. I mean, the one that I found out here, um, because we've covered so much in the monkey world, right, the fact that we've done a monkey that was a sort of half man, we've done a monkey that got a, got a decent job in a train station, um, can you think of any of the other Well, that's just some of the great Monkey News from the past. That's what yeah. I mean, so that's what you've got to compete with. So even though this is quite amazing, um... Just another, tell us. I know the monkey's got married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not another monkey getting married. <laughs> what do you mean? It's got uh, another one, you know, it was knocking about with some uh, woman monkey for a bit. Um, a woman monkey. <laughs> they decided to, you know, get married. Yeah. They did. What uh, do you mean they decided to get married? Was it yeah. pressure from her parents? They had a, they had a good do, and uh... <laughs> Spread. I love that. Just, Peanut volivons. Yeah. Cele uh, celebrated in a pub, and then they both went off to the cage at night. That's that's what I mean. Even though that is quite impressive, because it's not true, <laughs> or it's a joke. It's nothing. It's not. On an over website, official sort of news website. Two monkeys have married in Romania uh, after a whirlwind romance. Well, that's <laughs> after a whirlwind romance. <laughs> God, yeah, yeah, a quick one hanging onto the rope. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> She was in the tyre. Yeah. He saw it. <laughs> yeah. He went, I have a go at that. They go, we well, got to marry her now. Yeah. Her parents came and said, do you just, yeah. did you just shut my He was in a zoo tire? knocking one off. She went, I can do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guess so. The monkey bridegroom was scared by the number of people attending the wedding and refused to get out of his cage. No. Oh. His bride <laughs> was, <laughs> Not was, bloody Hello Magazine again. No, it was, no, I think it was like last minute nerves. Right. Like, right, you know, right, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, single now. Thoughts. It's like, you know, it's the big step. Yeah. But his bride enjoyed every minute of it. She was loving it. Yeah. She's sure. a lovely bride. Sure. Away. She looked lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she looked good. Reports she only appeared to have problems with her veil and dress. Do you see, you know, uh, uh, the, the, this is the guest in I hope they didn't ruin there. it like Anthea Turner and maybe get sort of pot sponsorship PG tips or something. Totally. <laughs> with strong plum brandy. So they got them drunk as well. So they carried on the celebrations at the pub and the boy was taken to her new husband's cage at night. I. I really, I, well, I apologise. Play a record. I'll tell you what winds me up. What? Monkeys. Getting married. I know. And I'm not getting any action. And I got bigger eyes. Little by little. Oasis on XFM 104.9. Well, that's the show. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilberton. Carl, do you think it was a good show today? It was alright, wasn't it? With some, uh... What do you think? What do you think the, uh, the, the, uh, the loyal listener has gotten from today's show? What do you think, what do you think that... You know, we've added to the world. Well, I think I think they know what they've got, right? But if someone's just tuned in, I can tell them they've, they've missed out on some uh, <laughs> some good stuff. They've Lovely. missed out on uh, Chang and Ang. Yeah. They're the uh, they're the two who are the one who invented. <laughs> uh, they're the ones who invented, you know, the Siamese twin thing. Yeah, that's it. They invented it. Yeah. You've got uh, you've had like I would spend our last day, yeah. right? Running people over. Chicken with teeth. Um, <laughs> 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 oh, he says it like, you know, there's no other show that could yeah. give you all this. Yeah, go on. Uh, gay Ankies, we've done that. Yeah. No one will be having a problem there tonight. Yeah. Uh, another monkey marriage. <laughs> <laughs> another monkey. Another it one. sounds like the end of the news. Yeah. You know what I mean? The headlines on Sky News and headlines on, and another monkey marriage <laughs> in Romania. Um, if you've thought about having your testicles bigger. Yeah. Sort of covered that. Yeah. Um, and the monkey that, uh, that had big eyes. Yeah. Uh, if it's listening, you know, its position might not be safe in the Guinness Book of Records. Oh. If, uh, and, uh, and of course, um, Carl stays hard by looking at firemen. <laughs> Indeed, we've also learnt that. Well, that's, that's not, that's not true. 
Well, right. you did. Yeah. All we know is that you saw a fire and, and nothing, see, it didn't seem to affect your uh, erection. <laughs> we avoided saying erection in for fact, two hours. If anything, it prolonged it from what we We've can tell. We avoided oh, saying yeah, erection for two hours and then he just, just you know. Healthy young man. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, sure, I'm sure he was. Fireman, I'm sure he was. But. Fireman, keep Carl hard. Right. Amy Mann to end with. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the darkness growing on me on XFM 104.9. Oh, it's all going well already, isn't it? The microphones <laughs> fell apart. Carl's shouting because he got headphones on. <laughs> His music's too, uh, not too late. Canfield level. <laughs> God, he got pre out. Look at him giggling. He's, look at him. Look at him laughing. That's so funny because I got a letter here uh, from, uh, who was it from? Um, Mike Hill, who sent me a little picture of a little Japanese fella, fella from a film who said, looks like me. And he does a little bit. Um, but he says, please can you make Carl laugh? I've never heard him utter as much as a snigger, and I'm worried he may have a genetic disorder. Well, I mean, he has got a genetic <laughs> disorder, yeah. obviously. But, um, he was giggling then. I hope, I hope, uh, oh, people it, heard you then. Look at his little face. It was a joy. Oh, it's just, I love the things that make him happy. But I love the fact, just before the, uh, the, the microphone came up, and just before the record finished, he had his headphones on, the music was too loud, and he was just shouting, Bowhouse, it's not working! <laughs> Bauhaus, it's not working! I have to play something else! I went and found Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus. Listen, why isn't it working? <laughs> Look at him giggling! Look, he's lost it! Is he, is he going away? Is he, are you on drugs, Carl? What have you done? He's, he's tickled. Look at his little... He looks like one of those shaved monkeys. Look yeah. at his little... Wit. Oh my god, I've never seen a forehead glow. I know, it's extraordinary. Oh. And he's got that red shirt on as well, so the whole, whole of him is just a big glowing... Carl, what are you trying? What are you putting in? Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. Go on then. Hang on. Brilliant radio. Doctor Fo I hope Dr. Fox is listening because I think he's eating his words right now, Steve. <laughs> right, I think I've done it. Right. Well done. That's excellent. Right, what, what, what Let's play Bauhaus now and let's try and compose ourselves. This is Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus. <laughs> well, it worked. That worked, didn't it? So you panic over. Calm, Carl now. Calm now. You are early soon, aren't you? Yeah. He's got to, you've got to go off early. Well, about, about, uh, about... How many holidays have you had? Because I only ever have time off when I'm working, like doing another job, like, you know, filming or something. But you seem to have a lot of holidays, just like, and you were sick as well, you were just like, because you had wet trousers, which is a little bit... Do, do, do you not care about the job? I mean, I've got to ask, because, you know what I mean, if I was in charge, I'd worry about your motivation or... Because we... Yesterday, we were trying to work out what you enjoyed doing, and we got to, uh, Manchester United and moaning. And that is, that is the two we came I, up with. I don't with. know where you get the moaning thing You're from. always whinging. About what? Everything. Wh when? When did I last have a moan? Uh, just before we came on air. Right, and why was that? <laughs> um, I don't know, I can't remember. Because well, we were in good mood, we were in a good mood, me and Rick. I'll tell you why. Go on. Because you brought a song in at ten to one. Yeah. With a load of effing and jeffing in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And saying, can you edit this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's your job. <laughs> you could have brought it in yesterday. No, I couldn't. Why not? I hadn't thought of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but why, but why, but why are you whinging? That's your job. And I didn't come in ten minutes before, it was a good twenty minutes before. It just took you ages because you were whinging and moaning mm. to even get started. I'm not, I'm not being dragged into this. You are always- I'm on my holiday now. Well, not yet. No, you're not on yet. You're still working. Well, this, this, that's what's funny. This isn't even work, right? And yet it should be. Compared to what I do in the week, <laughs> this is a doddle. <laughs> well, it's because you're not putting any effort in, clearly. <laughs> Where are you going anyway? Where are you heading? Far more. Yes? <laughs> what's happening down there? Uh, well, there's a monkey world. <laughs> <laughs> You're excited about that. We don't, we don't see that. Probably go twice to that. Yeah. <laughs> whilst I'm down there. How long you went for? <laughs> the whole week? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh... This is with your parents, isn't it? Yeah. Taking yeah. them out, taking them out. Your father, yeah. what do you think your father be up to? What's, what's he gonna be nicking on this holiday? Well, he's, tin. Uh, there's he's, a lot of tin in Cornwall. He's, Since uh, they've shut the mines. <laughs> he's, uh, he's just called Suzanne, said they've got there. So it's a nice little place. Mm-hmm. Uh... There'll be no towels when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? Balls. What do you do? Just gonna t chill out and sort of like go to the pub and stuff? Yeah, like I say, I mean, all I've got planned is probably the, uh, probably Tuesday and Thursday at Monkey World. Um... <laughs> what, what, what about Wednesday? What, what, what do you think of Wednesday? Just wand wandering around? Just sort of think about, you know... What King Arthur and that. Where, 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 he was down there, wasn't he? I don't know, but I'll tell you going? something. What town? I, I don't know. I don't know where it is. Susan, I'll sort it out. Yeah, she sort it out. I had you on the phone to her saying, well, pack them. Pack two pairs. Poor woman. She's packing your bags for you. Yeah. Right. 
But, uh... You'd, you'd spend more time at home if Steve didn't come in at 10-2 with a rap record with, like, obscenities all over it. Yeah, well, we'll play that next week. Well, you didn't even get the job done, that's the thing. We can't even play it because you didn't get finishing time. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, that method man, if he doesn't stop effing and jeffing, it's the <laughs> end of his career. In my opinion. <laughs> oh, <I never laughs> all this F that and, uh, uh <laughs> yo, 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 Jeff, I'm a Jeff myself. Yeah. Or, or I'm, I'm hanging out with my Jeff. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> Jeff, and, you. And we know you can't put out the J word on, yeah. on XFM. Oh, Mother Jeffer. Well, <laughs> so we haven't got that, but what we have got. Go on. Monkey News. We've still got Monkey News, have we? That's sorted out, that's coming up. Yeah. Rockbusters. Yeah. Well, last chance. The definitely your last chance this time. You, you actually improved a little bit last week. You did a couple of good ones. Yeah, yeah. Same again this week. And, uh... Cheeky Freak? The controversial yeah. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Where Carl, um, finds, uh, a, a human being with, um, some sort of, uh, congenital or, or uh, you know, um, imposed deformity. <coughs> or, you know. So, uh, and we talk about that. In a, in a wry way. Do you think that, do you think that's big and clever? No, but that's, that's just it. It's never about taking the mickey out of someone, right? It's about, it's to make you think... I'll tell you what isn't big and clever. How lucky you are. A dwarf that. with learning difficulties. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well... <laughs> we'll explain it to you. <laughs> that's the forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carrion. That's nice and retro. That's yeah. like end of the 70s Bowie. Mm. That's nice great. Thing. On XFM 104.9. That's just some of the records that we've played so far. Do you know what I mean? You've had the darkness. You've had Bauhaus. It, it, it's like, can it get any better, Carl? Do you think? Like I say, we've got monkey news coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so. Guess what? I lost four hundred quid cash this week. Gambling? No, no, no. This that's tragic. Uh, that, this is why it gutted me. It wasn't um, even on your gambling. Addiction. No, I, I had uh, I had a photo shoot. I had a suit, right, and I'd, I'd claimed back some expenses, and I'd, I'd had it in my pocket. And then when I took the suit home, it must have fallen out in the street or the cab, <sighs> and I remembered it and, and I went to the, I went every pocket twice, and it was just the fact, I don't think about, oh god, that's terrible, that's a terrible blow, I think, oh god, if I had it back now, it would be free money. Yeah. If I suddenly found it now, I'd have four hundred pounds that was just free money, and yeah. I had a little nap to get over it, and I was- <laughs> And you were fine. I was okay. But that was- Four hundred pounds. Someone just but... found- what a gift that is. Oh. Just, I mean, untraceable- it, Was it in a money clip? Was it rolled no, up in a money clip? No, it was just literally four hundred quid in an envelope. Oh, and that's so that, a treat. I know. Uh, see, I'd always hand it in. I genuinely would, unless I found it in a f in the middle of a forest or something. <laughs> if it was in the street. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, because a bear dropped it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if I found it in a pub or a cab, I just hand yeah, it to anyone who's rushing through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But would, I, I'd hand it in. I, I would, um, But there's no way. If they found it in the street, there's no way they could do it. You know, it goes to police station and it sits there for six months. But yeah, exactly. Well, it's not. It's a waste of time. Pocket it. But um. I- cause when I was younger, I remember being outside a post office once when I was about ten or twelve, and finding a purse, and thinking, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I opened it up, and there was some money in there, and a pension book, and so it was obviously an old lady, I had an- I found an address, I sent it to her, th and my mum said, you know, you've been so good there, you'll probably get a little reward. She'll probably send you a little reward. Nothing! I got maybe a thank you note, but no cash, no Mulan, nothing. Really? And I was livid, cause I'd been told that I was gonna get a reward, I thought I've been a good Samaritan, nothing. So, Many moons later, when I was at university, I learnt from that, and I- and this is- this is the most bizarre thing, it this was like- This explains a lot, doesn't it, Carl? This mm. is like the Mary's Celeste. <laughs> I went to, uh, a cash point to put my- I thought, I can't get my card in here. And I realised there was already somebody's card in the machine, they put the code in, but, um, oh. but they-, they but the, then they just disappeared, they'd been kidnapped or something, so it was just there, waiting, sitting, said, what do you want to do, and it gave you a number of options. I thought, Interesting. Steal or go to <laughs> yeah, heaven? Yeah, exactly. He went, oh dear. Um. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I pressed, uh, balance, just to check what their bank balance was. Unbelievable. It was a considerable sum of money. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was not typical student debt. It was like, I think they were a foreign student, there was a lot of cash in there. A lot of Did money. Did you feel a slight bulge in your trousers when you saw the amount of money? I couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> I thought to myself, <laughs> now then, I could just take that card out and hand it in. Or I could teach them a small lesson, right? And maybe give myself a reward because last time I did that, I didn't yeah. get a reward. So if I give myself thirty pounds, mm. then I'll take the card out. Thirty. Give myself thirty. Yeah. You didn't really. Pounds. Well, I thought that's a good reward, and I and I went in, I handed the card in, I took that food, and that's... that's a little reward for me. And I'll tell you this: don't think it's evil because I went in, I bought everyone a drink. Uh, well, brilliant. Yeah, I didn't yeah. tell them I got the money free. Well done. Excellent. 
So, so I, I, probably gangsters are quite generous with well, the money they've <laughs> stolen from other people. Yes, but someone's negligence, Rick, has lent. The, the, well, the thing is this, Steve. Right? I, do, I, I, I believe it, except that buying people a drink, Carl. What do you think? Well, <laughs> I kind of thought that when he said it, but then I thought, but they'll be buying one him back. So he's still that. So in a way, he's still a winner. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's a winner in that situation, including the student, because frankly, if there had been a, a less scrupulous person who found it, they'd have probably helped themselves to a considerable sum. I cannot believe he did that. There was thousands and but thousands if, of pounds in there. What if it was, uh, what if Beadler jumped out and slapped you with his little claw and said, we've been filming this merchant? Well, what, so what? How old were you then? I don't know, 19, 20? Would you do it again or was it just to get the world back for the old lady's purse? Um... Possibly do it again, yeah. You're, jo you're joking! Well, you've got to think of it this way. You've got to think of it as there was a lot of money in there and someone less scrupulous than me would have taken a fortune. They'd have cleaned them out. Whereas I just took a small reward, which I thought was more than enough for someone's negligence. <laughs> and I've returned the card. They've got the card back. Everything's fine. Think of I someone else. I could have gone on a spending spree. I could have been buying stuff, all sorts. Yeah, but it wasn't yours at all. Yes, but it it's- They probably would have given me a reward. And because, you know, sometimes people forget or, you know, they don't give you a reward, I thought I should he take it He had to go at your dad for nicking a loaf of bread out of a phone box. Yeah, but that's because it's for old people, geriatrics and stuff. How do you know how old was your people you were robbing from? It's it a student, it was on a student hungry. campus. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. I think it was more, I thought it was excellent behaviour. God, that's good incredible. That, that is, that's shown another side to him, isn't it? What would you have done, Carl, in that situation? And tell the truth. I, I might have helped myself a little bit. I there you are. I there you are. What this is helping no, yourself a bit. Like you say, just sort of you know send it in back and sort of say you know. If you find a pound coin in the street and you can be bothered to bend over for it, then have it. But someone's cash point card or uh, personal belongings. I'd let them know though. Did you send it to them and say, I've, I've you know I've service charge included. I've <laughs> sort I've took that out already. <laughs> no, I gave I handed it in to <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> Let them know. I'd, I'd say, you know, uh, you're lucky, eh? Right, I just took, uh, I'd probably said 20, actually. Okay. Cause that's just like one note. Sorry, you, sure. sorry, right, okay. You are winding me up. No, no I'm not. I mean, not for, for once. I mean, I, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, right? Is, well. is, is, is No, he is. <laughs> and you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not- I'm You're careful. not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful. Absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look come after on, the pennies, the pennies will take care of themselves. All right? <sighs> Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, all right? but the thing is, right, um, I know that I took the mickey out of you for like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. <laughs> but the thing is, you can't help that. Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies. I'm frugal with money with you. <laughs> well, I've I- have no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever- have, Steve, have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Blair Rickman. <laughs> Blair, out of time on XFM. 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Talking of money, Steve, l l look at this, right? It's in the paper. A wife has had her beauty insured for a hundred thousand pounds in case she grows ugly and her husband walks out. Uh, Nicole Jones, 26, of Chipping Sodbury, Gloucestershire, says two hundred pounds a year, that's why it pays two hundred pounds a year for a policy. She arranged it um, as a present for her husband Richard. Her beauty will be judged by a panel of builders. <laughs> <laughs> so... Have they been selected beforehand, do you think? Do they I don't know. know who they are? I but assume I they're mean, complete I, strangers. So suppose, like, in 30 years' time, he looks at her and goes, oh, you've lost your looks. She goes, well, have I? Yeah. Goes, well, yeah. <laughs> well, have I? <laughs> Call in the panel. Some girls go, <laughs> Yeah. All right, get him out for that. Well, never mind that. It's your, yeah, she's lost it. Right, well, hundred grand. Well, they, hundred grand coming your way. They stand on some scaffolding. Yeah, she <laughs> walks by. Yeah, and if they will whistle, that is amazing. Uh, do you think they give her a quote first? Yeah. What if they say, actually, love, you've got nothing to lose. You're not. You're yeah. not. You're not an oil painting anyway. Yeah. We can't come round and judge your beauty for at least. Two I mean, weeks. that is just open. 
to abuse, isn't yeah. it? A hundred thousand pounds. Because I remember, um, uh, in, in Japan, uh, they're mad on golf, right? And if you get a hole in one, you buy everyone, you throw a party. And it was costing them, like, thousands and thousands of pounds. So they were insuring themselves against getting a hole in one. And so, miraculously, <laughs> everyone was going, I got a hole in one. Did he? Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Paying out insur- I mean, they, they, they could be in that together, couldn't they? It's they're bizarre. not. I'm sure they're not. They're, she, they're yeah. probably more honest than you two that would take 20 quid out of a cash point. But, you know. No, 30. 30. <laughs> yeah, 30. I, the, I like the wording, though. A wife. Yeah, a wife. The word wife. <laughs> the word wife. It's a. I don't know why it makes. I, I just find it's just an odd word. This is. Hello, this is my wife. Hello, uh, the wife. Yeah, the wife. My wife. It just seems a word that you have to say if you're 60. You can yeah, go, I know. Have you met the wife? And even then, ironically, unless someone, you don't know exactly, are you married? Yeah, um, my wife is from, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that makes sense, but it's still wife. Gonna, people go, oh, better get back, I'm eating the wife for dinner. <laughs> no. but especially when you know well, them. I, I, uh, yeah, I remember bumming into someone, a friend of mine, in, uh, somewhere at a party, to a couple that I knew, and I'd known both of them before they got married. In fact, I'd known her, I think, longer. And he, and I said, da, 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 where's so-and-so? And, uh, and he went, oh, uh, the wife will be along in a minute. And it's just this notion that, what, what you use her name. <laughs> I know, I know she I is. know she is. I know <laughs> her name. <laughs> is that well, I used to call her by that. Why? It's like someone going, you know I'm married. You yeah, know, exactly. you know I'm married. It's in like the, showing In the what? eyes of God, we are wed. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, so that makes me more that of an of, adult than you. It's the ownership. Yeah, it's like going, you know I'm a real man. I've yeah. got a wife and here she is. She's I, my wife. I find it, there's the words I, f- I find hard to say. <laughs> um, in a shop, I could never ask for wet ones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I if I have to go and ask for wet ones, I won't bother. Or toilet duck. Another one I probably that I never say Snickers. <laughs> Why? Don't know. I think as I grew up with Marathon. Yeah. See, I still this is so pathetic. I still get embarrassed buying uh, toilet paper. Really? We well, you know if you go into like your twenty four hour shop just around the corner, not a supermarket, big shop. But if you just go in there, you're just maybe buying some milk. Yeah. A chocolate bar. Because it's like they know what you're up to. No, no, but they know you're going to use it to, you know, when you're you're going to the lavatory at some point. It's sort of it's too intimate. But you exactly, know? they just go. I know what you're thinking. I'll be using this after masturbation. <laughs> That's saving all embarrassment. <laughs> 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 just the ghost of the poor mag I just walked in. <laughs> Alice Costello, Alison, from way back <laughs> on XFM 104.9, a retro cut. Indeed. Well, up to the modern day, the newest game show around. Rockbusters. Whee! Isn't there a jingle? It would probably be something like, oh, Rockbusters. It would be very, <laughs> yeah, those along those lines. I've got to work it out, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go without it for now and okay. then we'll be ready next week. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, the prizes, once again, sourced by Carl Pilkington. I think it's, um, been in the prize bag before, Carl, but I could see it back. The best air guitar <laughs> album in the world ever. Do they uh, keep sending it back? Is that just one? <laughs> is that, <laughs> it comes through the window, tied to a brick. Uh, actually, there's a lot of good stuff on there. There's, uh, the kink. Knopfler? Is there Knopfler? Knopfler, I believe, is on it's there. It's clapped in anywhere to be seen. Definitely clapped, so I would have thought, per, a uh, Deep Purple. We got Quo, Skinnerd, Mac, uh, Snake <laughs> is there, Straits, excellent. And, uh, yeah. yeah, there's all sorts on there, obviously. Yeah. Um, this is always an odd choice, but fair enough. This is the, uh, current album by the Yardbirds. <laughs> their first studio album in 35 years. So, uh, the new music stage in XFM, giving away that. X. I suppose it's new music in, in, in some ways. Um, a Smash Hits compilation, we've got stuff on there. It's, uh, uh it's Curiosity Killed the Cat, it's all the, uh, the old favourites. Plus two DVDs, uh, Columbo. What which, Columbo? Uh, it's got a couple of classic Columbo episodes there. Suitable for framing. One of the best, um, TV programmes of all time. Why do I get- you can always tell immediately who the villains are. Suitable for framing, I'm assuming that's some kind of art dealer, yeah. maybe an artist. Candidate for crime, presumably some kind of, um, presidential political, or yeah. political candidate. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, that'd be good, I'm sure, Columbo. I mean- Stab woman. <laughs> that was my <laughs> yeah. favourite episode. St- stab lady wife. I mean, to be fair, I'm not sure why- who would buy a Columbo DVD like you can't find it on TV? It, on now. <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> it's on now. I guarantee, cause, cause someone could maybe, uh, email in, is there an episode of Columbo on now anywhere that got cable or digital? I think it will <laughs> Almost be. Almost certainly. But it is great. And the other, uh, DVD here is Cruise of the Gods, which was the, um, the one-off TV kind of film, comedy film that was on at Christmas, featuring Rob Brydon and Steve Bryden, Coogan. Coogan. Uh, uh, it's good. Williams. So, uh, yeah, there's a few gifts there, not, not, not bad, not bad right, at all. Right, now we get to the, uh, 
<laughs> for the, the real deal. Thing, okay, this is what, what everyone tunes in for. This is monkey news, I think. Not, right, not, well, not the music. Um, go on. Well, there we go, then. Yeah. Three, uh, cryptic clues and well, that, and just work really it out. cryptic, but... Easy as that. Email well, in. It's, uh, yeah. Email in. Right. Well, what's the email address? Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Well, don't say that they know it or care. I think, yeah. So the first one, uh, he's got American coins all down his spine. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's got American coins all down his spine. What, what band's that? What artist is it? What email it, in. What does it begin with? What? N. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, I've got it already. Right, That's then, rubbish, too easy. Yeah, right, go on next. second one. Jeremy Beadle, uh, has got arthritis. Right? Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. Yeah. That's the second clue. The, uh, initials there, S-L-F. Right, S-L-F. Jeremy Beadle's, uh, got a little bit of arthritis. <laughs> and, uh, the <laughs> third one, a Foxy, Shipman, and a country western singer on a merry-go-round. S D, right? So Foxy Shipman and some country western singer having a go on a merry go round. The initial S D, right? So email in Ricky Dot <laughs> I'm intrigued with that one. I'm genuinely intrigued with that one. I, I was... like the fact there's a certain whiff of controversy about it <laughs> because Shipman is mentioned. <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh, a little dear. bit edgy that. So uh, that's that's the three. He's from your neck of the woods, isn't he? As well, Shipman. Yeah, yeah. I think my mum's mum used to use him. Okay, let's play a record. Well, you want to play a record or play some adverts if you fancy some ads? Oh, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather, I'd rather, yeah. I've got, got, got some for you. Placebo, this picture on XFM 104.9. Steve? Yes? I think, uh, Carl's gonna put most people to shame. We were talking about generosity earlier. Because Carl is a nice, generous bloke when it, when it really comes to it. He's paying for Father's Day. He's paying for the cottage that he's going away with his dad. Are you really, Carl? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no way of us proving if that's true or not. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> well, you could be lying. But why would I do that? Well, because you want to show off. I didn't do it on air, you mentioned it. <laughs> I don't want people to know how generous I am. <laughs> I just... <laughs> right. Just do it, just get on with it. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah. charity work in that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you, do you, do, but I, I'd have thought that you wouldn't have fallen for Father's Day. I'd have thought you'd have known it was like. Well, we don't. I mean, to be honest, it's a bit of a coincidence because I paid yeah. for it anyway, and it's happened to fall on, right. on Father's Day, mm. right? Don't, and my dad's not don't, that don't, don't, don't fall for it. It, it. I mean, obviously that and Mother's Day, and a plethora of other things were. I mean, literally invented mm. by card companies to make more money. I know. Uh, yeah. That's that's that's. Uh, I mean, my dad always says, "Don't don't get him a card or anything." Um. Cause he hates it. With, with all these things that I'd like, you know, rip off times, really, just ripping people off. Yeah. Um. Sounds, sounds a bit stingy, though. Well, no, no, I mean, he's right. Yeah. He's right, it's just, uh, because fellas aren't bothered about getting cards anyway, are they? But the, the other thing that he noticed, um, you know, helping out the flower companies, the Princess Diana thing, when she- Oh, f Sorry. Yeah. No. Jesus. Cry Carl. So when, yeah, when- Carl, when, what, what, what do you mean? What no, do you mean? That's, that's what he said. He said, oh, I nearly swore then because I was, uh, you surprise me all the time. No, no, But just, that is incredible. Sorry, what, I don't understand what you're talking about. All the flowers that were sort of sold that day. Right. What, right. for people to leave as a commemoration or Yeah, they, they, they made a, made a men, didn't they? Who did? Flower companies. Right, so what so are you saying? saying? So he's saying, just saying, you know, makes you wonder. <laughs> what, whether? About what? Whether it was in the floor or behind the hit. Oh. So it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy by the flower companies. I would love to see you and your dad just sitting at home watching a bit of Channel 5 when apes go mental, right, with your, with your roast when's dinner. That on, when's that on? <laughs> <laughs> and then talk like, well, yeah, well, you know, you know, kill Diana, don't you? Flower company's son. Right, right, right quite right, Dad, you're not wrong. What are you talking about? No, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, it's, it's like you were saying about the cards, you know, on Father's Day and that, it's, it's, it's just a bit, too just much a of a coincidence. Weird. Too much of a coincidence. I'd be interested to see sort of, you know, like the business graph. Sure. <laughs> yeah. On how the companies were doing, then suddenly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then, but then by the same token, uh, Elton John, you know, he had the biggest selling hit record, didn't he, off the back of that? Mm. I mean, so, is he incriminated as well? 
If you want, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a conspiracy theory you've there. not kind of analysed terribly closely. You've put it out there, and if people maybe who are investigating want to kind of add that into their inquiries, then they can. Yeah, sure. But uh, no, that's, that's 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 all I'm saying. I'm just you know, because it's always the same thing, isn't it? Like I was out <laughs> shopping the other day, uh, you know, treating Suzanne like I do. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I like I like spending money on that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was in WH Smiths. Yeah, oh, classy. Yeah. The, what was, the, it, uh, was it? Was it a big birthday? Was <laughs> it? <laughs> you, you was, it a th was it a thirtieth? No, I was I was getting a. Uh, <laughs> was it two biros for the price of one? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting I was getting a card for my dad for Father's Day anyway because yeah. I'm yeah. seeing him. Yeah. Uh, big Toblerone. Yeah. There was a who, is it, who, who is it? Who said Father's Day? They love a, love a Toblerone. I've never understood Toblerone because the only time I see Toblerone is in airports, yeah. right, and minibars. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is what the the, the, the small Toblerone is for the minibar in a hotel, yeah. three star upwards, mm. and the big Toblerone. Well, it's the big is, Toblerone is a gift, isn't it? It can uh, only be a gift. You wouldn't uh, buy a big Toblerone you, for yourself. Uh, yeah, a duty free gift. The Toblerone. It's next to um, you know uh, Chanel Number no. Five Toblerone <laughs> yeah. and a bear. <laughs> but it's, who specifically yeah. would you be buying that Toblerone for? I don't know. Someone who's clearly never had it before and would think it was interesting novelty. It, uh, yeah. Well, this I, gift's interesting. I'll tell you what, though, Toblerone is brilliant. I mean, if, if whoever makes that, if they want to send sort of, you know, some Toblerones, I, I mean, I, I will eat Toblerone. Well, yeah. Mm. I think very much the same and, uh, about, um, I think very much the same about fags. And of course- cigarettes. If you've got any boxes of cigarettes and, uh, <laughs> that you don't want, you know, <laughs> duty free or whatever, I, send them. I'd just like to say that, uh, d in no way do, do, do I endorse <laughs> Carl's dad's theory that flower companies were behind the death of Diana. No, well, well, I, Maybe I could say that on air as well, just to save any complaints. I'll tell you what though, <laughs> talking about fag packets and that, do you know like now, they've got, uh, they've got, if you have these, They'll do you in, sort of thing, yeah, on yeah. the front now. They've got these special stickers on them. Yeah. I saw a thing in a magazine the other day. <laughs> in Brazil, <laughs> it's got, like, pictures of ill people on them. Blimey. That They've is They've gone powerful. really, uh, hardcore over there. That's good, isn't it? But, I mean, uh, to be fair, what more can they do? I mean, there are fag packets now that say these will kill you and people are still smoking them. I mean, yeah. I don't know what they c I don't think it I don't think the message well, is getting you through. Could, you could ban them all together, I suppose. If, if they it, it, it seems weird to, uh, sort of like, you might as well sell guns and go, careful, you can kill people yeah. with these. Well, ban them then. I'll just be <laughs> careful. Let's shoot your eye out with that. This is poison. This is poison. These are really, really mental poison drugs. You know those people with the, you ever see them in the street, uh, they're selling fags, duty free, obviously. They're just selling them on the street. You just, have you ever seen these guys? Yeah, I, yeah. I walk yeah. up and they finish your road lock because yeah. I'm just near my place. And, uh, all these people, they're just, and they're sort of looking a bit shifty. And then they just, they think that you're maybe a smoker. They just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, fags. And they'll open their jacket. And it literally will be like something from, you know, the 1940s. They won't they'll go have, to you, though, do they? <laughs> no, smoking. They're stunting your growth. They know you well. must have never had a fag in your life. Um, but, you know, I might be buying them as a gift or something because I'm quite a generous guy. <laughs> 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 but it struck me, I was chatting with my friend about, you know, there seems to be, there are certain people who are very, you know, maybe they, they, they have trouble getting work or maybe they, um, you know, they're, they're immigrants who've not landed on their feet and they've, they, they've had trouble, you know, and so there's a couple of jobs they can do. It seems to be there's the flag selling. There's those people I know it's on Oxford Street who bend a piece of wire into the shape of your name. I mean, what kind of a gift is that, really? <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. It's like, oh, it's like they're literally giving them out. Or you can, de well, you can have the, the bending the name, you can be selling those things that you throw what? at the wall and they, uh, they sliver down. At Dover? Yeah. What, 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 what are you doing? Yeah, uh, are you I'm doing? a, I'm a, uh, trained carpenter. Right. You can you write really small on a piece of rice? I could try. Could you write those names on a piece of rice? I could try. It's quite tricky, but do what you about, you What do? about the rest of your family? <laughs> Well, that one's only two, but he could be trained. He's got smaller fingers. Okay. Do you want to, um, to sell some knocked-off perfume? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Again, we'd like to apologise for any <laughs> inadvertent racism, suggestion that Lady Diana was killed by flower companies, or that Steve makes a habit of stealing from cash points. What about... XFM 104.9. A picture of Rick Waller on the front of the bargain bucket. <laughs> Chili Peppers, universally speaking, on XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and, of course, Carl Pilkington. Now, people come up to me and I say, is Carl for real? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, they want to say, is he that stupid? And the answer is yes, right? Some people think that he's putting on, some people think that he's a character that we've invented, yeah. like we've got an actor in, like he's a Gareth Keenan or a Tim or yeah. something, and I go- That no, we've scripted. Exactly, yeah. No, he's absolutely real, aren't you, Carl? I go, where does he come from? Well, 
just tell the story. We came here and, well, uh, I was much too important to run the list myself this time round. So they just gave us a team Steve, boy. Steve came in with you, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why do you remember that? Well, it- Steve knows. I don't want to keep going over it, no, but it's, it's just the way he looks. It's just great. <laughs> <laughs> Were you taken aback? A little bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, right. And, uh, and uh, he's just developed into my favourite thing. I also said that you get bored with, like, you know, battling tops or, you know, pets sometimes. I mean, I love- I love my cat, but he's not as, you know, Colin. my cat- Yeah. Colin, Colin. Actually, um, Carl's away next week. Is he available to run the day? <laughs> no. Well, he's not as- he's actually not as intelligent as Carl, and that's the truth. He's not, you know, well, he's- marginally. Yeah, but, um, but, uh, and then in the week, he's like one of these little Tamagotchi toys, Carl, because I have to phone him every day and keep his interest up. Yeah. Like, I'd give him an interesting fact. And, um, I got a book out and I found out that I'd call Carl like that. And I thought this was a great fact, right? Um, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. Right? I thought that was incredible. Sure. Okay. So I phoned him and I said, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. He went, what's it do after that? I went, what? <laughs> he said, well, how fast can it run when it's adult? I went, well, even faster. He went, oh. I thought we could just do it then, but then it sort of lost it. I went, what are you talking about? I went, you know, that's incredible. A two-day-old gazelle can run He went, well, no, that's what they do. I went, what? He went, that's what they do, isn't it? I went, what do you mean? It's two days old. Right? He went, yeah, but a one-day-old fly can fly. I'm 30 and I can't fly. It's not <laughs> yeah. what I do. Right? And I went, right. He went, a jellyfish can hold its breath underwater for hours. I went, it doesn't hold its breath, does it? It hasn't got lungs. So he went, what? I know I had him. He went, what do you mean? I said, well, they don't breathe, do they? I went, what do they do? I went, well, they get oxygen directly from the water by osmosis straight into their cells. And it just went quiet. And I went, a two-day-old gazelle, and he went, yeah. Yeah. I, do you know what I mean? He was I, just thinking about the jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, he, was, he was looking up osmosis, <laughs> and then he was thinking about the jellyfish. But I just think, I mean, if Bam is anything to go by, this little gazelle spends a whole day trying to stand, and the next day it enters the derby. And you don't <laughs> think that's amazing. You don't think that's incredible? Yeah. See, I've, you know the sort of things I find incredible. Go on. Um, mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny ah, objects. Kettles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Well, uh. listen, listen, remember the time when I told you about the, the uh, baby that had a baby? The well, baby that had a baby? The baby that had a baby. <laughs> yeah. It's happened again. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Well, it, it didn't happen the first time. It was in the papers, I think, on, uh, on Monday, in all the, uh, tabloids. So, it's a twin where w one is, has, has grown and the other one is still at a fetal level. No, it wasn't, though. No, it had grown. He was saying to his mum, uh... Who was saying to his mum? The little kid who was seven years old. And he kept he? saying, yeah. yeah he was and he was pregnant? Yeah. I know. <laughs> what do you mean? And, uh, he was saying to his mum, oh, God, I don't feel well. And, like, his belly was all swollen, and they thought he'd just been eating cake or whatever. And, uh, he was saying, I can feel something moving about. And they were like, stop messing about. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, eventually, I think he was in gym at school. In gym? What, gym <laughs> was pregnant with him? <laughs> oh, was, no, it was, was like at, a Russian he, doll. He was at, he was at school, right? Just about to do, uh, sit-ups or whatever they do at school, right? Yeah. And, uh, Flew out across the room. teacher goes, you're a bit fat. You look a bit pregnant. And, uh, so best thing to the doctors, took him, said, uh, you're seven years pregnant or something like that. What are you doing? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what, 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 or something like that? You're no, no, seven no. years pregnant. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> you say the doctor. <laughs> Go! Why don't you think well, about what you say before you say it? See, see the reaction I get. Now, the gazelle, I didn't get excited like that. <laughs> <laughs> seven years pregnant. Send it in. If someone's online at the moment, just having a look around, it'll be on, it'll be, it happened on Monday or Tuesday. Cause I told you at the pub quiz, didn't I Steve? I said but to I you, you, another you... baby's had a baby. <laughs> yeah. And you were like, yeah, uh, whatever. Well, I just thought you were talking nonsense as ever. Well, we'll find out. You're well, seven yeah. years pregnant. Yeah. You're a fool. Play a record. Well, we've still got stuff coming up. Ooh, monkey news? Rockbusters answers. We'll have to yeah. get that out of the way soon, cause we've got well, to get out Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Yep. Brilliant. America by Simon and Garfunkel on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais and I understand I'm about to read my words, Steve. Well, once again, there's always someone and, uh, it looks like it's Mike Lamb who it has come to Carl's La rescue. Lambo's let me down then. Doctors have removed a four-pound baby boy from the stomach of his seven-year-old twin brother. Yeah. 
Alan well, Jan so, so, yeah, Lev was yeah. born with the freak fetus growing inside him. For seven years, it lived like a parasite until a school doctor became alarmed about Alan Jan's bulging tummy and took him to hospital. Surgeons who gave him a scan operated immediately, unaware that the baby was attached to the boy's blood vessels and still alive. They saved Alan Jan from certain death, but knew the eight-inch fetus was doomed. So there we are. Um, boy pregnant with his own twin brother by Barbara Davis. That was in the mirror, apparently. So, uh, I've read on and all the facts are right. They, they took him to school, the parents, uh, didn't realise. And that isn't even, uh, this week's Freak of the Week. <laughs> I mean, that, that's <laughs> still that to come. Free. <laughs> You've got that, you can have that. <laughs> that's the Free Freak of the Week. <laughs> free Freak that, of that's, the Week. That's, yeah, that's giveaway, that's like thirteen and a half percent extra. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you might get with hairspray or something. So that, I mean, if that's, if that's just the throwaway Freak of the Week, there's two Freaks of the Weeks there. If that's, if those two figure out, I can't wait to see what the actual Freak of the Week is that people are paying for. Mm. <laughs> it's incredible, Carl. I'll tell you what, something else you can have for free. Go on. Uh, another sort of freaky thing, right, I was watching this, uh, this programme in the week. Right? What? Uh, I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it is, it, it was about, uh, I just saw, <coughs> saw this little fella on it, right? What do you and, mean little uh, fella? He, he was doing this history thing. Oh. Right. Yeah, I know what you mean. I no. So, is this that he's found out that a Viking was a bit like him? Yeah, that's it, yeah. D he was boneless or something, or he's- uh, Well, that's, that's the weird thing. What do you think of that, Steve? He's what? He's boneless? No, he was called Harry the Boneless or something. Yeah, but you I know what you're gonna get there, don't you? <laughs> that's what I mean, I always have a- have a name, <laughs> Elephant Man, you know. <laughs> Harry the- Harry the Boneless. <laughs> Where is he? I, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm meeting, I'm meeting someone, uh, waiter, um, what's his name? He's called Harry the Boneless. He's over there flapping around. Yeah. 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 He's over there in the bucket, having noodles. <laughs> That's what I mean. But, do you reckon you could do that? Do you reckon you could <coughs> have your bones taken out? <laughs> talking to him! He's brilliant! It's like talking no, to a five-year-old. I was asking Suzanne when she was watching it, and she was like, ask me later. Yeah, brilliant. She was, she wanted to know about, you what know. What did you, you said, you were, you watching this programme about history, right, about Vikings. Like that, right? You turned to your girlfriend and said, do you reckon you could have your bones taken out? Yeah. I love that. What do you I think? mean, that's, that, that is why you are my favourite What do you thing. mean you think you could have your bones taken out? <laughs> Firstly, why would you have your bones taken out? If well, you've only got a small flat or something, <laughs> and there isn't much room. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and what I mean is, would all your organs still do the stuff. No, no. They wouldn't. You'd just be mush. Listen, I'll tell- I'll teach you something now, right? The skeleton, right? Spam. Yeah? Support, movement, anchorage- no, support, protection, anchorage, movement. Spam. That's what- that's what the bones do. Yeah? You couldn't stand up. You wouldn't be protected, because they protect his rib cage, skull, of course. Anchorage, everything holds onto it, every muscle is tethered to pull against something, like a crane, a pulley system, so you wouldn't be able to move at all. Uh, mm. do you know what I mean? So you'd just, you'd, you'd be in a bucket. There'd be nothing. You, well, you'd die immediately, obviously. No, you can't have your bones taken out, Carl. Um, I mean, why do you need to ask that question? Sorry, uh, but Boneless Bob, or whatever his name was. Harry. <laughs> Harry. Harry the Boneless. <laughs> he, he presumably <laughs> didn't have any bones, I mean, that's why he had that name, obviously. No, he did. No, he had, he's got the name. Yeah, exactly. No, he was just... <laughs> he was... <laughs> um, I've had an email here from Graham, old Ken Rowe, he just says, I had a dream about Carl last night. I had a dream about Carl last night, can I sue? <laughs> I've no idea what he looks like, apart from the boldness, and yet he turns up in the middle of my dream. I don't need this, it's harassment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but people are having dreams about you now, Carl. Uh, you actually- <laughs> it's like you're one of the- something that cre was created by the Brothers Grimm. Uh, I've got- I, I- I had a dream. You know when you used to, people used to have anxiety dreams, they had an like, exam or something, like, you suddenly go to school and you realised, oh my god, you didn't have, um, uh, your trousers on, or, you know, I had an anxiety dream, I assume- we, we started off an anxiety dream about the office, about filming the office, and we had to- we had to film in HMV, but someone hadn't cleared it, and so we- we had to find an R price. And I went, oh, okay, that'd do. And as I was walking there, right, um, I didn't have any shoes on, which is like an anxiety dream, but I looked down and I went, so what? Yeah. So I'm so lazy now, I think, <laughs> even an anxiety dreams don't kick in to me. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, that, I think that's just a memory. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be at all surprised if you, uh... <laughs> Turned out with the film with the yeah, office with no shoes. We don't need shoes. When we were originally doing the pilot for the very first series, um, 
obviously Ricky's the main character, he's in it all the time, he's obviously important, he's had a big chance to get something made for TV, you know, this could launch our careers. And, um, I turn up on the Monday, he's twisted his ankle, he has to be wheeled around in a wheelchair, cos he went out jogging, stepped on a tin can in the street and fell over. Who left that there? Like a forty-year-old man with brittle bone disease, he just <laughs> twisted his ankle and he was out of action. It was pathetic. Yeah, that was the pilot. Absolutely pathetic. But I still turned up, Carl. That's the sort of trooper I am. Well, yeah, but you moaned the whole week. Wait, wait. Well, I didn't like having to go around in a wheelchair, did I? Yeah. It's not pleasant, you know, but in a, in a weird way, it taught me all the problems. <laughs> Do you have anxiety dreams, Carl? Do you ever lie awake worrying about stuff? Uh, cos I have a lot going on in my head. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. very- I, I, I don't have- <laughs> <laughs> What do you do? Rent it out to people? <laughs> <laughs> Is it two monkeys swinging in a tie at the moment? Yeah. I just don't have that many dreams. No. Uh, <laughs> I love- I love that! I love the fact you don't have that many dreams! Well, you haven't had a decent night's sleep since you were fourteen, according to you. Twelve. Really? Yeah, so I, I, I know ones. what you meant. I know what you mean, though. Now, when sometimes you're so tired, because I'd forgotten that you're so tired, and you think, "Well, I'm so, I'm so glad I don't have to go out tonight. I'm going to go and just lay on the couch and then go to bed." Yeah. Have but you had one, Steve? Anxiety you know? dreams. I do have them periodically. Yeah, it used to be a lot of you know things like running to get to get to school in time, but you know suddenly your feet are running but in I, treacle I and you can hear the school bell. And you I haven't had them for well. years. I just haven't had an anxiety dream for years and years and years. As yeah, don't know. I just don't care. No, well, no, you just genuinely don't care about anything. <laughs> this is the problem. You, you, you've just got to a point now where nothing bothers you, really. It's <laughs> like you're just too lazy and disinterested in anything. This show, your career, my career, Carl. <laughs> no, I never, I never give up on Carl. So, um, Carl, so this little Harry the Boneless, what was your point? Was that, was that really your point? You wondered if you could live without bones? Yeah, I saw, saw the little fella on, on this program and the he- The presenter? He, yeah. And he was, he was a small fella and he was talking about Harry the Boneless. And I thought, you know, that's, that's interesting <laughs> little bit of science stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's about it on him, really. <laughs> Alright, well that's just another bonus Cheeky Freak of the Week, isn't and it? And not, that's not even the Freak of the Week either. No, 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 no. That's still to come. So you've had a pregnant, you've had a pregnant Siamese twin. I know, it's been mad, mad in the You've had a Boneless week. fella and a... A, a, another fella talking about him. They're, they're not even involved in Freak of the Week. No. This is getting mad. Play a record. Let's play a record. Let's have Cheeky Freak of the Week afterwards, shall we? Yeah. Current <laughs> single from Nick Cave. <laughs> Can we do Monkey News first? Oh, I'd rather have a Cheeky Freak of the Week. Mm -hmm. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, He Wants You. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. So, Carl, off you go. Well, we, we, we're we not gonna do, uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've, we've done Quite a bit of that in the last twenty minutes. Right? You've so we'll on freaks, you think? Yeah, sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't like to keep saying. Don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right, because we're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with with you, Steve. Yeah. Right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of. You can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. I think it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right? So, so you're not freakophobic because you work with Steve? No, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, they, 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 by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. What's well, at least mentally handicapped. Now, there's a term you don't hear very often. In, in 2003, <laughs> there was a mentally <laughs> <laughs> the mentally handicapped. Isn't that what oh, it was? I don't know where to start. But I, I I'd mean, like to apologise for the Lady Diana stuff. Uh, <laughs> the term <laughs> mentally handicapped. Um, and any inadvertent racism that we may have stumbled What's over. the actual term then? <laughs> <laughs> Is it retarded? <laughs> right. Right, come on now. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news. Earlier than usual. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to save this link now. Monkey news. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> Right? On monkeys. Um, and most of it has been- Is uh, bollocks! No, it's been, has been like, happy stories. Oh, <laughs> is this that? It's not- It's just gonna be like our tune. Our monkey tune. That's Simon Bates and, uh, welcome to our monkey tune. No, but do, do you know what I mean? We've, we've done, we've done stuff about a monkey that <laughs> robbed a bank. Yeah. Why uh, is that happy? He had a great life after that. Right. What, and Marbella? Yeah. Right, we did, uh, 
The one who, who uh, saved someone's handbag in a railway station. <laughs> we've, uh, we've had a lovely marriage, couple of marriages. Couple of marriages. <laughs> couple of monkey marriages. Yeah, um, yeah. It was the one who got a job in a railway station. Yeah, the hairdresser. The one who set up a business in Spain. <laughs> I don't even I remember, don't that, remember one. that one. Either. So, I mean, uh, I'm willing to believe that that happened. Go on then, Carl. Um, but anyway, yeah. So today's isn't isn't that uh, isn't that happy really? It's about uh, some monkey. I think it was a chimp. Um, Who's an ape? Go on. It tried to. It, it, I mean, the story sets off a, a sort of a, a weird thing. Yeah. It's something about he, he went to Russia to do some business. <laughs> What are you talking about, Carl? I, I don't, it it I mean, jumped past that bit, though. It didn't start there. What are you- Do you know what I mean? It, <laughs> it, it didn't tell you what he was doing. It just said, there's this monkey, went to Russia. Um, <laughs> do some business. I know. Do some stuff. I don't know. Bit of monkey business. And, um, <laughs> anyway, didn't work out. Didn't work out! They were furious! <laughs> we wanted a surgeon, you send us a monkey. Um, anyway, ended up being homeless. Oh, no, I thought it was taking a turn for the worst. What, couldn't even get into a, you know, like a tree hostel or anything like that? That's, that's, that's the problem. And, oh, uh, God. ended up, uh, yeah, ended up homeless. Got in with some, uh, some tramps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah, so he's knocking about with some tramps and stuff. Um, you know, sharing drink and what have you around a little fire. Um, <laughs> They broke into some home, not sort of squatted. Right, so not homeless anymore. Um, problem was, yeah, he had a, a you know, you know, roof over his, uh, little area head. Yeah. And he goes, uh, oh, this is good, this is, you know, we're having a good time, this is sorting me out. Yeah. He had, he had his He mate. said that in Russian, though. <laughs> what, what, did he, what, what was he eating? I don't know. Don't know, it didn't say. But they're in this house. Well, like, well, he could only be eating, sort of like, you know, fruit, nuts, vegetables, that, I mean, they, they, Fat classically to sort of don't eat, you know, pork pies and But they've got drink McDonald's coffee. in Moscow now, so Sure. He probably turned sure. down on that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, there was a bust. Um, what? There was a there was a bust in the flat that they were squatting in. All the other tramps sort of knew what was going on, legged it, left uh little chimps out there, got arrested. And they thought it was a real fella at first. <coughs> they were like get him, you know, He's obviously just a scruffy bloke who hasn't had a shave and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hasn't shaved his back for a <laughs> yeah. while. Or his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His head. Got, yeah. Got him down the station and, uh, the boss was like, what's going on here? We've got a monkey here. He was like, what? So you arrested the monkey. Well, so, the, uh, arresting officers hadn't noticed all the way to the station that he kept slipping out of the handcuffs mm. and was going, <laughs> for the entire journey. They didn't notice till they got there. What, did they put a hood over his head, maybe, and just, like, bat, you know? I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you the, uh, give you the story if you want. Uh, there's the headline. What is it? What's the headline, Steve? I don't want to see it, but... The headline, this is once again from supposedly reputable news organisation Ananova, homeless monkey arrested in Russia. Uh. <laughs> did, sorry, did you read on, or did you see the headline and make up that whole story? It's, most, most of it is there. What, no, what isn't there? What, what bit isn't there, then? Uh, no, I think, I think, you know, uh, uh, Steve can have a look over it, check it out and stuff. Point but out it, the embellishment for me, Steve, will you? W well, what it doesn't say is, uh, <laughs> that the police didn't realise it was a monkey. That's what I was guessing. That's what I was guessing. Really. That they got it back and said, what are you doing, we've got a monkey here, and they go, yeah? Yeah. Oh, God. There's some more, uh, monkey problems in the week. Have you seen the Alfreds advert with monkeys in? No. There's a new advert out for Alfred's, selling bikes and stuff. Yeah. Got some monkeys in it. It's yeah. caused an uproar. Why? People are saying it's, uh, you know, dressing them up in tracksuits and that is, uh... It's taking the mickey out of Manchester. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not nice for the animals and that. So there's been loads of complaints about it. Well, they get a free it. bike or something, do they, I imagine? I think they kept the tracksuits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, record that's, that's after this now. cheeky freak of the week. No, I'm just just saying we're not doing this to sort of again take the Mickey out of the animals and stuff. These are true stories and that. But yeah, coming next freak of the week. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Red Morning Light on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, uh, Steve Merchant. 
and little Carl Pilkington. It's getting exciting because it's, uh, this special time of the week where he gets <laughs> to talk about a cheeky freak of the week. Well, just get Rockbusters out of the way, right? Because I've got, I've got to put these prizes in the post bag now because I'm shooting off. Yeah, because you've got to go early. So, I don't know how you do your job. Y you went to Manchester, you went to, uh, Madeira, you had a day off because your trousers were wet and you had a cold, and now you're shooting down a Cornwall, you're leaving early. How do you get your work done? You've got one job, me and Steve have got loads of things to do. I'm on fast, let me work. Like I said, the prize is ready and packed up. Here. <laughs> no one's been affected by me shooting off early. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So, Rockbusters answers, got to get them out of the way a bit earlier. Right? So, here they are. First one. Uh, he's got American coins all the way down his spine. Yeah. Why would that be? Right. <laughs> Initial was N. Nickelback. Nickelback. I got all these. One. I got all these this week. Right. Uh, second one. Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. What, what's going on there? Stiff little fingers. SLF. Stiff little fingers. Yeah. And the third one. Foxy Shipman. And uh, no. And a country and western singer. You said. <laughs> now, what's the initial? S D. Yeah. So spin doctors. Yeah. yeah. I got that. But, and then I said to you, why is it a country and western singer? And you said Dr. Hook. Why is it Dr. Hook? Why does that give the, anyone the clue, Dr. Hook? A country and western singer. It's just what, what, what was in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. There you go. So, it was changed this to Rockbusters or What Am I Thinking? You could have had Dre. What's in my mind? You could have had And The Medics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Just think it through. Who's the winner? The winner, very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying, this is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Well, uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, dear. Other people saying, um, it well, really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Ricky. Oh, car, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying you, oh, win, you whinge all the time. Looks like Steve like was right when he, um, sort of like poo poos your ideas. So. When he, uh, when he wheezes on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes. Take them to a charity shop or pawn them. Give me the money. I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl. I just wonder if it really has run its course now. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see what you come up with next week, no. though. <laughs> let's, see, let's see what you do. Let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. At five to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with another hip hop track yeah. full of uh, yeah. full of effing and Jeff. Well, no, no, no I, won't, I won't bring it into you. I'll do it myself at home. Because obviously that makes <laughs> oh, it easier. Dear. You can't cope. Oh dear. Are you actually going to be here next week, or are you still going to be in Cornwall? No, you see, there again. I'll be back. I'll be back in time. Oh. And in the in the week when I go to you know Cornwall, see the Monkey World. Yeah, you two days past the Monkey World. That still works. Yeah. <laughs> What? what? You're going to interview some of the monkeys? I love, stories. I love that. I love that. You were going, could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going, Carl, shut the f please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? Right. Right, so, are we having uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week? Do you want to do it? What yeah. time have you got to shoot off? Could do with shooting off sort of soonish. Okay. To be honest. <laughs> this is not radio. <laughs> Have you ever heard that on a radio <laughs> show? Chris Tarrant going, I can't shoot off on radio. <laughs> I, know, I, I really, I, I didn't, I couldn't get a later train. <laughs> I know! Get a, why didn't you get a later train? There isn't, there isn't, there isn't a later train. So I couldn't get to Cornwall tonight if I had to. If I had to finish this show, I couldn't possibly get to Cornwall. Rubbish. Mm. Of course there's a later train. Oh, I've, I've, I've booked it now anyway. Right, well, that's the like, point, isn't it? Yeah. You're not following Whatever, through. whatever. I don't think the show's lost anything. I think we've still had the, you know, <laughs> Freak of the Week's coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, we've had some, uh, interesting things we've been looking at. Uh, this week, it's, uh, it's about the strangest couple that ever got married. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> and, I, and we've had... Two sets of chimps, yeah. so it's stranger than that. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not Dale Winton and Mel McAndrew, <laughs> It's is it? not your parents, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going back again to about, I think this is about 19, uh... <laughs> Something rather than 1940. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, str important. strangest couple, a fella, right? He had skin of a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> he had the skin of a lizard, okay. <laughs> and the woman which, who he which married... Which he used as a condom. The yeah. woman who we married, yeah. 
uh, airiest woman ever. <laughs> right. Um, and that was their act. They used to, uh, tour the world and they'd say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, couple who've met, they're having a great life. <laughs> uh, let's get them out on stage, here they are. <laughs> and they'd, uh, they'd What do you mean out. he had a skin of a lizard, first of all? That's what, that's what he said, he, he had some sort of, uh, some illness. So he was called Lizard Man and you liked that because it was a good description. I right? thought that's good. I'm here, I'm here, hello, uh, do, do, we booked a table for two, who are you meeting? I'm meeting Lizard Man. Oh, he's over there. Yeah. You know who he is, right? Yeah. I'm Look meeting out. the hairiest woman in the world. She's over there. Yeah. Yeah. So what did they do for their act? Um, now, bear in mind that we had some Siamese twins last week and their act was having a bath. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I hope it's an improvement so, on that. Liz, what did Lizard Man, he came out and ate some flies, did he? I don't, I don't really know, I think, I just think they stood there on that. Yeah, what do you, when you read this and you, it goes, the most interesting fact ever, uh, Lizard Man, and you go, that's enough, that's yeah, enough, yeah, I well, can extrapolate from yeah, that. but straight away I start thinking, I'm thinking, right, I wonder if they got the wedding photos. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then, like you said that, they had a kid. Oh, what would that be like? Arthur exactly, Lizard, exactly. Arthur, that's it'd be like an ostrich, wouldn't it? It that's, would sort of like... That's what I was thinking. What did you think it would come out like, the baby? I didn't think what that looked like, I just was thinking, oh, parents' evening. <laughs> you, you, know I mean? you wouldn't want them coming up to the school, would you? <laughs> so, well, that's so little problem. Johnny, who starts off relatively normal, he's quite good at, you know, he's good at nature, yeah. isn't he? And, uh, and, uh, his mum and dad come into the room and they'd be looking round, wouldn't they? Well, it's always like that thing... At school when, like, you find out your, your mates, mum and dad, are really old. <laughs> right, have sure. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you go, have you, you know, your grand and granddad bought you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, mum and dad, yeah. and you go, oh. <laughs> It is weird. <laughs> what was that we were talking about? He calls him mum. What was that? I was like, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and no, like, that's always strange. <laughs> if you had a, if you had, you know, if you had Godzilla and King Kong as your parents, yeah. and, and it and was they're like always saying, fighting. They're always fighting, and, and, you know, like you say, if you're in a school play or something, you, you wouldn't tell them, would you? You wouldn't no. want them coming out with a video he camera. He didn't tell his parents what? he was in the, when we were- Well, exactly. You, you did Little Donkey, and you didn't tell your dad, did you? And he yeah. came along and videoed it. Yeah. Was kept that- Kept it quiet, kept it quiet, don't want them to know anything. But you didn't, what was it you was meant to be playing? You had a little drum, didn't you? Yeah, I was doing, uh, I had a little drum. I think it was meant to be playing We Three Kings. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> he started doing Little Donkey and I thought, I can add a touch to this. Sure, you <laughs> improvised. Started playing a lot of It was like the first it. remix, yeah. wasn't it? It went, went down well. But yeah, that's, that's all I was thinking with, uh, the Freak of the Week this week. That's, that's what I'm saying about Freak of the Week, it's to get people thinking, right? <laughs> thinking how lucky they are. That, you know, they, they don't have to... Comb their face. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? What do you mean, Freak of the Week is to let people know how lucky they are? Just, what about the little freak you're talking about? What are they thinking? They're going, oh, he's talking about me. I'm a little airy lizard man, on a stick. Pop in, give us a call. <laughs> I'd, I'd, you know, that's, that's what I'd like to do on a TV programme. That's what I want to do. I want to go and, like, meet these people and say, right, let's just go shopping, let's... You know, we'll film what your normal day's like. Yeah. Let's pop out. <laughs> Nip into Sainsbury's or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and you know, buy a comb. Po a, park whatever. right up close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is, is you just want to get a little message out there, which is that there's always someone worse off than you. Well, there's proof of that in this room. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Carl, when's your train? In a minute, I'm gonna get going now. I'll see you later. Thanks, Carl. Right. Brilliant. What are you playing? You can play a song? Kirsty McCall. Yeah. I'll see you later. Cheers. Kirsty McCall, New England. Carl Pilkerton has left the building. He's rushed away. He's on his way down to Cornwall. And he- and we're left by ourselves. Indeed. In the room. See, if we can do this- If we can press all the buttons and not make any mistakes, strictly speaking, there's no need for Carl. I don't mind if we make mistakes. Well, no, exactly. We never were in the, in the old days, No, sure, sure. Um, I think Carl is gonna love Cornwall. Because mm. I think, one, the mayor is probably an animal. <laughs> yes. And I imagine the townsfolk think like Carl. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I imagine he'll probably he'll stay there. He'll be made king. Have you ever seen Return of the Jedi? <laughs> yeah. In Return of the Jedi, the Ewoks, the little <laughs> furry creatures, they see C-3PO, <laughs> and because he can talk and, he's, and he can speak their language, they actually elevate him oh, he's to godlike back. status. What are you doing here? Hooray! He's back. I mean, what are you doing? Are you gonna stay till the end? I'm not, I'm not what are you right, doing? What are you doing? 
Right. Right, well there he is, he's on his way Yeah, if you, if you were listening online in Cornwall, I mean, I, I can't imagine that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> But, you know, on, like, on a clothesline <laughs> with, with a bean tin <laughs> exactly. at one end and yeah. a, a big bean tin in London. Or if the I'm, I'm cool in London. Yeah, or if the foil uh, <laughs> helmet you wear <laughs> to fend off laser rays from alien terror space are somehow picking up the show, <laughs> then uh, Carl's on his way. Look forward to him. He's bit, you know, cause he's got a sort of like, you know, the uh, uh, obligatory sort of red face that would mm. go well down there now. Because mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. he's been out in the sun or he was, uh, you know, uh, pre-boiled when he came in. But he's, he's rushing down to Cornwall now, going from Paddington Station. So, yeah. uh, you know- If, if you want, if you hang in, if you're in the Paddington Station area, you want to pop down there and sort of wave him off, then do. Yeah. Don't be afraid. That's not a, that's not a dirty sexual act. <laughs> wave him off. Yeah, I'd love to <laughs> <laughs> wave him off. And, um, call in the week as well, um, carl.pilgertonxfm.co.uk. Mm -hmm. Send him anything. Just clog up his email. Yeah. I mean, cause he gets stressed at work. So if you can send him three or four emails, each yeah over the next week so he's got to read them all but disguise them don't make them look rubbish so he's at least he's got to sort of open them and look at them or you know some of them might be correspondence so he will it's um you know just phone his uh, line as well just ask for him ask uh, carl and leave long messages yeah. on his voicemail yeah so if if you can uh just just for us just for me and steve remember it is mine and steve's show carl is merely like you know the icing on the cake yeah if carl can come back maybe next Friday or Saturday or, 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 or Monday, whenever he comes back, to about 250 emails and 200 voicemail messages. If you, if you put down, when it says, uh, what's the name of the message, the title of the message, if you put monkey news or monkey information, he'll have to open it then because he'll be intrigued, even yeah. if it's not about monkeys. Yeah. Do that anyway. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, voicemail messages, leave them long, I like this information, disguise it, that it might be important. Yeah. Uh, just so he has to listen through it. I wish I'd give his own mobile out, but, uh, you know, that, that is just too cruel, but anyone can get him at XFM, and of course we've given out his email before, so, I mean, go mental. There are plenty of ways to torture Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I mean, we've, we, we're doing all we can <laughs> on a Saturday. But we're only two people. But we're only two men. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, um, so listen, um, go, go berserk, we'll, uh, we'll be back next Saturday, and I believe with, uh, Song for, Song for the Lovers, Song, song for, for the ladies, ladies, whatever, it's a beautiful track. A song for the Sunshine. Song for the Sunshine, it's Lily White by Cat Stevens. And we've done it. We've, we don't need Carl. Definitely not. See you next week, Rick. Bye. Well, where's the darkness? They believe in a thing called love. Carl, do you? This is XFM 104.9. That is my favourite band at the moment. You love them? I, I absolutely love them. I think they're funny. I think they're straight down the line with a little bit of tongue in cheek. Mm. Ah, brilliant. Did you see them on Jules Holland last night? I didn't, night? sadly, no. Brilliant. Were they good? Yeah, absolutely jumped. Oh. I mean, Jules didn't know what to do. <laughs> was he was he playing some boogie woogie? He, they wouldn't let him play boogie woogie over Blimey. the song. That's what I mean. That's why he stayed back. But uh, I can't imagine it was very good. Though. He shook that. I'm it surprised was, you say they were good. It, it was Jules no. wasn't thinking. I mean, I, I thought I, I, I thought. Hold on, this is missing something. Yeah. This this is missing someone from Squeeze vamping over them. <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah. they did they did well without him. Extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Well, Here we are. Then. We're back. XFM one hundred four point nine. Carl had to leave early last week, but um, you can you stay to the end this week, mate? Or yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need another holiday. Oh! Oh, he's started already. I mean, you Steve's know, made you look like a bit of a twat already. And well, it's only five past one. But the only reason you don't go on holiday is because you have to spend money. <laughs> oh, and he's gone straight back! Well, he's gone straight back! <laughs> I can't come back to that. <laughs> oh, it's just, dear. it's just, uh, dynamite. It's just absolute. That was, that was serious. The last holiday, the case. last holiday Steve had, he, he sort of found a third world country so he could live like a mm. king for a week. It was Cuba, wasn't it? Going to Cuba, amazing. You can leave, you can almost rule the place. <laughs> if it weren't for Castro, I'd have been in charge, kind of cash I was flashing around. <laughs> They'd do anything for a dollar over there. It's extraordinary, literally. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Definitely, and I went to Kenya so, before that. So he thought to the prostitute, you said no. Mm. You were going. <laughs> yeah, well, it was two dollars. I mean, I'm not made of money. <laughs> Did you have a good holiday, Carl? Uh, yeah, it was all right. It's all right. Went down to Cornwall. Now so you're going to the monkey sanctuary. people down there, Steve. Well, don't look at me, I'm not from Cornwall. <laughs> well, you're from that sort of area. Well, not really, but no. Genetically, right. means. Right. They're weird. Yeah. Mm. Well, you must have slotted right in. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they weird? What do they look like? It's all, uh, sort of odd people. Uh, a lot of old people, but not just old, sort of messed up old. What do you mean, messed up old? It's just got, you can't just say that. There's just, there's- There was a woman with a funny neck. <laughs> Okay, in what way was it funny? Why did she have a funny neck? If you were writing an essay, you wouldn't say there was this woman with a funny neck. How would you describe it? She, uh, sort of had her head, like, pointed down all the time. Like, don't do it, this is radio. No, but just for you, I don't know. Like, like, yeah. Like, like, like. yeah. 
Okay, right. So, brilliant. I don't you, know. I was saying to Suzanne, what, what happened, you know, what do you think? Because Suzanne knows everything. That's the yeah. good thing about her being with you. You just ask her, what happened to her? And Suzanne goes, Carl, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been here before. Does Suzanne, she... your girlfriend, or mummy as you call her. <laughs> 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 oh, sparks are flying. Yeah. I got a little bit of chocolate. Can you just lick a tissue and wipe it off? Oh. No, she said it might have been like, because back in the olden days, they carried stuff on the... The olden <laughs> days. What do you mean the olden days? This woman was probably what, 50? Uh, no, she looked about 70. Yeah. But like I do on Cheeky Freak of the Week, right? I always turn it round and we get like something good out something of it. Something positive, yeah. yeah. I said, I said to Suzanne, I bet she finds a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Always staring at the ground, yeah. <laughs> oh it was always, dear. It was always oh. good. So, um, you Maybe she just had uh, new shoes and she was admiring them. Yeah. Did you think of that? Think Before you, you know, point the yeah. finger and judge? Mm. Or a necklace was too heavy. <laughs> exactly. So, you're back ref refreshed. So, uh, what have we got for this week? Have we sort of- cause we didn't meet last night, which, uh, we usually meet no, sort I, of- No, I called you and said it'd be good if we could- uh, you know, I wasn't getting back into London well, I was until up for it. I was up half for it. past seven, yeah. but- Yeah. Yeah, but we all need to be there. It's not yeah. just me and you being there. Yeah, yeah. so- yeah. No, you're right. I mean, you're absolutely right that I wasn't there yet because I wasn't willing to, uh, just be you know, governed by your particular schedule. You want to jet back in from another of your holidays right, it wasn't at a holiday. 8 o'clock. It wasn't a holiday, though. Well, so what, so you what do you mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean it wasn't a holiday? What was it? Uh, it was, well, it was a treat, wasn't it, from my mum and dad. So it wasn't a holiday. I, what, I so you didn't life. enjoy the five days off? You'd rather have been here moaning eight hours a day? Seven hours a day. You see, we said last week that you're always whinging. Here you are whinging now. I'm and you're saying it's not even a holiday. You're saying it's not even a holiday. What right. was it then? Would like a nurse who took sick children to Florida, would they say I'm having a great holiday? Sorry, what, what, what particular ailment did your parents have for the week that they had to, they had to fly in mm. uh, Carl Pilkington, MD? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Well, all right, it was holiday. Well yeah. then. Good. Now some honesty, now some truth. So you us. came in, you came back from your holiday, you wanted to start back to work straight away, Steve couldn't be bothered to meet. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. So we've got nothing prepared for this. Well, you can rely on Rockbusters. <laughs> right, that's coming We've got up. nothing. <laughs> uh, Monkey News. Even though you were away, you were still working. Still doing stuff. Did you Don't go listen. to the Monkey Sanctuary? I'll tell you about that. Tell right. us about it. Play a record. Right. What do you want? Let's smash and pump. Smash and pump. Yeah, 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 yeah. old classic yeah. from them, Cherub Rock. Yeah. yeah. Smashing Pumpkins, Cherub Rock. That, of course, Rick, is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want to. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock, so yeah. I, I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. Well, indeed. Indeed. Naked with a, a yeah. couple of- And a rosy big arse. And a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just had an email here, um, Monkey News. Yeah. From a listener. Yeah. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a chimp, <laughs> a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said, it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are. So well, uh, we did that, Carl. That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Oh. Amusing, articulate. Accurate. She Accurate. remembered exactly who was there and everything, yeah. sitting in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, ludicrous. just listen. I listen I got, to what we say. I got one, uh, about a shaved cat. Well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be I'm reading, happy. That'll keep me going for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'll be reading that later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Oh, I know. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, a little monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought, I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure that's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go. Uh, my dad says, where is it? I look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me luck. It's gonna be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then, uh, start looking at the leaflet. Right. And, uh, noticed. Didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not monkey world. It wasn't a monkey world. Well, how, what, no. what was it called then? Something like... M m monkey town. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just, it, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what it, it had was. what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things that Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Read to them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under, so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy, little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean, not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not your, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like the mission in Armageddon. I just said abort. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're on the way back. <laughs> so how far uh, have you got before you bothered to read the leaf there? Uh, probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. <laughs> yeah, dun, yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. No, I we went to a, uh, sort of a, an amusement place. Really? Kid. I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in so it has to roll down and they go flat and then an arm pushes it them. It was one of them. Really? But I I've spent years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right? My mum and dad had been, been there before. And yeah. they said, you'll love it. It's brilliant. It's got like a, a war bit in it. A war bit, right. Yeah, like, because they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. So you'll be loving that. So, sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Right. He's gone from one of his childhood passions to where they're all right. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, my mum and dad been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was a, like, a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> My dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, <laughs> trying to scoop off the cash. No, no, I cool. like the fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want a ride one? No, but they, they we're were- We're not, we're not a ride. They were <laughs> massive and he's just like, look at that, look at the state of that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, No, down. but he does because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? <laughs> and he, he was really like, oh God. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my mum, my mum had got bored. She went off to buy a little uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her look. It was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was going to be really expensive. Sure, so she's she bought one of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, "Come on, we go in. It's rubbish. This." <laughs> uh, but the fat family wouldn't let him play with them. So uh, he just said on the way home, he said, "I can safely say." That I never want to go there again before I die. <laughs> so, that was that. And then we went home- Why would he ever give you that information? In case it was like a, a secret birthday present? Yeah. Go, oh god, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I'll tell you what, I'll Dad. tell you bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat <laughs> couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By his bedside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am. After yeah. spending like a week with them. Well, they, said, they told- they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid, or? No, just, just like, you know, the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, I no, they were saying things like, Suzanne, so, uh, why is the moon out at night in the <laughs> seven of the day? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces again? <laughs> <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, don't waste money on a coffin for him, just put him in a bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> Your father said that. About himself. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that, cos that is great. That gives me an idea. Coldplay, God put a smile upon your face on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Reading the paper yesterday, Rick, they uh, were talking about the fact that Blair has been, I think, he's been in Greece um, discussing EU matters. Oh, yeah. And they used uh, the old Trojan horse analogy yeah. to say, you know, here's a particular policy and it seems like they're trying to sneak, sneak in, some, in sneak in some kind yeah. of dubious Spies ideas. Disguised as something else. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's always struck me, ever since I was first introduced to the Trojan horse theory, I never understood how it had come about. Do you know what I mean? So, I, 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 Carl has got a frown on him. Like, a thing I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, not Tony Blair is the Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 you know what the Trojan horse was? Go on. Um, Have you come across this before? Have you heard of it before? Um, wasn't that Ascot or anything? 
<laughs> Go on. Well, the Trojan horse, what happened was, uh, it's, it's a famous kind of Greek story. Um, about the fact that, uh, the Greeks- In olden laid, times, Carl, yeah. olden times, olden times you know, specifically. The yeah. The Greeks laid siege to Troy for six years. Um, Waiting. basically, things have got out of hand. Uh, I think the Trojans had done something with Helen, and someone else was annoyed. Anyway, it all got very complicated. It got out of hand, and the, uh, You know, the Greeks, Helen, the one with the mashed up face, because they used to use it to launch ships. Mm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the Greeks laid siege to Troy, for six years, right, and they weren't getting anywhere. They were outside the gates, they were saying, let us in, they weren't, they were blah, blah, blah. So all they did was, they all disappeared, they all- They, well, all they wanted to get in and kill everyone. Yeah, exactly. That's why they wouldn't be letting in. But they couldn't get inside the city walls. So what they did was, they left as a gift for the Tro Trojans, they left an enormous wooden horse, okay, uh, as a gift, and then they all buggered off. Like 40 foot high, 50 foot like I mean a big, you know- Big wooden horse. An arc of and a horse. And the Trojans wheeled it into the city. So that's nice. Thought, what a lovely gift. Yeah. And, lo and behold, who was hiding inside, but an entire Greek army, they left out, killed everyone in their sleep. Yeah. Alright, and that's where the famous idea of a Trojan horse has come from, you know, sneaking something in, disguised as something else. Uh, Alright. Yeah. Okay? So if he ever... Yeah. He doesn't really understand, does he? No, but, to be honest, nor do I. Well, I, this is the problem I've always had with this. It, I, I, it... Cause I don't understand who comes up with the idea, I mean- but I, d I can't think that was the best idea. Well, no, no. There must be other ways. If they come up with that, how long did it take them to go- When they said- One- one- one before they said, oh, no, oh, whoa, 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 um, can I have a word? Go on, General, right, yeah. um, I've got an idea. Yeah. Build a big horse, right, hide inside it, and then- then- Ah, I know what you're thinking, they won't let us in even in the horse. Yeah. Leave it as a gift. Brilliant. Right, who are you? That's the best idea. Are you the guy that came up with, <laughs> why don't we get a giant bra <laughs> and twing everyone <laughs> over the yeah, walls? Yeah. Let's get a, let's get a hundred foot ruler, and you know like at school you used to like flick the teacher's yeah. ass with like a, right, I could flick you over one at a time. Right. On this giant <laughs> ruler. Thanks for your idea. <laughs> it's on the table. Yeah. We've got a couple of suggestions on the way. What about a million elastic bands tied together? Yeah, and you all hold it down, and then I just let you go. Right. And you all ping over, and then you kill him in their sleep. You're the best tactician we've got, are you? Uh, what- the other thing is, right, these people open the- for some reason open the door. Well, I don't understand. Firstly, there's suddenly- the- the army that's laid siege to them for six years has disappeared, in yeah. their place, an enormous gift of a giant wooden horse. Oh, they probably don't want to kill us now, but the, what they've done is they've built us a Yeah, they've a built horse. us a great gift. Presumably there was a giant kind of card or something, yeah. you know. Um, something for you, you know, sorry about the laying siege and everything, forgive you. Yeah. Here's an enormous gift, is it? <laughs> Here's an enormous Trojan horse. We know it's what you've always wanted. We're- we're not inside it. <laughs> exactly. Why did they write that? Yeah. That's suspicious. But it's- Well, I wheel mean, it- wheel it in anyway. But in terms of it as an idea initially, I mean, we're gonna give them a gift, well what should we do? We could bake an enormous quiche, <laughs> be inside that, we could have an enormous soap on a rope as a It's the fact that it's an enormous horse, yeah. an enormous wooden horse as a gift anyway. I don't know if this was a, a popular gift at the time. But it's also the stupidity of the Trojans saying, brilliant, I've always wanted an enormous wooden horse, well what are we gonna do with it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Where are we we'll wheel it in anyway, leave it. Just wheel it, it in anyway. Wheel it in, let's go to sleep, let's worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. it, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's this idea of going, someone going, right, is this definitely the best idea? And they go, yeah, and they look to the carpenter. Yeah. And he goes, well, it's gonna take a while. Yeah, we've got to get wood. We've got to get other with it. Well, you haven't put a door in. Yeah. How are we gonna get out there? Doesn't it look like a horse? It is. It's the worst horse I've ever seen. Why, it looks like a cow. Wow, well, yeah, the other's where we hide. <laughs> There's a horse. It's got no it? tail. It's, yeah, that, that's the rope that you climb up. But I don't know if it's one of those things where, again, because we kind of learn these things at school, that somewhere along the line, the truth of it has disappeared, and we are... Well, I imagine it's lost a bit in translation. Yeah. Because, uh... In Eohippus in Greek means a giant tank. <laughs> right, so that yeah. actually was a Sherman. Yeah. And it burst through and it shot them all. Yeah. But yeah. of course, down the years they've tried. Look at Carl's face. Look at Carl's face. If everyone on webcam, Carl, just keep that face and look up to the camera. Right? Just, right, get a, get a look at that now. Play a record, Carl. Educating Carl, we should bring that back. We should bring that back. Yeah. What do you want to learn about next week? We've told you about the Trojan horse. Uh. Know anything about any freaks? Oh, that was big Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Right. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan so, horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's, of course, where the phrase 
be where Greeks bearing gifts comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You ever heard that one? Go on. What, what's that again? Beware Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what, is that, is that used worldwide or what? Will they say that in Greece as well or? Because uh. <laughs> imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> 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 no, it doesn't actually mean we were of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like, maybe it's too good to be true, or you know, it's just the opposite to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, that's probably where it came from. Was Justin from South End emailed in. He just said, uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic mm, yeah ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? Cheeky, isn't it? Eh? What? Never <laughs> mind. Well, I think that probably <laughs> proves it. I thought of another one like as well. I was saying, you might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard- I don't think I've heard that. I have heard it, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like, if you're gonna do something, you know, you might as well go the whole hog, depending on the- the outcome. Be because it's based on reality, that's why I like it, because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So, if you're gonna get caught, don't steal a lamb. You know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung. Killing a sheep. Oh. Your dad would be in trouble. Down in oh. Wales, stealing stuff from that, uh, oh. from that oh. phone box. Well, he, he has a couple of sayings, right? Your father? Uh, mm. Yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um. <laughs> Why would you? Ask what, Suzanne. One <laughs> is, uh, don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means, uh, it's patronising. To, 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 of course, of course I know that. You're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's, it's a totally made up thing. It's like, your granny sucks eggs, doesn't she? Cause she's, she's older than you and it's probably a lost art or something. Alright. Uh, and the other one, um, don't... Sucks eggs? Sucks yeah. eggs, yeah. Sucks eggs, sorry, I thought you said something else. <laughs> uh, yeah. don't nudge your granny when she's shaving? What? what? Sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. Don't nudge your- sorry, sorry well, that's slower, don't, I can't Don't, don't, don't nudge, nudge your, your granny when she's having a shave. Well, what is that in context? Cause I can't work out what the analogy is there because that might just be you-, you when you were little you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. But what- uh, why is your granny shaving? Well, no, what- what context is that still in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh I can't remember. I can't. I, I, I don't are know. Are you talking about specific to your granny? <laughs> I was just saying, where are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> <laughs> suck an egg, suck an egg, suck an egg. Suck an egg. Oh, that oh yeah. God. That's made, that's <laughs> yeah, made it worse. worse. Carl's granny sucking eggs whilst that's. <laughs> that Give is my. Give herself a Brazilian. <laughs> We've no idea. I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. <laughs> what, yeah. Parmesan? I, I don't know. Maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, email in. Tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Rockbusters, Carl. Go yeah. on. Should we get the ball rolling? Let me just find the, uh, yeah, the right, gifts here, right, the right. little treats. We've got the album from the Coral. You know what I think about that. We've got uh, <laughs> Comfort in Sound Feeder. Well, it's just a novelty record, isn't it? Yeah. Um, same. we've got, uh, on DVD, more great comedy moments, favourite clips from the best of contemporary BBC comedy. We've got Partridge on the front there, we've got, uh, one of the guys from Red Dwarf, and, uh, Brilliant. one of those <laughs> good stuff on there. Smash Hits, The Reunion, more great 80s tunes, Kaja Goo Goo's on there, uh, plus some stuff- Too Shy? <laughs> it is too yeah, shy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, uh, let me see if you can guess which one's from Tiffany. Uh, well, yeah, I know it, the only one. I uh, think we're alone now. Yeah, I think we're alone, yeah. Um, Melon Kim? Uh, respectable. Mm-hmm. Human League. That'd be, oh wow, what would they, would they have got Don't You Want Me? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ta- Lies Take On Me? Yep, yeah. well done. Um, Madness? Baggy Trousers. Of course. Uh, Kim Wilde? Kids in America? Yeah, so there's just all those treats. If you, if, yeah. you, if you like a song from an 80s band, it's probably on there. Yeah, okay. Plus we've also got on uh, VHS, uh, Graham Norton, some kind of best of compilation from his TV show. So, uh, there are the, um... Hold on, is it, is it the one where he talks to sort of female gay icons and, and looks at the internet? Because <laughs> that's my favourite one. Um, right, there you go, let's do Rockbusters. Right, email then. only, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, email in ricky.gervais.xfm.co.uk if you know the answer. Right, first one. 
a uh, bit of a cryptic clue, if you haven't heard it before. Well, not cryptic, you're wrong. <laughs> um, what, what is Carl thinking? If you go into France by a boat, I'd get your fags on there, cos it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> Let's do Bob Holness. <laughs> sorry, we're out of time. I, uh, it's, sorry, your minute's up. You've won nothing. I was reading that question out. <laughs> sorry, right. so what's the- well, Let's do it again. I want it to be exactly the same, word perfect. I bet you it will change uh, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost it. Go into France, buy yourself a bag of fags and okay. cheaper. Okay. okay, okay, fingers on the buzzers. Um, you've only got ten seconds to win the, uh, the gold run. Okay, first up. Here, I'll tell you what, no, seriously, if you're thinking of going to France, well don't, you know, because go on the ferry get the fags there, because it's cheaper. Go on. <laughs> all right, so that one again, uh, if you want to buy some fags, you're going over to France on the boat, get them on there, because you'll save a few quid. B. F. B. Right. F. B. F. Okay. Okay. Right, the second one. Um, mm. this little, uh, <laughs> foreign cafe is growing its own steak. <laughs> <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Yeah. yeah. This little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Go on. D. All right. Right. Okay. And the last one, uh, uh <laughs> Is uh, that part of it? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. The Jamaican fella might have screamed oh. this on the uh, right. on the Titanic. What? <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have scre might have screamed this on the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's it start with? It's uh, C D. That one. <laughs> Jamaican fella might have screamed this on the Titanic. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Please don't phone in. Um, if you can get those, we just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> 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 Is that a Nelly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a summer yeah, yeah, It's a summer favourite. Sweet. Nelly, ride with me. Uh, that's featuring City Spud. I don't know if you're <laughs> aware of that, but, uh, there we are. Good, nice summer tune. Excellent. Carl, tell, uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet then. Right, you know, I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that. Mm. And, uh, one of the things I always like doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to when he was a kid and that. Yeah. Right, cos he got up to loads of stuff and every time I see him, Tells me something. I thought it's like, why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Right. So, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, to me, he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone. He's just the most extraordinary kind of. Well, this, this character happened. Character. Right? I, I can't remember. There was a delay yesterday. There was problems on the Paddington line, yeah. and he was saying, "Our oh, trains aren't what they used to be." Sure. Um, he said, "You know, he said I was looking." They used to be horses, didn't they? Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet, and it was saying, "Oh, you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver." Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right, so he said that's the problem with this country. Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to like getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, right, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, right, it was his job to get the coal, right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh huh. Right? And one day he's in, uh, He's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right? And that was like the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fellow who should have been sort of driving the train, yeah. right? He said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, yeah. Oh, For a quick getaway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so the fellow goes in, in the pub and my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on. He, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yep. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up, he says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blimey. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know, he'd say, what's he doing in the pub? He should be working, of right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh, puts it, puts it into gear or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, people who don't know about trains, something that I learnt, is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So he doesn't realise this though, because he's he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal in Of course, yeah. Right? So you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally. Yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he didn't know that, Wouldn't so it, yeah. he's pulling in, he's thinking, right, well, I'll, put the brakes, I'll put the brakes on now, yeah. right? Puts the brakes on, the train just keeps going, he's going, oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It ploughs right through the signal box. <laughs> right? 
uh, loads the of damage. The pulling the single to know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> loads of, loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it, if it was today's money, yeah. it'd be about three to four <gasps> million pounds worth of damage. It, it shut the station oh, off God. for four weeks. Um, but he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job, the f one who was in the, in the pub. Yeah. Um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, uh, his, uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> so it was brilliant. <laughs> so. I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. You'd have to get the family involved. No, the sort of stuff my dad goes on about. We'd never put it on Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Blair? Out of time on XFM 104.9. We ought to give those rockbusters clues again. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, We've had very one. few contributions so far, Carl. I think you've really started. Uh, you, this might be it. I've told you, you're on thin ice. If this, if this goes wrong, if it's rubbish, and if everyone doesn't get them all, that's the end of Rockbusters. Right. Well, uh, the first one again, right? Yeah. If you go out of France, right, by boat, <laughs> you might as well get your fags whilst you're on that, because you'll save a few quid. Right? <laughs> Different every time. B, <laughs> B, F, B, F is the initials of the artist that that little cryptic clue makes up. The second one. Little foreign cafe, it's growing its own steak. Right? That's D. <laughs> Little foreign cafe, it's growing its own steak. D. <laughs> and the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic when it went down, he'd, he'd probably scream this. <laughs> C. D. Right? So email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, right? they're not right. flooding in, but yeah. Well, we'll see how we do. Carl, have we still got monkey news? We've got monkey news coming up. Now, you must be disappointed because you didn't make it to the monkey sanctuary, but you still managed to scrape together monkey news on your holiday. Yeah. That's so impressive. So, I found some of that. We've got- how, some... how do you- how do you get so many breaks and holidays? Because you went- you went away with Suzanne's <coughs> parents, you've just been away with your parents, that's a couple of weeks, ten days, so that's probably about three weeks in all. You had that- you went to Manchester, you were- you had that day off because your trousers were wet. I mean, and you've, you know, I mean, I suppose because you, you've only got one job and, you know, I've got a lot more, this is just one of my jobs. But I mean, don't you ever count your blessings, go, God, thank God I just, I can have time off, I, I don't mm -hmm. work too hard, you know, I'm not stressed too no, much. No, no. It's uh, just all to do with when you do work, do a lot. So I've, I get a lot done. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm always doing stuff. I mean, even though, when I was in Cornwall, right, I'm sat there on the grass. Mm. Um, oh, I'd love to just sit on the grass. Oh, yeah, just, you're too busy with I know, yeah, well, you know. M me dad and Susanna playing crib, right? I'd sort of fallen out with him at <laughs> Your dad and Susanna playing crib. What did you fall it's fallen out with him? Because you do live in the 1940s. Yeah, why had you fallen out? Because with crib, have you ever played crib? Yeah. Right, you've got to be pretty good at maths. Sure. Well, you've got to make your cards add up to 15 and all Well, yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna- I was just gonna correct you on you've got to be good at maths. Yeah. What, what, algebra, quantum physics, what? No, just, just adding up. Adding up to fifteen. Brilliant. I mean, I mean, you almost do it on your fingers. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> you could in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad's, uh, really good at maths, and like, he said, how many have you got? And, and he always counts, isn't it? It's like fifteen and two, fifteen and four, fifteen and six, three, three for your hat, one, and all that, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And he adds it up really one quick. One for his knob. Right, so I was like, right, hang on a minute. And he goes, no, what do you mean, hang on? I don't know, what, what have you got? He goes, oh, forget it. I said, this isn't, this isn't fun if you're gonna start getting all arsy with me. Sure. So, forget it! Yeah. I love it! But he's only, I'm sure he's, I don't know him, but I'm sure he's just winding you up. It, that is, his victory is you going, ah, oh, forget it, I'm not playing. Well, anyway, right, so it doesn't matter. I think I'll go off and do some prep, right? Yes. Do some research for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Found one of Suzanne's magazines, right? Uh, flicking through, because there's always interesting stuff in there. There was something about, um, uh, about swingers. Right. And I was like, what's all that about? Yeah. And it had an interview with some people talking about, you know, how they, uh, sleep about a bit. Yeah. And I thought, if my wife looked like that, I probably would. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was a few pictures of them and they were all pretty ugly. Yes. I thought, right. So, I took that in, soaked that up, thought, there you go. Uh, carried on reading. There was a bit in there about how women still have crushes, right? Yes. Uh, and the woman was going on about, uh, how she's 38, right? 
but she still fancies Chris Martin from Coldplay. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, even though it'll never happen, she's still got that little bit in her head yeah. that thinks one day she'll leave Gwyneth, right, and end up with, with, with her, right? Right. Anyway, so I'm flicking, I'm thinking this is a bit boring, but I'm flicking through it all, and, uh- Is this says, a, is this a Rockbusters clue? No, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I read, I read further on, read th further on, right, and, uh, she said, you know, we, we, I like to go out with my mates, and we come up with lists in pubs of people who like, oh, you know, they, they'd be nice to go out with. She also came up with a, a list of unlikely lust objects, I think she called them. Yeah. Guess who was in that list? Ricky Gervais. Think again. Carl Pilkington. Right. Next one. Johnny Vegas. Said, lanky co-writer. <laughs> Rubbish. Lanky co-writer. What so, do you mean lanky co-writer? Well, don't need to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he said- <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Let's not talk about- I, I don't want you laughing at my expense. I'm an unlikely <laughs> lust object. <laughs> yeah, but, but- But you- Yeah, what was it called? The- the list? Uh, the- the unlikely lust object. Yes. List. You were in there, right? Who else was? Well, you weren't in there. Richard, hey, Richard Maidley. Fine. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. Alistair Campbell. Brilliant. Yeah. Another handsome dude. Hmm. What are you talking about? How can you, how are you, what, you're, you think I'm ashamed or embarrassed about that? I'm proud of it. What magazine was it? <laughs> I need to buy a couple of copies. Yeah, it was. <laughs> need to get a t-shirt made. <laughs> did, 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 yeah, and did she leave her number? Yeah. <laughs> what, so what magazine was it? Just out of, oh, just out of interest. Just, I think it's know. called Red. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. But now you've dissed those people that have put themselves in their swingers because you've said they're ugly. So now we know what magazine it is. People are going to look at that. People are going to look at that poor woman, and they're going to know you think she's a hog. No, but so, I I think they even know. Was there a picture <laughs> of the woman who know. was drawn up the list of unlikely lust objects? Mm -hmm. What was she like? I wouldn't waste my time. Uh, <laughs> thanks, mate. <laughs> I know you're on my side. God. Oh, God. The thrills on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me. Steve Merchant, object of unlikely lust object. Steve Merchant. I'd like to have that now, prefixing my name everywhere I'm written about. I know, yeah. Did he make the freak list? Woo! Which is, in a, which is a different magazine, isn't it? And I'm joking, of course, Carl Pilkington. A man of sort of quiet, quiet dignity and- <gasps> And in a way, he's got his own sort of inner beauty, hasn't he, Carl? Not really. Don't you think? Well, I'll tell you why I don't think it is, because the woman that wrote the piece, saying that I was an unlikely lust object, has just emailed in. And Carl, you've offended her quite considerably. What did he say? I wouldn't waste my time, is what you said. She's re repeated oh, that. Yeah. I wouldn't waste my time, the flaming cheek. Although it's a horrible picture, I am, of course, in real life, a vision of loveliness. I'm not 38, I'm 25. I don't think Stephen's that unlikely lust object. A sense of humour is important, and he's welcome to my phone number if he wants it. Is <laughs> she... A sense of humour is important, that's a down, Is she a swinger? It? Uh, stop it! Don't have a go at the woman. I'm, 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 I'm messing about. She knows I'm messing about. Well, how are you messing about? You're I've told you this though. I've told you that anyone could be listening, haven't I? I've told you that before. Things you say, and and you, but we encourage him. We say, "What does she look like?" We, but it's meant to be rhetorical. That was a joke. That was Stephen joke. What does she look like? I.e., him joking, like, "Oh, I I'll call her up because I'm on a list," and then you have to say that. I mean, uh, that's what I mean. So chances are. If, you know, if she likes Stephen, she hasn't seen him, she listens to the radio. So, mm. the likelihood is that, you know, she was listening to this show. Yeah. So, think. Will I drop the thing I was gonna do about Lisa Riley? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't, She's not listening. Some she's, people deserve it. She's still at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what, from Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> There's an all, all you can eat place going out of business as we yeah. speak. Oh, bloody hell. She back. You killed me. I got a little bambino. Please leave now. Please leave. <laughs> so, uh. No, but she knows I was only messing this Yeah. Uh, this Everyone knows you're only messing. We're all only messing. I hope we don't offend anyone of, uh, you know, any kind out there. We're only joking, aren't we, Carl? Yeah. Say something nice about her. What can you remember of the picture that you could that you could say was good? Maybe she was wearing some it nice things. Wasn't anything to be honest. I'll have another look and have a look. I think she had a nice shirt, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carry On. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. On XFM one hundred four point nine.
What do you make, Carl, of these people? I was reading a paper today. They've been queuing up for 12 hours last night for the new Harry Potter book. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, it like really annoys me. Everything, uh, uh, oh, God, it really annoys me. But who has to, I mean, I know it's just a kind of willful sort of stubbornness. I, I, I see adults yeah. reading it, you know. I, I, oh. Well, I was up in Hampstead last night, and, uh, there's a, a Waterstones branch of that, and there were a couple of people outside, queuing. Waiting for it to open. Um, what do they look like? Well, I Things mean- Things they're like the ones that come out of a forbidden, pl forbidden planet on a yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I mean, what do you yeah. expect? There was one guy, I mean, I don't mean to disrespect him, but he was a big bloater. Shorts, <laughs> wearing shorts, I don't want to see his big fleshy legs. He looked like John O'Coleman, if I'm not- well, There's nothing wrong with John O'Coleman He wore a knapsack. Are. They always seem to have knapsacks for some reason. Well, they got old, they got old papers in there, haven't they? <laughs> exactly. Got a probably, nine year supply of mirror. There was about four of them. There was a couple of women, a couple of guys, all looked basically the same. They were interchangeable. And, um- we they were there from him in a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am the fat bloater with fleshy legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recognise your description. I like to read these books whilst listening to XFM <laughs> of a Saturday. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was sort of watching them from where I was, and I and they were there, must have been there for about an hour and a half. They were obviously strangers. They'd all they, their common interest was Harry Potter. They were reading. They were sort of chatting to each other for about an hour and a half. So as I'm leaving, I wander past them. An hour and a half in to them having met each other, the conversation is, uh, all I heard was, uh, huh. well, of course, apparently she cried when she finished the last one. And I uh, thought, they, what, they, they got, they've not moved on, the conversation had not moved on. No, they might have been talking about Dawn French, you know, her chocolate orange. <laughs> yeah, by then. Yeah. And then she <laughs> cried when she finished the last one yeah. once. Yeah. But, but um, um, I yeah. got no time for them. I, just, no, am you I. Know, pop into Walrus now. Yeah, I I'll tell you what, get I'm it tomorrow, read it then. You're, not, you're gonna get home at half one and start reading it. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. So you can put it on the internet. Oh, God. Your opinions. Oh, it annoys me. It is extraordinary. Uh, the whole kind of, the whole kind of Harry Potter phenomenon has passed me by. I, I know, I know. Well, people, good, good luck to her, you know. But you meet adults who are, um, you say, what are you doing? They say, I'm just rereading Harry Potter. What, you couldn't follow it the first I know. time? Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, it's not her fault, you know, she no, made three hundred million pounds by writing a few books for I'm her sure kids. Well, good, well yeah. done. But, um, I'm sure they I mean, I'm not sure they're very good, but, uh, I'm, I haven't read them and I'm, I'm sure they're not. But no, I don't know. Well, I've, don't I've, I've no, 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 I'm joking. Well, I, so but I've no idea. a book about a little wizard. <laughs> <laughs> With glasses. Yeah, and make millions. <laughs> you, you think it's so easy. If you think it's so easy, you do it. You, you like him because you look a bit like him. Oh. Wow. You know. I wonder if he's on a- uh, that wish list, that that woman who emailed in, why was she making a list of unlikely- Can we leave this now? No, but I mean, what was it, what was context was it? It was like, here's my top ten weird looking fellas that I no. do. What was it? <laughs> no, no, but what, what was the, what was, she was talking about what? What was, she'd started talking about, what, body waxing and went, and by the way, while I'm here, here's ten blokes that I would if I had to, and they're a bit weird, you'll be surprised. What was the context? I forgot. <laughs> Now he's scared to say anything. Oh, bless him! I, I just was looking at a picture because I was attracted to it because she was good looking, and that didn't read on. <laughs> that all right? <laughs> well done. That's uh, got you out of that little mess. Yeah, yeah. Well but uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. Can't be honest with it. Have you read them? Uh, no, because the, the first time it came out, uh, I was a bit confused, wasn't I? Because I thought it was. About of course rabbit. you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You of course what? what? This is a what? It's a book. No, I, I I got confused with the little uh, the little rabbit. I thought it was her, didn't I? You talked about it when Beatrix it first... Potter. Yeah, I got I got mixed up with that, so I sort of missed out on the first one anyway. <laughs> you so were just running around late. confused. So it was like, like <laughs> yeah. too, it was sort of too late to get into it. I think after. Yeah, it's too late now. Yeah. Um, it's impossible. Same with Shakespeare. If you weren't around, you know, the day <laughs> the day he wrote the first ones, there's no point in going back. But it's all the fuss that she's getting as well, like, um... Well, I think it's because she's a British industry now, isn't she? I mean, it must have made, what, billions? Well, it's the perfect success story. She writes a, a story for her children and it becomes a worldwide phenomenon. You know, it's not cynical, it's just, it's just a great story. Didn't your dad ever pop anything down in writing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, my mum wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, there's been loads of things, little inventions she's come up with and that, which she's been too busy doing other stuff. But she used to come up with stories for me as a kid. That I'm sure if they came out, they'd be a success. Yeah. Go on. Do you remember any of them? Uh, there was one about a little red car. I can't remember how that ended. Uh, but the one that was really good was about a, uh, a kid who gets, uh, a dog, right? Um, but it's quite an old dog. This is gonna be an episode of the Walt ones, yeah. isn't it? Oh, no, right. go on. 
Go on. And, uh, he's playing with the dog and that, but it starts getting a bit old, about fifteen or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, he goes, oh, it's rubbish, this dog. <laughs> 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 so, I would love that book for kids. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Tommy went, oh, m mummy, my dad's, oh no, no, kill it then. <laughs> kill it then. Shall I? Yeah, just throw it in the lake. I'll get you another one. <laughs> Do you want a Nintendo? Yeah. Kick the rabbit to death then. <laughs> Or no <laughs> food for you. Oh, for Brilliant. No, no, come on, no, 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 Jump. Van Halen. On XFM 104.9. Right, come on and Carl, we've got a lot to fit in now. We've insulted <laughs> a lot of people. Only about 25 minutes to go. We've got monkey news, we've got rock busters. Have we got a cheeky figure of the week this week? Could cram it in, see how we do. Do we want to- <laughs> do we want to hear the end of Carl's story? Yeah, what's I this? Really really the kid, the little, little Timmy and his- 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 15 year old dog lucky, got a bit bored with it. Right, so he said, oh mum, you know, this dog's rubbish and that, I'm sick of it. Yeah. So she goes- How oh, old were you when your mum was telling you this story? <laughs> uh, I don't know, about four. Okay. It wasn't last week on holiday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, right. So, uh, so she goes, oh alright then, we'll get you another one. Yeah. She goes, brilliant. What'd you do with the old one? Just kept it but didn't sort of play with it or anything. <laughs> 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 Just ostracised it. <laughs> it uh, yeah. Some of its own free will, or curled up and died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. So, uh, What'd so you get him? What sort of dog? I think it was a little, uh, little baby, like, Labrador. Puppy. Mm -hmm. Little puppy, yeah. Yeah, Labrador, right. good one. Well, good choice, good choice for a second dog. So, um... Yeah. So I'm anyway. loving this story. <laughs> so I am actually loving this story. So... Where does he live? I, th I don't know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It was we near a, near a lake, old... Oh, <laughs> well, that's where they were getting rid of all the yeah. dogs. Sure. Yeah. We're, we're getting... That'll make sense in a minute, right? So, mm. uh, so... He's got that little dog, he's playing around with it, he's mm. playing with its belly and stuff, he's thinking this is brilliant, best dog I've ever had, right? And the other dog sat in the corner looking all fed up, yeah. right? So, uh... I like this story. So he says, he says to his mum, right, I'm taking, uh, little puppy down the park. Yeah. And she goes, well, take the old one with you. And he goes, oh, do we have to? It's the moral, I bet the old one saves him. So, yeah. so, he goes, oh, do we have to? She goes, yeah, it still needs a walk and that. Scrapping all over the house, right? Yeah. So he takes it down the park, right? And uh, it's playing around, and he's playing near the near the lake, right? Is the puppy near the lake, Carl? Because this is what's worrying me. Yeah. Puppy's near the lake, yeah. right? That jumps in. Yeah. The kid goes, "Oh God!" He jumps in. Remembers he can't swim. Yeah. Idiot. Right? This kid is based on you, isn't it? Almost certainly. Flapping about, water's going everywhere. He's going, "I can't!" Oh God! And he, he, like he wants the puppy to help him, but the puppy's just like drowning as well. Yeah. yeah. The old dog comes up, drags them both out. He goes, I can't believe it. You know, I said I was fed up with you. Yeah. You saved me life. Yeah. He gets home, and he says to his mum, Kill the little one. The puppy. Kill the puppy. Yeah. So it's good little. Good what little does he story. say when he gets home? He said, I don't need the puppy now. I've got a Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> It's good, isn't it? Yeah, so the moral of that story is well, just follow your whims. They just- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you get bored, get bored and yeah. get, get another puppy. Get another dog. If you get bored with the old one again, just do it again. I mean, yeah. just eventually, you know, get something yeah, that you like dogs, a little- Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. That is a brilliant story, though. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's that. Rockbusters. Yes. I don't want you to have monkey news right now. Oh, we've okay. just had a little story there. Sure. <laughs> don't want it, yeah. Don't want to go too far. Mm. Yeah, go on. So we'll get Rockbusters out of the way if we got a winner. Uh, yeah, well, come on then. Mm, See, it worries really. me that there's, we've had a very few entries. I think that even your mental fans aren't getting these, which is really worrying. They must be terrible clues this week. All right, well, uh... Has anyone got on right, Steve? I think there's just one guy, yeah, who I suspect has won in the past. Well, that, so what? Right, the first one. Uh, if you go out of France by boat, uh... You might as well buy your fags when you're on that, because you'll get them a lot cheaper. Brilliant. Right? Yeah. Um, BF. Yeah. Buy it ferry. Right? That's like- What? <laughs> buy on ferry. What? Buy on- f What's buy on, buy on fer ferry? Who's- what, what's that? Is that a band? What? What is it? I don't no, know what it is. Brian Ferry. Brian Ferry? What's that got to do with buying on a ferry, though? Just- because it's quite close to it. Buy on- <laughs> Buy on ferry. Buy what? On, buy on- Buy on ferry. Sorry, uh, uh, what, what's first your first one. language? Uh, the second one. That's rubbish, that doesn't count. No, Brian, no. Brian Ferry. <laughs> Brian Ferry, Brian Ferry. Um, <laughs> there's this little foreign cafe, um, yeah. it's growing its own steak. Um, that's, that's Delamitri. 
Uh, the third one. What? Was <laughs> Sorry, what? What? What is that? What is that? Delimitri. Deli is a yeah. little foreign cafe. Yeah. And a meat tree and that. <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> what were the initials for that? Just, just D for that. Just D for that? Yeah. So not D-A? So you didn't even give them a chance to get the group? Well, they, they got it. Well, no. No, 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 no. They, they, they didn't. Right, it's the end. <laughs> right, go on, right. Go on. Deli meat tree. Deli meat tree. <laughs> One word. D. 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 Or any letter. They go in their own M. Meat. M's in it. Well. Go on. Okay, so Bayern, Bayern, I love Bayern Ferry. <laughs> and Oxy, Oxy Music, Oxy Music was brilliant. <laughs> can I, just, I love Oxy Music. Go on. Can I just point out, Rick, that, um, we've they, had- they, they were Bowie? Deli Meat Tree. Yeah. I don't see why, necessarily, uh, Aiden, who, uh, emailed in, why he doesn't get to win, because he emailed in Dire Steaks. <laughs> Seems to be just as valid, as far as I can tell, but <laughs> yeah. Deli Mitri it is. Um, and the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic- I'm looking forward to this. this. Yeah, with a little bit of fear. Jamaican fella, if he was on the Titanic, he probably would have screamed this. Yeah. Uh, that's Christ de Berg. <laughs> oh! I don't know what to do. Stunning. So who's, who's the winner? I'm not gonna give it to anyone. I just what's don't- the, I So think, what, what's the Jamaican bit got to do with it? It's the D. Just Christ de Berg. <laughs> say it again? No, I think they, they've worked it out now. What's- <laughs> what do you say again? Christ de Berg. And who's that? What? Who's that? Who's what? Who's Christ de Berg? Chris de Berg. Who's the winner, Steve? I'm, do you know what? I'm gonna give it to Aiden. So, because he just, he just treated you with nothing but contempt. Steve Martin, uh, uh, emailed in again. He got the first two and then the last one he just emailed, I neither know nor care about this answer. I'm tempted to give him, he's you, one Do you know what you've done there, don't you? Go on. You've put the nail in the coffin of, uh, Rockbusters. I warned you, I warned you for three weeks and you sort of bucked your ideas up for a little while. But Christ did Those Berg, are the worst you've ever done. Uh, the worst I've ever done. So, so uh, and didn't, just put D. And then buy and buy and ferry, buy and buy and ferry, buy uh, uh, buy and ferry. So, is that it? Then aren't we doing it? Play record. Aren't we doing it? Anymore? I'm ashamed. You're an idiot. Are we doing it anymore? I'm just gonna keep saying you're an idiot. Play a record. Are we doing it Have you learnt nothing from Doctor Fox? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not so near the window. Huh? Aren't we doing it anymore? What you need to start working on it now because they're so good. You need to start working now for next Saturday. Aren't we doing it anymore? Just I, I don't know. Aren't we doing it? Cardigans. You're the storm on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly the end of the show, but we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't let them down, would we? You know what it is now, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> All right. Now, whilst. I was in Cornwall. I wasn't online. I didn't no. have the internet, so it was like, oh, what am I going to do? And I didn't come back till yesterday. I thought there's loads going on that I don't know about in the monkey world and stuff. I was hoping to get some from the zoo that I was meant to be going to. Of course, that didn't happen. So I said to my dad, do you know anything about monkeys? Have you got any stories with monkeys? Brilliant. This is the, no, this is what Trevor McDonald does. <laughs> Turned out. He cut, caught the ten, he goes, <laughs> yeah. oh, nothing. <laughs> Dad, anything happened? You got anything politics? Anything politics, Dad? Uh, this isn't monkey news, I'm just giving you this free. Uh -huh. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, turned out one of his mates used to have a chimp. <laughs> right. Um, what do you mean one of his mates used to have a chimp? Well, two, two of his mates. Mind oh, you, sorry, yeah. Mate, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking it sounds a bit far-fetched living in Manchester like, <laughs> but if there was two of them. He had a chimp, um, had to thump it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> For doing what? Answering back. <laughs> oh God! Tried it on with his wife. Had to stop it in the end. For trying it on with his wife. I love it. I love it. It's a proper fist fight in a pub in Manchester. Oh. I'd call him up, but he's one of them who like swears all the time. Right. Oh. I mean, it'd be good, it'd be good to get him on and C just- Let's interview him. Can we not interview him pre-record? We can bleep out the swear and I'd love to hear his story. a lot of work, that. Yeah, well, well, it, 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 
Well, we're not scared of work, obviously. No, I mean, I'll get myself a few cutting bothers. Yeah, you know, so... Oh, I've heard of the word, sorry. Yeah, try and sort that out. Yeah, just sort that out, yeah. Well, don't tell us the rest of the story, then. Let's let him say in his own No, but there was another one as well. Uh, When you say you can get him on, but he swears a lot, you mean the monkey? Okay. I'm assuming he's more coherent than your dad's mate. Well, there's him, and there's some other fellow he knows who had a funny name, I'll have to find out, because you'll love his name. But he was a drag artist. Yeah. And, uh, I think he said he went, my dad went round one day, I don't know why. Right. Went around there, knocked on the door, chimpanzered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carl, I don't know what you're doing, mate. I don't know where this place you live, next door there's an horse in the front room. There's chimps mad, running round. Yeah. Mad. Anyway, uh <laughs> Chimpanzered! <laughs> is that it? Is that the end of the story? There's a chimpanzer in the door and that's the end. You sure it wasn't a drag artist before he shaved? No. I'm sure no, it wasn't your grand. Because oh, I like the really airy ones that decide they can be female impersonators. <laughs> yeah, your grand. <laughs> anyway. Go on um, then. This is the monkey news. So you got that for free. What's this gonna be like, well, Steve? Well, let's have more jingles. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news extra! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, uh <laughs> Another phrase, we've been talking about phrases today. Yeah, we have, don't yeah. Don't teach your granny when she's shaving. Yeah. Uh, don't teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Uh, don't look horse in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> don't let the chin pass the jaw if you're chucking your cock in. <laughs> um, familiar with the phrase monkey business? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never heard that one before, Carl, that's brilliant. Right, well, it came about, this has been emailed in and I haven't really had a chance to look at it so I'm just... Weighing it up now. Um, <laughs> God. Yeah. This yeah, is the yeah, yeah, shambles yeah. on air, isn't it, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm ashamed of it. it. I mean, what was Dr. Fox? Dr. Fox must have been really polite. He must have been thinking, I don't know how to put this. Mm. He, wa- he, uh, he must have wanted to scream and go, you shouldn't be in the radio authority. My parents listen online, I can't look them in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I've weighed it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Long time ago, right? Yeah. In the, uh, Olden days, yeah. In Go the on. Amazon jungle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Little family of monkeys in there. Mm-hmm. Right? Having a good life. Of course. Right? Didn't have any predators in there. Right? <laughs> so, they were loving it. Yeah. They had a load of food around them, they had loads of banana trees. Yeah. Right? Mm, um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, they did. Sorry, I just, uh, yeah. Everything's going great, so, they're happy in that. They go out of bed. <laughs> okay. Wake up in the morning, load of bananas gone. Ooh, hang on, interesting. Hold on, wait a minute. So, Amazon- <laughs> Either your dad's been around, or- Is it- this isn't the great Amazon banana robbery, is it? So anyway, turns out, it was another load of monkeys from another part of the island, from the rough bit. From <laughs> 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 the rough bit! From the rough bit! I love it! Like, they went into a middle class area. Oh, oh, they're that the ones is... with the earrings and the leather jackets. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant! <laughs> From a rough part of the island! <laughs> so, the monkeys thought, well, there's no point getting into a fight with them because they're harder than we are. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, and they carry chains. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love all this conjecture! They've got flip knives and it's tattoos. Got... Yeah, go on. So basically, they said, let's do some business with the bananas. Let's do some business with the bananas? <laughs> with the bananas. Yeah. So, they said, well, rather than them coming robbing them, we'll, we'll flog them. <laughs> so, that got stopped to it then. The people, the monkeys came, they didn't have money. They said, give us some, mon- you know, give us some bananas. Um, and it says, uh, So what, they exchange bananas for bananas? For, for, for berries and nuts. <laughs> so that's where the phrase monkey business no! No, it's comes no! from. A little business no. to set up. Right, there, oh God, that's the end of that as well, so that's the end, that is a shame, that's the end of Rockbusters and Monkey News. Well done, you've done it in one show. <laughs> well, there's the best band in Britain, in my opinion. Big words. The Darkness, growing on me, on XFM 104.9 on Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Have you got the album? And already, they've had an argument. Yes. 
Well, I, I mean, I don't know whether we need to cheapen the show by discussing it, but well, I asked for a particular track. Uh, Carl is the producer, and he failed to get it for me. He's failed to get it for me. He's failed to bring it up from the record library. Completely failed in his mission. He needed to get two records, and he failed to get one of them. A 50% error rate there. Yeah, but like I said, I looked in the system, it told me what album it's on, I brought that album up. I'm busy. But, okay, so fine. Fine, you're absolutely fine then. That's no problem. You know, it, it, once again, it, that's, a, that's a great excuse, Carl. Brilliant. The show has been ruined, it's been partially ruined, but you've got a bit of an excuse. All right. I didn't make a big deal out of it when mm. you said, oh, and whilst you're down there, get us a new 50 cent single. I never, I never said, while you're down there, get the new 50 cent single. I asked you if 50 cent single was lying around. Yeah. If, it, if it hadn't been here, I wouldn't have worried. So I get it, yeah. I did that for you. Right. And then I come up, you say, has it got swearing in it? Well, what? I don't know. It's five to one, Steve. You're the producer! I've been you're the around. producer! It's the brand new single! I'd have thought it'd been lying around in the XFM office anyway! But I don't- I don't have time to sit around listening to music. Sure. Well, yeah. Right? I know that you have. Now you've got an iPod that can hold 7,500 songs. I don't know when you're gonna get round to loading all them on, but I haven't got the time. Sure. Busy, busy. Yeah. Fine, right. okay. No, no, that's, that's a perfect excuse, Carl. Well done, mate. Right. I just hope that I never have to depend on you in a real emergency. Mm -hmm. I had a bit of uh, bad luck as well. I, I wanted to play um, REM, and, and uh, maybe the uh, listener can help me here. Can you uh, email in Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you knew what s know what song I'm thinking of? It's an REM song. I think it's on the album of the last one, the one before. And he says Mulholland Drive and. I'm Steve McQueen. That's all I know. I'm sorry. I can't think of the title, so we can't. I need the title to look it up. If you know what I mean, I can't put in like that. I can't put in Mulholland and Drive. This is because what are you talking about. So I need the actual title of the song to look it up to find it down in the library. Oh well, let's go down yourself if you're going to go down to the library <laughs> and get that. I would send <laughs> Carl because well, Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM. Dot co dot UK. Well, if he wanted to, he did have time because he came in at twenty past twelve rather than sure. five to one. Yes, no, is. I told you about that record that I wanted it yesterday, mm. didn't I? So yeah, you had twenty four yeah. hours notice. Yeah. So yeah. that's not really an excuse, is it? But I did find one of my favourite songs of all time, which is Bones off the Benz album and his radio head on XFM one of four point nine. And there it is because you gave me lots of time yeah. to find it. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. Could have brought it in so. No swearing in it. Yeah. Bones. Radiohead. The Bend on XFM 104.9. And thanks to Paul, who's emailed Actually, in. a whole bunch of other people as well. Oh, lots Nick, of people. Davey, well, Steve, Ashley. It's wasn't... Electrolyte. You know, it all comes flooding back now. We've got that. I've got it out of the library. We're gonna play that. That's done. I've, it's interactive. I've used the listener. I've shown the listener, right, I've helped them to help themselves. Sure. I've said, if you want to hear it, tell me what it is. They told me what it is. They're gonna hear it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Perfect. So I was going down the library and, well, we don't want- Yeah, well, we well, know mistakes can happen if that, you know, if you have to go down the library. Yeah. And I mean, I've- I checked it though to make sure it was the right one, you see. Yeah. It's just a little bit of. Well, it's a good rule that generally if you pick something up a CD, that's you know, right. you want to yeah. play on a radio show, live radio show. You normally check, you normally check at the back. Oh, no, yeah, that's right, yeah. If you want a job done, do it yourself. You're absolutely right, Carl. Yeah, uh, so. Yeah, but anyway, look, we're all, let's all make friends. Let's kiss yeah. and make up. Yeah, touch and make up. <laughs> yeah. Let's, and uh, let's just. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm up on Carl at the moment because it was my birthday in the week and. Not only has he bought me a little vibrating thing to put on the chair, because right. I've got a bad back, so yeah. that vibrates, that. Yeah. Actually, it's, we can hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do it between records, though. Right, and what's that vibrate. doing to you as you, as you It's just, it's sort of like sends little pulses into your sort of muscles relaxing, doesn't it? I've got a real relax on air. If I'm relaxed, the listener's relaxed, we're all happy. Sure. He's also got me this, little... <laughs> electronic bongos, and I thought we could do like... <laughs> oh! Chimpanzee that, monkey news. So it's like a jungle sort of <laughs> sure, thing. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well that's so, always been one of the great so, jingles but even has So I've got, I've got the vibrating... <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! <laughs> so, Dr. Fox, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. I think you'll know that's a clear improvement uh, yeah. in this show. So thank you for those. It's alright. Yeah. Yeah. What did you, uh, what did you get him? What did I get him? <laughs> I was, I couldn't get anything, I was too busy buying myself an iPod. <laughs> You're joking. Well, it's a little bit gay, isn't it, giving gifts to blokes? Yeah, it is, but for someone <laughs> who's like major. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play a record! Someone who's major? <laughs> what do you mean, someone who's major? Well, because he's a major celebrity? <laughs> no, made you. Oh, made you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Crazy beat. Blur. Alright? On XFM 104.9. Brilliant. 
Yeah, so, uh, I also got, uh, Jane got me a few nice presents, including, my favourite of all of them, a real bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> a real bow and arrow? Yeah. Right. And, what, you, you, you know, you're gonna, uh, rob from the, uh, rich, are you gonna give to the poor? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta make the little you outfit. You and your merry men. Uh, I've, it's just got me, like, two yards of green felt. <laughs> sure, yeah, And, yeah. Uh, I've just gotta find and a tailor. And a tree house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> someone, someone who can make me a lovely little natty outfit. Yeah. Why is she what you're wearing? Hey, you live in central London, so where are you gonna be using We've got this? a garden, I did it yesterday. I've right. got my finger, though, cos I'm meant to put protector, so it's just, oh, god, it's so fast, isn't it? I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that sentence. <laughs> I, I'm only here in the studio. I saw you point to your finger, so I, I'm guessing from that yeah. that maybe you injured your finger. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. For yeah. the listener, again, what, what exactly yeah. were you I, talking about then? No, because when you pull it back, it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. And do you have a target? What do you yeah, use as a target? Yeah, I had a big, the um, big cardboard box flat on it down the tree. Right. I go, oh, it's brilliant. Sure. I'm getting a bit excited thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, no, indeed. Because when I make that outfit, I'm going to be running round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and do you have a do you have a picture uh, like a face maybe on your target like Osama bin Laden something yeah. like that? Yeah. Sure. No, it yeah. just says, this way up, fragile. Right, okay. I forget what came in it. But, you know, it's good, good fun, isn't it, Carl? Bow and arrow, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah? Would you like a little bow and arrow? Yeah, it's alright. Yeah. I like Force, I had a rifle as a kid. Did yeah. you? Yeah. A real one? Yeah, just shooting cans and stuff. Yeah. It's alright. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, a, a wonderful anecdote. <laughs> Well, we went, I went out with a drink with Carl in the week, and, uh, we went to uh, a restaurant, didn't we, Carl? It's a good night. And we sat there, and next to me, when Carl came, next to me was, uh, um, what's his name? Ross Kemp. And, uh, he was sitting there, and I saw Carl, and I, I tapped him on the shoulder, Ross Kemp, and I, was, uh, and I pointed to Carl and him, and I said, it's nice to see you two back together again. Nice. And Carl was horrified. But Carl didn't know that I'd already spoken to him before Carl arrived. Yeah, so yeah, was, yeah, I thought yeah. it was okay. I thought I could break the ice because I'd met him before. Sure. So he just thought I was insulting him. And in the week we were talking about his head, his little head, weren't we, Carl? And Carl suddenly stopped the conversation and said, "If I had hair, what would we be talking about now?" <laughs> I think he had enough of everyone talking about it. And he looked good though. He had it, it's, it's a special little do. He had it sort of, you know, cropped a little bit more. I like it when he's just freshly had it done. Mm. Do you like- yes. has, has that ever happened to you, Steve, when you- if you're somewhere, say if you sat somewhere, does someone sort of, you know, is he anyone else who you look like, or <laughs> would you say you're a bit of a one-off? <laughs> I love these two. But, I <laughs> but to be <laughs> fair- <laughs> but to not be, whoa, 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 to be fair, uh, he seems to be having a go at me an awful lot more than I do at him now. I mean, he just starts it, you know, he I just think, starts it out of I, nowhere. I th yeah, I think- I think his is sort of a get back for the way you treat him as a producer, not, you know- But he's not a producer! <laughs> <laughs> if he produced the show, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a reason to criticise, but... Uh, I think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, seriously, I mean, it really winds me up there, because, you know, it started as a joke, but now it's just, it's abuse. Yeah. He got annoyed at heat because it said Carl producer. Well, not so much a producer as just a bald mank. And he yeah. went, "Can they say that? Yeah, can they say that?" See, that's a magazine, an independent publication. It's identified what exactly it is you do. Yeah. Here we go then, go on, bring it on, because here we go, he's looking at me, I know he's thinking, he, no, I can hear the cogs I'm not, I'm not thinking anything. It's <laughs> no, that, that is true, never <laughs> a true word, play a record. Okay. <laughs> now then, I listened to, I heard this on the VH1 in the week, and I have not been able to get it out of my head, and I, I really kind of want to, oh, I want to get it in everyone else's mind now, so they understand the, uh, the pain I've been going through, Miss yeah. You, by the Rolling Stones. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that's now in, embedded in your brain and you can ruin a week by having to sing that constantly, irritating people in shops and everywhere you go, miss you by the Rolling Stones. Good track. Good track. Carl, uh, Jonathan, um, Ross came out of this, uh, last week and, uh, we were talking about stuff and Carl was mesmerised when Jonathan told a story that he was bored once in a hotel room and <laughs> shaved his ass. He shaved his ass. Yeah. Sure. And Carl, you didn't stop questioning him, did you, for about- I, ju I just wondered, at what point do you sort of say, <laughs> oh, this is getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's way too long, tucking it in his socks or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it's not, I mean, it is boring in hotel rooms, cos I, I told you before about when I was in Edinburgh and I had nothing to do, there was nothing on the telly, and you sort of, you've, you've eaten the shortbread biscuits and that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. so that's when I read the, the phone book to see how many- That's maps. when you read the phone book? Well, to see how many Macs were in Scotland, <laughs> Macintosh, sure. yeah. and it was like, you know, 42 pages worth. Yeah. 
Yeah. Jonathan, I don't know if he'd already done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, he said he, uh, he, he shaved his ass. Uh, now, when, when we say he shaved his ass, so Not his cheeks, his... Oh, all of it? Yeah, all of it. Did That's he, did he say that? Well, I think- But I other than the cheeks, but then we, there's then not we, much left. But there. then we got to the fact that me and Jonathan, if we pulled our wealth, we could have shaved Carl's ass for a thousand pounds. Right. And he said, yeah, for a thousand pounds you can shave my ass. Can I- Suzanne said, can I say this bit? Your okay. girlfriend said what, Carl? She was annoyed. She said, well, I'm not allowed to go there. Why is anyone else? And of course the whole table stopped and leant in and said, what? <laughs> so I mean, this is like me touching him there. I went, what do you mean? <laughs> this is too much information. It was too much information. I just... like the fact that you've had this conversation with her. I like the idea that she touched your ass once and you went, woo, hands off. Yeah. I love you, but keep your hands away from the ass. Do you know, do you know why he said it, it, he's talking about the, the, the most intimate part of the ass, the middle ass he's talking about, that she, and he said, I said, why? He went, it's a bit gay, isn't it? I said, how can a girl touching it be a bit gay? If it's still behind you, it could be anyone, right? <laughs> And it seems, I mean, you can imagine the conversations we were having, right? And uh, it just, it's that thing that the waitress heard something every time mm. she came over. She heard the word, <laughs> like, yeah. cock or Jonathan Ross saying, I shaved my arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh dear. But it was, uh, yeah, it was a good night, wasn't it? So, it's a thousand pounds now, isn't it? Um. But presumably you'd give Suzanne half anyway, so everyone would be happy. You've used the arse to best effect. She's got, She's got half out of it, so she's she's made as much out of your ass as you have, in a sense. We, me and Jonathan are happy. Yeah, but to be fair, it's his ass on the line. <laughs> so I know, but I mean, you know, it's not like she's getting a bum deal. Well, she's no. getting five hundred, you know, <laughs> yeah, quid. No, I you understand know. that. But um, do you reckon? Just thinking some more. <laughs> play a record. Can I just ask before you play a record? Um, <laughs> if we were to shave your ass. Let's say we did it for charity or something, got sponsorship. Um, do, how would we do it? Would we use one of those big kind of old-fashioned razors? No, no, I'd use a big safety. I, I, I just straight away. And would away. you use a gel or a foam? No, no, no. I just, I, I, first of all, yeah, I, I, I think I just um, lather it up. Right so you lather foam. up his ass through. I do, I do, I do the outside bits. Just go <laughs> straight down, big broad strokes, clean right. Then I'd have to go in the crevices, and I'd, 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 I'd need an assistant. I'd pop it apart and just very gently go in there. I might even use electronic equipment just so there was, there was no sort of like nicks. Okay. Well, so how so an electric razor. Or I might wax the internal middle ass. <laughs> Okay. How did Jonathan do it? Because he did it on his own, didn't he? I see his mirrors. Why don't we? We'll call, I'll ask him. We'll call him later. But uh, I don't know. Well, I perhaps you, perhaps you listening, have once shaved your ass, maybe during uh, but, uh, an exam or something. But You're what I think, bored. what I think, and this is conjecture, but I think he was probably there. He'd had a shower. He shaved his face, right? I thought, well, he's naked. Looks down. He goes, "Oh, what a hairy ass." Well, I don't know, I've got the razor in this hand. I've got the mirror there. You know, I'm not, I'm not on stage for a good ten minutes. Yeah. There's one thing I don't like going on stage with is a hairy ass. <laughs> Bang, bring, wallop, <laughs> done. On stage, thanks, see you later. See you next week. Yeah? Mm. What are you thinking, Carl? No, it's just if that- how <laughs> hairy was it? You know what I mean? <laughs> how hairy was it? <laughs> because I imagine- I mean, you're saying mirrors and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But is he- I mean, how old is he now? He's- 42. And they say your, your, um, your testicles drop quite a bit once you start getting old, don't they? Yeah. So that, that, he's got to make sure they're out of the way. Took yeah, but I, time. I don't think, I mean, I can speak for myself, uh, 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 you know, as, as a similar age to Jonathan, that, I mean, you know, if there's millimetres in it, it's not like we tuck them in our socks in the morning. Okay. They're still in the same place. You really wouldn't know the difference. It wouldn't, if we filmed it in, you know, time-lapse camera, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be like a bungee jump. Do you know what I mean? They wouldn't be moving a lot. Yeah. All right. Do, do you think he's a? I, I told him he's a he's a good looking fella, Steve. Would you Would you agree with that? Oh, I told us? Jonathan uh, that he said that he and he he just went for it as well. Yeah. So you 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 spent a lot of time picturing Jonathan's arse. naked arse. You, you, and you you'd, find you'd, you'd, attractive let him, you'd let him give you money for for arse touchery. Yeah. Whereas your girlfriend's got no chance. No chance to and it. you're saying he's a good looking man. Do I play a record and think about what you've done? Interesting. All right. 50 Cent, 21 Questions, new single from him. Well, my, me and Carl got a joint favourite lyric now. I love you like a fat kid loves cake. Yeah. That's great, <laughs> innit? <laughs>
Uh, but, I mean, I like it because it's funny and humorous and cheeky. You like it because it, it's, it means something, don't you? It actually, you think that that's the absolute truth. If someone was to say that to you, that, that would be the most romantic thing they could say in it because it's... No, no, I'm just thinking that's, you know what it means. It's like the elephant man. Right? <laughs> the elephant man, that's what it's called. Again, you know what you're gonna get. The fat kid loves cake. You've said it all, you don't have to say any more. I can't believe it. He, uh, I'll tell you what made his day the other day. I love it. Jonathan Ross said The Elephant Man is one of the best films ever made. Yeah. Uh, Endorsed by a celebrity. I know. Well, by a film buff, really. Mm. It is good though, isn't it? It is a very good film, yeah. We yeah. have got Cheeky Freak of the Week. Come oh, on. right. It's, it's a lot, lot of stuff going on this week. In the freak world? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, there's loads. I mean, stuff that we can- the one that hasn't made it. God, this is what this- so this is where it hasn't made it, so we judge it on that, go on. There's a woman, right, do you know how, um, I mean in a way I thought Elephant Man, it was a bit tight because, you know, you sort of took him on a freak show, did a bit of a, a road <laughs> show with him and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's some woman, I think she's in India, like, like now, who, um, <laughs> makes a lot of money, cause she's got three legs, and like seven toes, stuff, and she was saying, uh, People pay quite a lot of money. Not I mean, Swiddy Patel. <laughs> it, it's not that much money, like, compared to here, but over there, yeah. it's like, loads of money. Sure. Um, and mm. all you do is, uh, you go around to her house, and you pay this lot of money, and people just go, oh, look at that, look at that. Extra leg. Extra leg. <laughs> right. It's quite a lot of money, isn't that? So she hasn't even got to go out on the road anymore, like in the old days? No, people that's, come what, to that's what annoyed me, it's yeah. like, well, you could get to them faster. <laughs> You go and see them if they're paying the money. <laughs> sure. Oh. But yeah, there's- What she could do is go in and buy a pair of shoes, right, and then nick one on the way out, because they only put one out, don't they? Good mm. idea. So she could get, you know, two, mm. three for the price of two. Just offer. one of the many perks of having Just three legs. Just one of the many perks of having three legs. The other mm -hmm. one is, I mean, keepy-uppy, but she'd be good at that, she wouldn't she? She just stays at home and puts her feet up. <laughs> 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 but anyway, that's not even Cheeky Freak of the Week. That's, that's, that's coming up later. Coming up later. Oh, brilliant. Now, Rockbuster is dead in the water, isn't it? We've killed that off, have we officially? We killed off- oh, we killed off Monkey News and Rockbusters. Uh, Didn't I tell you that there was some sort of petition for Monkey News? Was there? What was it called? a lot of- oh, it's loads of- loads of emails you, and that. You saying, mean you've done Monkey News? You mean you want to do Monkey News? No, but the, the, uh, seriously, there's uproar. And people were like, you can't get rid of monkey news. Yeah. Don't be yeah. doing that. Uh, who, 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 what sort of, what? Oh, loads, who, who loads, was, loads of people. Was, was, it, it, was it monkeys? Trying to write the complete works of Shakespeare? Did Tony Blair get a whiff of it and he's, he's coming so down we're doing monkey news. And Rockbusters, Steve, if you've got a better competition then we'll do yours, that's fine. I, do you know what I mean? If that's what you want to do, we'll do- what, what, what did you want to do? No, I was just wondering whether we should perhaps not do a quiz at all rather than do that piece of rubbish. Might be better to have nothing. Might be better just to have silence during that part of the show than have Rockbusters. How I don't know. If we I could discuss it, if I give you the clues mm. and that, and if you think they sound rubbish, we're not doing it. <laughs> well, I know that. I guarantee they're going to sound rubbish. All right, let's make it the last rockbusters then. This is the last rockbusters. Well, it depends. This is it. okay. This is just, if it's good, we, you get a reprieve. It's all about this. Mm. Okay. Okay. Right. Go on then. Let's do rockbusters then. Oh, we're doing it now. Should we play a record and do it after that? Do it after. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell yeah. you the prizes and then we'll come back with the uh, with clues. I because I've, I've dug up that REM track. Excellent. So it's an interactive show. Okay, we've got the best summer holiday album ever. What we've got on there, it's brilliant. got Elvis versus Junkie XL, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Holly Valance is on there. Yeah. Laz Ketchup, it's all the stuff that the XFM listener uh, is craving. Uh, Tribute to the Ramones it, album, we've got, uh, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers are on there, Metallica. Yeah. Uh, Street Legal from Bob Dylan, that's nice. Brilliant. Did you just buy that in the four for twenty pounds from HMV deal? Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> um, once that's again. A good album. The Talons of Weng Chiang, a Doctor Who classic. Yeah. And uh, there's something for uh, for the XFM listener, uh, 8 Mile on DVD. I thought well. that was nice, that film. That was, that, the last bit was funny. It was, it's a, it's a good film. Uh. Some, some good rap offs in that as well. Yeah. So uh, let's play a tune and then we'll come back with the Rockbusters clues. REM, go on. Give it to them. REM, Electronite. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, I walk uh, down Oxford Street every day to go to the office, and it is like running the gauntlet in Gladiator. Really? It's not only is it just like you know you have to dodge people and they're dawdling or rushing or you know keeping 
into the road to get past some people but avoiding taxes. But it's like hands everywhere, like leaflets. I don't know. There must be a million leaflets mm. given out. It's all- Mobile phones, teach, sandwich uh, shops. Uh, teach yourself English. Yep. Uh, teach other people English. I uh, know. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, those, uh, charity people, it, um, something for Alzheimer's. And, and I, I've been caught about six times where I couldn't say no. I've got about eight standing orders now because I just couldn't say no when they confront you. Yes. Which is, you know. I'm all, it's amazing how often I'm on the way to a meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm always yeah. on the way to a meeting, and then I always feel guilty if I walk past them again two minutes later with a HMV bag. Yeah, yeah, st full. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> crammed with bargains. I know, yeah. No, but, it's, um, it's actually weird. It's like, they're like zombies. It's like you're fighting them off. You need a flaming torch to yeah. get past them. Or if it's not them, it's tourists. Just constantly, you know, excuse me, can you take my photo outside HMV? Or outside Topshop? That it's, doesn't happen to me. Oh, okay. Okay. It always seem to have tourists. Just I in the I'm way, just I, kind of dawdling, you know, but looking I walk at the buildings. So fast. I walk so fast. I put my head down and I just try and walk so fast mm. everywhere now because it's yeah. But mm. Oxford Street is just, it's unbelievable now. And I've, I, I think it's age. Like I've started noticing. Even if the windows open, and I hear just like cars and they're on the mobile phone. It's the loudest place in the world. Yeah. I don't know what we can do. Well, isn't it one of the busiest streets in? Is it either the world? The or universe. It's it is mental. I think if we carpeted it. That would and put some certainly. curtains up. It would just deaden. It's like pubs with those those polished floors and metal tables, and everyone's um having to talk like that to yeah. be heard. The jukebox is quite loud, and I want to go just to turn everything down. Yeah. yeah. Let's put some carpet down. Just talk, talk quietly like this. Yeah. Let's put the music down a little bit. We'll have a good time. I've never quite understood that impulse. I don't again if it's age where you go in a club or or a, or a pub, as you say, and the music's just slightly too loud, so it just makes everything slightly tricky. It's, it's slightly tricky to have a I conversation. Know. But what uh, what annoys me is is when it's for the amusement of the barman or barmaid. Yeah. If they're bored, they're in a pub. They've got the music up, their music up, yeah. right? T t techno blaring, right? They've got a telly on watching a soap opera, yeah. and I want to go choose one or the other. Yeah. I mean, what are you watching? I got a minicab last night. I imagine you don't travel in minicabs, but the guy driving, one of those guys, he's, he's, I know he's driving a cab on a Friday night. Okay, no one wants to be doing that. And he had, uh, one of those phone, you know, the little earpieces that you put yeah. in, so you, it looks like they're talking to themselves. And he's there, and he's, so he goes, where are you going? I went, oh, crouching. He went, hey, well, I said, and he's chatting on his mobile phone the whole time. His voice was so loud. He had the radio on as well. Oh. And he wasn't concentrating on the road. I, I, and I, I, was, I just thought, look, I'm paying you ten pounds here to take me somewhere. Please, just s stop chatting or arranging your social life for two minutes. Yeah. Get to my destination safely, and then you can you can resume your conversation. My, my favourite one is uh, uh, I'm going to so and so terrace, please. Where's that? Mm. I want to go right. You're not it's n you're not taking me then. Yeah. I mean I I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I don't drive. That, I'm paying you. That's fine. Paying out. you. That's got to be part of the service. But I mean uh, I know people have been in many cabs, didn't know where I was, and didn't have an A to Z. No, I, w I got I came. Uh, I was in East London once. I said to him, I'm going to. Uh, Going to North London, he went, uh, where specifically? I went, uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, sure. I said, do you know the way? He went, yeah, 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 yeah. Set off. Along the way, he went, do you know the way? I said, well, oh, I thought you knew. He said, I said, have you not got an He went, no. He was one of those guys who'd just taken his car out middle of the night. <laughs> that was all he, <laughs> yeah. he, all he had. All his credentials were he had a car. No <laughs> map, no torch. The two other things <laughs> I'd bring with me. And he said, uh, so we're driving along. He went, he went, uh, I could probably get you to Camden. I was like, okay. He went, to you start? Know the I mean, that yeah. is the start. Exactly. He went, do you know the way to Camden? I thought, pull over. It's not worth it. I'd rather hitchhike. I'd rather walk. Ludicrous. Those people who just go out. Yeah, they just can take a car out. Yeah. Well, well, I bought a car. Oh. Have okay, you ever done well, that? No, well, I, I, you know, I, I'm sick of living here. Mm. And you say no about people hassling you. Do you, right? When you say here, you mean the world, don't you? No, just, just, <laughs> just in London is doing the ad in now. Mm. Uh, the other, uh, the other week, actually, walking home from here, uh, and like you say, there's always someone hustling you, saying, do you want to buy this? Do you want one of these? Uh, going down Carnaby Street, right? There's your, there's your first mistake. <laughs> he said, uh, you into meditation? <laughs> so I was like, oh, and I had a bit of time to kill, so I thought I'll have a chat, right? Have you got time? Oh, we've never got time, <laughs> we're too busy. Yeah, I thought you were too busy before. Well, I said, yeah. what, what's all that then? What do, what's, what, what do you do? And he said, we'd teach you how to breathe. <laughs> I like, well, I'm 30. I think <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've done all right. And he sort of said, I'll oh, forget it. I'll forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll forget it. <laughs> I'm 30. And in, in, in Selfridges they do, um, uh, like Evian or whatever, that water company are there. And, and they've got like little glasses of water. <laughs> and you walk past and go, have you ever tried this? <laughs> 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 it's water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, here you go, we'll try it. You go, Jesus Christ, is that what water is? <laughs> what have I been drinking then? You've been drinking piss and mud. <laughs> have I? I'll have a bottle. <laughs> anyway, listen, Rockbusters. Oh, come on then. Let's get it done. Um, really? Yeah. Come on then.
Right, so cryptic clues and initials, you work it out, it's a band and stuff. Yeah. Right, Brilliant. first one. Bob Olness. Uh, the first clue, <laughs> um, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took him off and he threw him away. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the clue, the initials okay. T B. T B. Okay. Right, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took him off and threw them away. Second one, the Scottish monster has got a, a, a bit of a tan. Right, the Scottish monster has got a bit of a tan. Okay. That's, uh, that's TD, right? <laughs> and, uh, the last one, uh, well, the, uh, the 60s singer had a heart attack whilst he was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. <laughs> right, and that's <laughs> FNM. FNM. Well, the 60s singer's had a heart attack. He was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. Email in. Ricky Dot your face. Excellent. Remember, this is to save Rockbusters. If people don't get this, right, it's no more. So you better, if you want this feature to stay, you better get the clues. Right. Good work, Carl. Uh, we'll give those clues again after uh, the next tune. What are we playing? And this is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love it, don't no, you? You love, love it. it. Good, it's a good, good stomping pop number one rock. Excellent. Jane's Addiction, just because. I think things are, are rocking up. They are indeed. <laughs> rocking yeah. up in the land this year, Steve. Yes, that's good news, I think. Evanescence, then, the darkness, rock-tastic. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton of a Saturday. Can I just say that the shaving your arse feature <laughs> yeah. from earlier, uh, if you missed that, that was half past one, that was a discussion on shaving your arse. Yeah. Uh, it was great stuff. That seems to have caught the public imagination. Yes. We've had so many emails, we've had someone telling us exactly how to shave your arse. Yeah. So if you need that information, I can probably forward it to you. Well, I think this will be the year of rock and arse. <laughs> exactly. But uh, it's extraordinary how, you know, just a simple discussion like that, that mm. you would think perhaps was crass, crude. And mind you, our, our listeners do like Carl talking about monkeys. Is. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it's it, it's something to be proud of. Mm. It's not like we changed a nation or, or freed a, a people or oh, found no. a cure for something. We we hit them in their you know at their level sure. with monkeys and asses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's what our listeners love. Yeah, <laughs> monkeys and asses. Yeah. We should put that on the poster. I and they go together because I um I joined the zoo. Uh, uh, last time we went down and became friends of the zoo, right? Oh, right. I thought you had to sit in a, <laughs> no, in a no, cage no, for no. a And, uh, it, th that thing happened. We were, I, I went straight for the chimps. Of course. Right? And there was sort of like three sort of, uh, big sort of adult ones there. And, um, there's people with their kids. And I could see the people just pulling their kids away as one of them went up and started putting his face up the other ones. Oh. Sure. And it was sort of like, I just can't be bothered to explain this to yeah. my children. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to just move my, oh, come on then. There's the lions. Let's <laughs> go and have a look at the lions. Yeah. What are they doing? They're uh, just sniffing each other's asses. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I remember when I used to go to the zoo, they always felt there were certain animals that weren't getting a look in, really, that no one was particularly interested in. The tapia. Exactly. We were going straight to the snakes we were interested in. Yeah. Birds. So I don't remember being big, particularly interested in birds. Big cats, although it's a bit depressing. Uh, great apes, great apes, yep. reptile. You're right, reptiles. Yeah, birds. Uh, Unless it's a big one that you think can oh, rip vulture. a dog apart. Yeah, a you go, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, owls are brilliant. But, yeah, owls great. But but I've always wanted a little owl on my desk. I like be doing work and there'd be a little owl there and I go, can you give me that pencil? And it just sort of goes over and gets me a pencil, goes cheers, and it just watches me and it thinks I'm brilliant. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Not really. No. No. No, I've never noticed I have any kind of animal sat on my desk. No, Carl? You'd like a little owl, wouldn't you, that helped you? No, I had a, I had a little magpie, I don't know, we've talked about that. Oh, he came down and, uh, started pecking your grifter, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what was his name? Maggie. Sure. Brilliant. Inspired. And it, you took it to school and it didn't come back didn't once, come did back, it? Didn't come mm. back, didn't see it again. Oh, dear. Did it ever peck, peck your head? Cause mm. you used to have hair, didn't you? Mm. Yeah. No, it did. It started getting a bit violent. Really? Yeah. Was it becoming sort of of age when adolescence probably sexual frustration sort? You know, because cause I think magpies go for shiny <laughs> objects, don't they? And you were probably sort of yeah. probably losing it a little bit then in the front. And so when the sun was out, there's a bit of a sheen on the front. <laughs> they saw a glare and thought, "I'll have that." Yeah. What is that? That's brilliant. Yeah. Or as it was sort of pecking away, it mistook it for a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of the noise. Because of the made. noise. Yeah, the hollow oh, sound. I squeezed his head um, uh, yesterday. We uh, should just point out if you're a new listener to uh, X, I mean, you might not realise that one of uh, Ricky's many sexual peccadilloes, I'm assuming it's a sexual thing, I can, can't justify it any other way, uh, is to just squeeze Carl's head. Yeah. Front wise, sideways. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's sexual or, you know, like when you've got a little kitten, you can't, you, oh, you want to squeeze his little face. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? 
Do you know what I mean by that, Carl? Yeah, yeah, a I said that. I said it before, squeeze the little head. Yeah, exactly, and I, I feel like that with you, cause it's sort of like, he gives so much. Look at Carl's face, he mm. gives so much. It's like he, it is like he can understand what we're saying. Yeah. And that's what the connection is, I think, between me and, and, and Carl and other animals. <laughs> it's like he can um, understand what we're saying. But I squeezed it yesterday and Carl went, I definitely had some of crack. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to see how hard I can squeeze it. Yeah, I think that was you just thinking, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. I think the cogs just started to... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I think there is a danger, cos I think there is a danger that you could- you could squeeze it too much. Yeah, I know. He did a good deed today, did, the other day, didn't you? Oh. Was- yeah. What were you up to? You were just, uh, you were talking about, like, you know, being hassled in the street and stuff. Mm. And, uh, I get hassled a lot by the homeless. Uh, don't we all, don't we all? Um. <laughs> you should go, you should go home to sleep. <laughs> Sit, I'm, I'm here, mate. But no, I- I- I, I do treat them a lot. You know, <laughs> treat them. I love that. You had a good day? Yeah. You've been good? Yeah. There you go. It's 50B. <laughs> Suzanne does the, uh, save the children thing. You were talking about, you know, charities hassling you all the time. Mm. She does that. Um, and I sort of say, well, you do that. I'll, uh, I'll look after You'll you. You'll take care of the homeless. I'll take yeah. care of the odd tramp around where I live. And how, and how do you treat them? Loads of different ways. 50p I might give them. Yeah. Or I might, I, I, you know, they'll sort of say, oh, have you got any money? I'll say, what for? And they'll go, I'm really thirsty. Mm. So I'll go, well, hang on a minute, and I nip and get them a little diet coke. Sure, a well, diet they, coke? Yeah, they, they wanna watch their weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going full fat. Oh, what <laughs> an insult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To a- to a man like me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather treat them than- cause a lot of people spend- spend money on, you know, problems abroad and stuff. Right. Oh, I just God. think, you know- Yeah, famine no, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, God. Like what? What do you mean? Like, famine relief? Well, you do get sick of it, don't you? <laughs> you know I mean, it's that- You get sick of no, it. No, I'm wait, just saying- wait, go on. No, I'm just- I know, just let- let- whatever you do now, Steve, don't interrupt, because I'm scared, but I just think it's- it's worth it. Mm. It's, it's, there's no, so no, many no. issues There's freedom of speech, yeah. there's we're not responsible, <laughs> yeah. there's he'll get away with it because he's a buffoon, <laughs> yes. and it is entertaining. Exactly. So, go so on. So what I'm saying is you're what? saying, you know, do a tr who do I give me money to, is it- is it, you know, little, you know, sick kids or whatever, or is it old people or whatever? Mm. HMV. Uh, money too. Usually they get a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I just get sick of, uh, you know, problems abroad. It's like, what do you do? What do you do with famine and that? What, what are you meant to do? How can you solve it? It's gone on for years. Yeah. And it just keeps going. We keep giving them money, they keep spending it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no- you're not getting any return for your cash? Well, it's just how, how many times, you know, they've got to learn. What do you mean they've got, got to learn? learn? <laughs> what, are you gonna teach them a lesson? What, what do you mean they've got to learn? What do, what do you mean? Well, what are they doing with it? Yeah, they must have like better interest accounts or something where, you know, look after, d get, the, put the money in the right things. Sorry, do, do you think that Bob Galdorf sort of writes him a check? He goes over and he's in the helicopter and there's there's millions of them, and they go, it's Galdorf from Boomtown Rats. <laughs> Brilliant. They go, oh, 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 I if there's one man that can help us. Yeah, I hope he doesn't sing. He's not going to sing. Yeah. He's got some money for us, and he comes down and he goes, they are. Do you want a check or do you take switch? They go, we don't take switch. He goes, there's a check. They don't, they he's, get he's things like- that again though, isn't he, as well? I is mean, all right, you know, he used to work here, Bob, he's a lovely fella and that, but- Yeah, he's a lovely man. But how many times can you save the world? You know, yeah. he's, he's- he's over there again helping out, and it's like, well, you know, what do you do? Are you saying don't bother, cos it keeps happening? Not for well, I'm not saying that, you know what I mean, I'm not daft. <laughs> but that's what you're thinking. <laughs> and Carl, you are daft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just- I don't know what the answer is. Do you know what I mean? So no. you're just saying wash your hands of the whole affair, leave them to it? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Are you really just saying it's sort of- it's nature, it's tough luck, just don't interfere? Like a wildlife program. Is that what you're saying? Don't interfere- Are you basically you're saying it's not my concern? This has got a bit heavy. Can we do Cheeky Freak of the Week? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> my My Hey Hey, Out of the Blue from uh, the album Russ Never Sleeps by Neil Young. Such a brilliant song. Oh, he's a great, great uh, musician. He's amazing. Yeah. He's incredible. I think we'll play a Neil Young track a week. Okay. From now until Christmas. <laughs> Brilliant, okay. Alright. Excellent. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Dragon with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We were talking about the homeless. Um, I saw a homeless guy in the week as I was walking down Finchley Road, and he was peering in the window of one of the, uh, uh Dixons or something like that, just checking out the details on one of those cable TV packages. <laughs> and I thought, one step at a time. <laughs> I mean, if you, firstly, I don't know, start eating your dinner off a plate. Yeah. 
and then work your way up to, you know, house, the home, a widescreen TV, a roof. digital television. But, uh, uh, it's all- d- 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 Well, that, 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 that might answer one of the questions, cause I, I keep getting recognised by homeless people, mm. and I never know what to say. I go, oh, is your- I think, well, <laughs> either they- they're not really homeless, and they've, you know, they- I don't know, they've got sort of digs or something, and they watch television, or the scariest one is that they- They've become homeless in the last few months sure, since yeah. the office. And I think, oh God, that's really scary. Or they are watching it in Dixon's. They're queuing up going, the office is on tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, going down to Dixon's. Or they think t- you're one of them. Or that, well, I am. Because I mean, the way you dress. Well, no, uh, some that are probably not quite, yeah, got their faculties, so maybe a little bit worse for wear, um, think they recognise me. And they, 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 old scenarios where they're going, remember we were chatting, I was going, yeah, yeah, how are you? How are you? And it's just they recognise someone. Right, yeah. But, but that, that's, yeah. that's a bit weird. But I mean, uh, I think that's the worst thing, homeless. I, 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 on a serious note, it is, outside health, when yeah. we're, we're talking about charity and I don't know, I, I, I sort of, um, uh, got these stand orders where I've been sort of like caught in the street, but the ones that I'd choose, I'd always think, Charity is what touches you. You can't change the world, but you can change your bit. So cancer, obviously, because I'm, um, so I give to n- cancer. And I think outside health, the next one must be being homeless. Because there's nothing you can do. It's, yeah. it's got everything. It's, you're, you're scared, bewildered, you're cold, hungry. It's just everything. Even if you're healthy and homeless, eventually you're not gonna be. Well, I just, I do feel bad because, you know, I always feel that I want to give to, uh, to the, the health charities. Like cancer, for instance, because there's that fear that I might get it. Well, yeah, it's not just that. It's just like, yeah, if you're not health, they're, they're, that's the first thing, isn't it? If if your life if your life's being threatened, there's nothing else you can really worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that makes it wrong though that I'm sort of it's like I'm investing in a possible future. Yeah, well, not really, because it's the same for everyone, isn't it? But um, you know, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. I saw a homeless guy as well. Um, looking through the bins, but he wasn't pulling out food and scraps. He was pulling out newspapers. Just having a read. Yeah. I was always found that odd. I see that a lot, homeless guys. I don't know if they're just <laughs> checking out the TV listings. <laughs> 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 or when he finally gets his When's the office cable? on? Yeah. Yeah, the office, <laughs> they've moved it. They've moved it to Choice and, uh, UK Gold. I don't, I mean, I don't blame him because, I mean, there is some cracking stuff on cable TV. Uh, there's some great stuff. But I was flipping through the other day and on digital TV you, you can see what other shows are on while you're watching something. I was flipping through and there was one and it was called, now, when are you ever in the mood to watch a TV show called I survived a two hundred pound tumour. <laughs> when was that on? <laughs> <laughs> because it seems to me that if you've got a two hundred pound tumour, you probably want to watch something else that'll take your mind off it, Big oh, Brother no, or whatever. I'm not two hundred pounds. Well, it, I don't. I can't imagine what this is. A two hundred pound tumour. I c- it must have been an error. Two hundred pound tumour. It must have been a two hundred pound tuna. <laughs> it yeah. was probably someone fell in the water. <laughs> yeah. And it came. I in. survived a two hundred pound tuna. Yeah, and it was yeah. just a spelling mistake. Sure. A two hundred pound tumour. That's like, isn't that like kind of having that's Mr. another T's person? <laughs> that is another person. Yeah. Per- maybe. Oh my God. Maybe it was a. St- like it, all, all his life, they told him it was a Siamese twin. <laughs> But yeah. someone had just painted a little face on it yeah, when he was at school. Yeah, when he was at school. Just drawn a little face exactly, on it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And they go, it's not your twin brother. I goes, isn't it? I goes, no, <laughs> it's a tumour. We better take it off. It's two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds. That can't be right. You sure it wasn't twenty pounds tumour? I'm assuming that's what it, what it probably would have been. But I, it was certainly two hundred pounds on the digital thing. I, maybe that's a mistake. That's great, isn't it? They're trying to make it more interesting. Yes. Yeah. Someone at Carl got there. Twenty pound tumour. Let's make it two hundred. <laughs> at least they're what? Exactly. That's two- what I'd be like though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go to the doctors. You know what I'm like? A two hundred pound tumour. I know. It's just that that thing. I mean, you know what I'm like. I don't like. Uh, it depends where it is as well. Taking your clothes off and all that. There's a pressure in it. You don't like anything being touched, do you? I, just I don't don't know like, when he said he, like he he doesn't check his balls. He doesn't like the feel. Mm. That's us live with me. He doesn't like the feel. I, I think. Do you mean that you don't like what it feels like in your balls when you're fiddling with them? Because I imagined it that you meant you don't like the feel, i.e. I, in your fingertips, you don't like the feel of your balls. It's, it's the thing of, you start thinking about what you're actually touching and there's something in there and you might break them and all that. I don't like <laughs> it. <laughs> they are delicate. I am scared with the little knobbly bits, yeah. What knobbly bits? <laughs> At the, uh, at the doctor's, it's that thing of, it's not taking your clothes off in front of him, right? It's the way you've got to take your clothes off, but you ask you to go behind that curtain to do it first. Yeah. So there's more pressure because then you can walk out with nothing on. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like, why have you asked me to go behind there? Yeah. Rather than, if they're just sat there having a chat and he's going, so, yeah. how have you been? It's like, all right, and just taking the pants yeah, off and then- Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's the pressure well, don't, don't take your clothes off. And you came out and he'd, put, he'd lit a candle and there was <laughs> yeah. some soft music on. The lights were both. Do, 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 mm, nice. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Or he said, if you'll make you feel more relaxed, I'll take my clothes off. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But I'll do it in the form of a striptease. Now, now, Carl, I'm gonna ask you the question, knowing the answer. What do you think of, um, maybe a gay doctor just checking his testicles out? He's a professional, he just happens to be gay. That He's would never happen, would it? What are you talking about? Why not? Oh. Speaking of, uh... Go on. Sh doctors. Um, no. Gay what? people are not. Do you know when we discussed, <laughs> uh, gay-only toilets? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's only, uh, it looks like it's coming into action. No, it doesn't. Right. No way. It was mentioned again. Where? On... Your head. No, I think Do you think that people in positions of power are listening to this show getting I ideas from you? Tony Blair. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it really does. And, and the funny thing is, why are they getting upset? Why are gay people getting upset that they might have to have their own toilets? Carl, you don't know what you're talking about anymore. You you're having a sly look. <laughs> you don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, can we have Cheeky Freak after this? Thank you. Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. Steve, you're thinking of taking over as producer, aren't you? Well, I just think it's a shambles. I've asked for Cheeky Freak of the Week and it appears that Carl's not ready. He's not prepared. No, I can sort of remember it. It's just that I like to have contempt, all the information. Contempt for but the you listener. you've just had about- uh, you've just had a whole bunch of adverts and placebo and all we're, we're chatting, we're having a chat and that. Right, do you want to sort yourself out in future? Yeah. Um, someone e- that's what we were chatting about. Someone emailed in about they watched the 200 pound tumour thing and, uh, um, when it was removed, um, it was carried away in a wheelbarrow, right? Carl said, what, even when she had it removed, she still carried it round in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> and he went, I thought it's sort of like she's got to become attached to it. <laughs> you could, I mean, you are, you definitely are my favourite thing in the world. It's great. Look at the way he's looking back. But I think they're all the same. The people, I mean, I have had more emails about people saying I watched the 200 pound tumour. And I shaved me ass. Than anything else. Than anything else. When we ask questions we about science, science Shakespeare. We, just, we talk, yeah, yeah. Nothing, we talk, nothing. Science. High concept, we talk about political issues. One person emailed in, they said, I tuned into the 200 pound tumour documentary, it looked disgusting, I couldn't watch for long. What were you expecting? Yeah. That it might sing and dance? <laughs> do a little show for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, these, so what's these the are really your listeners, Carl. Now I think we've, do you know what I mean? You, you sort of, you find your niche, you attract your. Uh, I think me and Steve are pretty much just here. I they, think the people that we had in the early days, Rick, they've long since abandoned us. They jump ship. They've early, got, they've got jobs. Yeah. they've got jobs. They're out now. They've, they've been released. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting yeah. their life back together. Um, Carl, Come so on, what's Carl. the situation with Cheeky Freak? I've, I've, I've got like a couple of bits. Like I say, I haven't got the in-depth stuff that I normally- Oh no, because usually it's, uh, you know, it's Heavily pretty researched. scientific. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, do the jingle. We've got to we've come up with a new one, haven't we? The Freak! Say chic. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, couple of, couple of bits. I don't know which one to use as the main feature for this week. <laughs> um, it's that good, is it? Well, there's been another one born. Uh, what? Little kid. You go on. Uh, four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Insult. <laughs> it's just a guy who wears glasses. Come on. Four eyes. Uh, four eyes. Uh, two noses. Two mouths. That's weird. Isn't it? This bloke. Did he also have two heads, two bodies? Sort of born, sort of slightly separately. He wasn't uh, stood next to a mirror. No. No. It's weird, that, isn't it? That's all you've got. I love that. That's weird. That they went to the doctor said that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mrs. Um, Parks, um, kid's got four eyes and two noses. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Any clues? <laughs> Any clues? So well, that's that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. That's all the one. information. Well, I tell you what, that, no, that should be the main one. No, okay, but, I've answered but it. But like what? I say, this, what's the idea of this feature? What do I say all the time? Don't know. I always say, think about it. Think about what that would be like. <laughs> okay. What? Giving birth to him? No, no, no. Her. Be being, uh, I think it's a girl. <laughs> being like her. Two mouths. Four eyes. What would that be like? Mad, innit? I don't know, I don't know what this feature is. I don't know, do I? Is there another one? Is that, you said that I mean, too. I hope everyone took the opportunity <laughs> there during that silence to just think about what it would be like. I know I was. <laughs> could she, could she talk with a mouthful? What? Is that allowed? Because she's got two mouths. Yeah. Yeah. 
Would that be all right in her house? She'd be eating. Yeah, she could talk with one mouth and eat with the other. Right, I well, suppose. listen, the main one, right? You've thought about that. That's good. The main yeah. cheeky freak of the week. I haven't got all the details. Smallest person ever. <laughs> right? Well, how big would you say that is? Um, Carl is now sort of like holding his hands up like a fisherman, uh, long ways. That's about one foot. Right. Smallest, smallest man in the world. I, I printed the thing off and I can't find it. There's a little picture of him. Right. Uh, the odd thing was. But was why, why have you asked me how, did it say or was it a picture of him? I didn't really read it. Cause oh, you didn't. for of course you didn't. Jesus. I just saw it and thought, oh, that's What, are you, it's right, that's right, that's I assumed it was natural size. No, it was that big. But what do you mean it was that big? Little fella, like that. But why are you doing that? What, what? It was a page with a little fella. How do you know that was natural size? No, it was because it said it's, it's world's smallest man. And the funny thing is, I, I remember, I've read the first line, I always read the first line, it said world's well smallest done. man. Well done, well done. The weird thing is he's got an head like a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> the shape of it, apparently, I don't know if that's got anything to do with his shape and size. Uh, oh, but, um, God. That, that big. His name's Mr. Watts. And, uh, the, the annoying thing is, what got me is, if you're that big, yeah. right, don't have your picture taken next to a fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he having his photo taken next to a fruit bowl? Don't know. <laughs> Whoever the photographer was, obviously having a bit of a laugh. Yeah. At his expense. Cause you, you would just stand in the middle of nowhere, you'd look normal and that, but he was, he was stood there, <laughs> just leaning on an apple. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning on an apple. <laughs> what is this? In what world do you have it? This, this was, this was on, on the internet. <laughs> Leaning on an apple. Leaning on an apple. <laughs> was it Tom Thumb? <laughs> what is this? Are you sure it wasn't that some sort of sci-fi show they're advertising? No, no, it was, it was a uh, <laughs> leaning on. A, can you, uh, sorry, can you just lean on the apple? <laughs> just lean on the apple, man. Can you favour, you stand next to my chihuahua. <laughs> You're not taking the piss, are you? No, not at all. No. Could you? Would you mind leaning on this matchbox? <laughs> yeah. Leaning on an apple. And that's what it said. So it just said he's the world's smallest man leaning on an apple. Smallest man. Said about his head being like a light bulb. I don't know what, what that meant. And, uh, and I just thought, right, that, that'll do. That's that sort of cheeky figure of the week done. I think that was on like Monday. Right? <laughs> I found that. I thought that's done. Printed it off. Forgot to get it off the photocopier. Someone's nicked it. Play a record. That you got to- You know, it's just- it's, uh, see. No, can I just say no that, point. Carl, please, no if point. I say, let's have Cheeky Freak of the Week, and you haven't done your research, you haven't got the information, just tell us you can't do it. But don't lead us on. Don't say this, this on the radio. Hold your hand up to me and go, how tall is that? It's nothing. That's this radio. Nothing. It's nothing. Um, I, I think it was that big because he was leaning on an apple. It's not enough information. But, uh, imagine Trevor McDonald coming on, going, some news, some stuff, uh, how big's that? <laughs> How big do you think that is? Yeah. Because there was a fella, yeah, coming up after t Chris, more Chris Tarrant. It, it, Play a record. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm angry. I'm actually angry. And I, if Monkey News is anyway, in any way similar, <laughs> you've really pulled your finger up with that, have you? Mm -hmm. Good. Let's have Rockbusters answers next. Supersonic. Oasis on XFM 104.9. Right. Getting through it. It's the Rockbusters. Right. It's the, the rock was re results, really, because th this is, um, and a very important result is whether, uh, they, uh, stay in the Premiership or are relegated. This is the playoffs for Carl. Okay? You need three points. You need three points to stay up, Carl. Go right. on. Right, the, uh, there's a lot of right answers in that. Right, uh, okay. That's, that's, that's in your favour, you, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first clue. Was, uh, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took them off, he threw them away. Yeah. The initials TB. Yeah. Right? Go on. Toe, knee, Bennett. <laughs> right, that's Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Yeah. Okay, that's a warning, that's a yellow card. That is a yellow card, but it's, you can still get the points. Right. Uh. Because his name's not Bennett. <laughs> Tony, brilliant. Tony, perfect. A pun. Toe, knee, his name's Tony. Perfect. Bennett, no, his name's Bennett. <laughs> See? Well, he's, he's, he's in London this week as well, so I don't know if it's sold out. I won't mind. Uh, are you on drugs? Or uh, uh, have you, uh, did I actually crack your head? Did I actually give you some brain damage? Because you're worse than usual now. It's like, uh, go on. Right, the second one. Uh That's Scottish fella. We've got to speed this show no, up. Hang on a minute, hang on. I've just got to make sure it's right. We don't want to look stupid. Right? <laughs> that Scottish monster has got a bit of a tan. 
I don't think we can look stupid with no. material like T this. T-T-D, that Scottish monster's got a bit of a tan, the answer there, the darkness. I'll give you that. All right. Well uh, done. And the last one. Goal. Goal. Uh, the 60s singer, he had a heart attack the other way whilst, uh, having it away, you won't be seeing him again. The initials F N M. That's Faith No More. Adam Faith. Right? No! Doesn't count! Why not? Adam Faith No More. Right. Adam Faith No More? <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, what is the clue? Is the clue Adam Faith, or is it Faith No well, More? It's Faith, I suppose. Just Faith No More. He's <laughs> a the singer. So we got that, that's that. Safe for next week. What, who's the winner? <laughs> what do you make of it? You've got the deciding vote, Rick. Well, come on. I mean, you know my I mean, it, wor it works Faith No More, but he's mixed up what cryptic is and that, cos it start- cos the, the fella- I mean, Adam Faith- did actually die having it away, didn't he? Yeah. So it's all about him. It's all right, all the facts are right. Anyway. Uh, okay, I think he's got a reprieve. I think I'll give it to him. I think I've got to give it to him, oh. Steve. I think I have. He's, he actually pulled that out of the bag, that one. There's oh. no- there's no Jamaican fellas, no, seeing icebergs, or, you know, Whitney Houston. The closest he came to is, is Bennett, Binnett, and I've got to give him- let him off that. All I've right. got to be a fair ref here. Well, fair- fair- fair enough, and well done to- you know I'm always a fan of names that for some reason just- just strike me or tickle me. Yeah. And this week the lucky winner is, uh, Dave Suckling. <laughs> I- there's nothing- there's nothing amusing about that. <laughs> oh you are. dear. So- so one onto Dave Suckling. Okay. Suck- uh, well, Suckling wins it. Suckling takes the prize He there. takes the prizes. And, um, well done to him. I guess there's more of that next week. And, um, we're fast approaching the end of the show, Rick. I know you are excited about that, as am well, I. Well, I know, but uh, the best to come, because we've still got Bruce Springsteen coming up now, followed by Monkey News. Oh, right, Monkey News. It's an amazing. Bruce. What an amazing show this is. News. Uh, excellent. So, monkey news time on XFM. Carl Pilkington, the man in the hot seat. Carl, what have you got for us? Okay, uh, monkey news this week. Um, <laughs> we've covered a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we have indeed. Um, now do you know, like, <sighs> there's places where you can go for, like, weekend rests and stuff sure. and you can- you relax, you sit in a little spa, you might have a swim and yep. stuff. Mm. Well, they've got a place done for monkeys. Of course they have. Right? They can go there, they can they relax, forget about all the stuff they've got going on in their head. <laughs> they can have a manicure. <laughs> right. It's got nice meals. <laughs> it's, it's not called a manicure though, it's called a chimpacure. Beauty event. treatments. Yeah. Right? They look good and stuff. Yeah, well look <laughs> good, feel good, yeah. Now, you might think, well that's pretty normal. Well. The bit I haven't told you about. <laughs> Is it's actually run by a couple of chimps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh, oh God! Oh God! You're a maniac! Like, like, oh, for Christ! Oh, let's just. <laughs> that couple of chimps. Let's just. Of course it's not. No, no, no. It is because think about it. Right. <laughs> Think about it. What do you mean? Yes, it is. Of course, it's not run by a couple of chimps. What do they do? Get a loan. Right. If a chimp wants yeah. to have a rest, yeah. Where would you go to a place that's run by humans that don't? What don't they don't know what chimps' needs are? No. My point is this: How did they get it together? How did the two what two chimps? What Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Chimp went for a loan? So I'll tell you what we need: a star. I think I think it started off quite simple, right? Just a, uh, just you know, basic basic stuff. <laughs> well, it's expanded over time because it's become so popular. It's, it's gone mental down there. Sure. <laughs> Go! They've, they've I all heard about it. Now the thing is, the problem is this, right? That isn't even the, the top and bottom of it, right? <laughs> Christ. The I problem don't... is, it's been going on and on and on, right? It's been it's been earning a lot of money and stuff. The monkeys are happy. The monkeys that go there are loving it. They're telling friends and stuff. They're <laughs> all coming to it. Now the the problem is, it's this little uh, little monkey, little man monkey, and a little woman monkey, right? Yeah. They were sort of girlfriend and boyfriend. Sort of. <laughs> it's an open relationship, they can play around if they want. Well, the problem is they're not married, right? <sighs> now- Some Trouble brewing. The lad monkey, fella monkey, um, he's getting quite old. Mm. And the problem is, because it's his name that's down on all the- All the forms. Carl, all I, the forms. I, Let him I don't, finish. I'm getting scared now. Let him finish. It's his name on the business, 
and the problem is, is, is Mrs. is kind of like, what's gonna happen? Sure. What are you getting this, are you getting this from? What Internet. <laughs> oh, I don't know where to start. No. This is the- this no, is just- the, uh, Can we just hear the, the end? Oh, this is ridiculous. So, the problem is, the- the-, the female girl, monkey is worried that the male she's, monkey she's worried. is gonna, gonna die- What's gonna happen with the happen? business? What's gonna happen? Of course. Right? Now- What do you mean, the business? The- the- the health There is spa. no business. It's a joke. Health Rick, spa. you're not listening. His name's on the form. <laughs> <laughs> the male monkey's name, it's in I, his name. Uh, now, the problem is, oh, the woman monkey has got some kids. But because they're not blood, blood relatives, it's not gonna be handed down to them. And the court- they're, they're kids from a previous monkey marriage? Yeah. Right. Uh, so that, they're not gonna get it. Um, let me just check this out. Yeah, otherwise you don't wanna check the facts, otherwise yeah. you could look like a twat spouting shit on the radio. Please check the facts for scientific security. And they're just a bit worried because they're saying, that the people in Ohio, which is where they- where they've got the- the, uh, the little health thing going on. So that makes it more believable that it's Ohio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought you meant it was Berkshire, in which it, case it would be rubbish. It looks like the local people are trying to get in there, they've seen the success of it. Sure. And they're they trying to go in and take it over and stuff. Yeah. So- Give me the piece of paper. Throw it away. Play a record. That's the worst- that's the worst one I've ever heard. And you are- there's something wrong with you. You're educationally subnormal. Final tune from us, Tim Buckley. Lovely song called Wings. Back next week? Yep. Yep. See you, Carl. Oh, proper rock band. Best band since Thin Lizzy. The Darkness. Oh, big words. Growing on me. XFM 104.9. A bit rash, I think. Ah, uh, uh, R. Gervais, S. Merchant, K. Pilkington. With a little bit of that. I know you're- I know for a fact, uh, that Steve is getting a little bit Sick of Carl's attitude. Oh, his attitude's appalling. <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> I quite like it though, because it's a straight away friction and he's sort of like, you know. To be fair, I genuinely don't think I'm the culprit in this. I think I come in and I just ask him a simple request. Yeah. And immediately on my back. Whinging, moaning, whining. I, I, I mean, I don't know if there's any evidence. Well, it's funny to say that actually, because, uh, in the survey, yeah, it came out this, this week, it's, uh, quite extensive. Um, Mancunians take more sick, day sick days than anyone else. Mancunians take more sick days than workers in any other city in Britain and Ireland, according to Manchester based employment firm. Survey, uh, by Peninsula found uh, employees in Manchester take 11 sick, day sick days per year, whereas closest rivals, Edinburgh and Dublin, um, take an average of nine. Liverpool, Newcastle, Birmingham, Cardiff, only eight. Is Reading so, mentioned there or No, Bristol? it's not even in- it's not even in there, they don't sure. take days off. Um, London is only, only seven. So- so the point is, I mean, I don't think you can take anything from it, but if you're an employer and you had a Mancunian and a Liverpudlian and they were equal on everything else, but you really couldn't afford them to be away, Liverpudlian's gonna probably be away for eight days. Sure. Mm. The Manx gonna be away for eleven, phoning in sick and- So know. what can you- I mean, just well, it's, the analyzing the data there, how- what would you extrapolate from that? Um, I, I- I really don't know. I mean, call in if you've got any clues, or email us in if you've got any- I don't know why they- I- I think maybe- I don't know, Man I mean, Union's just- I mean, I don't really know many people from Manchester. Well, I only so. know one, but I know he was off sick because he put on wet trousers and he got a- He got a cold, I think. Yeah, well, he just said he was- yeah. didn't come in for- yeah. Um, he left early as well, once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. I mean, that's the survey, I don't know. I mean, it's evidence, because it's statistics, so- there yeah, you go. Guaranteed evidence for that. So, proof. any any thoughts on that, Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk? I mean, you're from oddly enough, you're from Manchester. Yeah, Carl, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on on that? On what? Sorry. No, no, on the survey. Oh, uh, wasn't really listening. Sure. What well, Mancunians take off more sick days? They call in sick. I mean, pres presumably spuriously. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's they've got the same body. They're exactly. biologically the same. So, uh, so uh, they're obviously uh, making up. They're lying. Yeah. They're some, some of the days, maybe just the, the three extra they're making up. Yeah, they're moaning. Um, probably because we work a lot harder than the others, so we're tired, so you're sick, so you need time off. Probably. Well, probably. Unlikely. I mean, the scousers, to be honest, yeah, take them on, let them work in your office. <laughs> but you know, how many computers are going to go missing? Right. That. So offensive. Is offensive. Right. This is a- this is a, no, this is a survey that proved you just made that up. You just carried on the myth that Liverpudlians thieve. Mm -hmm. Now that- that is just- that's not true. That is not true. Well. well it's not. Well, some of them do. There's- there's been no survey that you're more likely to thieve if you're from Liverpool than if you're in Manchester. So that- that hasn't been proven yet. So mm -hmm. all- all I've got is the evidence 
from a survey of I think three and a half thousand people, yeah. it's proof that people, f Mancunians take off more sick days. XFM 104.9, this is April Come She Will by Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel, April Come She Will, a lovely, lovely love song there. Uh, the X list was all about sort of like sexy songs because of uh, the death of uh, Barry White, of course. And, uh, Carl and Steve having a little argument. Steve said, well, there are, there are such things as sexy songs, of course. Carl said, I can't understand it. I can't understand it. How can something be sexy? How can you warm them with a song? Steve went, well, you don't warm with it, you just put it on in the background. Carl said, stick the telly on. Stick the telly on. I love that. You don't it's believe there's any such thing as a sexy song, is that right? I, I, I don't think it can get you in the mood. You know <laughs> what I mean? Right. <laughs> You're, you're either in with a chance or you're not. I don't think it matters what, what song you put on. Well, I don't think it ups your chances. I don't think if no, you does, take- it does, if, if you put Channel 5 on on a Friday night, right, see a little bit of that action, gets anyone going. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it's worked for me and that's all- What's that, what when, when pets go mad? No, what's no, up? you know, like, uh, what? I don't know the titles of them, I don't, I don't look at the titles, but- What, the show with Chris Moyles? <laughs> It's Do you mean the kind of erotic thrillers? Yeah, that yeah, they put, put one of them on, that's, that gets you going a bit. <laughs> what, 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 I might be tired and that, but... What, 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 does the, what, is, what does the woman go, go, oh, that's an idea. <laughs> Hey, that's so an they're, idea. They're normally, they're normally called something like illegal briefs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're normally about, you know, they're normally about some kind of, uh, female solicitor who's, uh, defending a guy who may or may not be a, li uh, a killer. Yeah. But maybe in a former life they were lovers. It's always some nonsense like that. And presumably there's normally some gruesome murders. So how is that getting you in the mood? It's plot development. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the narrative. Oh, <laughs> I love narrative. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that's a lovely twist. I've got the arm. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, if you're from Manchester, sorry about that. I mean, it is true. We aren't, we aren't making that up. We weren't doing a, a stupid stereotype like Carl did with Living Publicans. It's just a survey that Mancunians take off more sick days. I mean, but there might be genuine, there might be sort of an iller, iller people, or it might just be people who are in, in Manchester go, oh, I can't be bothered to go to work. It's rubbish. Whereas if you're in London, you go, I can't wait to go to work. What a lovely. What a lovely place this is. Some great jobs, don't you? Great jobs, don't you? Yeah. Um, uh, Rick, I know you're always looking, uh, just to keep you keeping abreast of, you know, new developments in yeah. music, what's happening. Yeah. I don't know if you've got any plans this evening, but you might want to pop along to the Hope and Anchor in Islington. <laughs> Why? Where, uh, playing tonight, um, Restless Diesel. <laughs> Please uh, welcome to the stage. Restless Diesel. I mean, we've talked about it before, band names where you just have to imagine you're supporting U2, yeah. Wembley Stadium. It can never happen. Please welcome to the stage. And Restless he comes on and Diesel. That's the first song he goes, uh, thanks, cause great band before us, Restless Diesel. You hear a lot <laughs> more of them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, w it so, won't uh, happen, will it? Sure, they're a great band. I think you What's the tax on that? <laughs> Fiverr in, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, uh, not telling us actually, yeah, but yeah, to pop in the open anchor, maybe tell us uh, how Restless Diesel were tonight. Yeah, just, uh, call in. Maybe, uh, call in on, uh, Christian Show Monday. Just tell us how <laughs> Restless Diesel were. We can make that a regular feature. <laughs> Uh, now, what's coming up on today's show? Really? Well, we listen, got... we got all the usual favourites. We got, uh, and some new ones. We got monkey news, that's sorted. Carl told me. People are guaranteed monkey he news. He called in, he said, I've got some monkey news. Brilliant. He's done that, I had to make sure. And yeah, we got that. We've got, um, some great tunes. I've got a great song from Tupac, some Cat Stevens, some Jimmy Webb, some Thin Lizzy. Can I surprise you with something from Aerosmith? Brilliant. And a little treat from Evan Dando. We're, we're quite rocky today, aren't we? Uh, there's, there's a threat that there won't be rockbusters. Good. Uh, <laughs> that's no threat. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we can Great bring news. back Educating Ricky. Oh. I mean, cause it's sort of like seasonal, isn't it, our show? You don't want all, it's not like Ant and Dex takeaways on all through the year. Yeah. They go away for a few weeks and we get something else like Ian Wright's, you know, yeah. friends like these or something. Exactly. Or, you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, so, uh, maybe Rockbusters, maybe not. Rockbusters um, on hiatus, but Educating Ricky always. That, that's not coming up. And, uh, I'll tell you what, Jane's Addiction just because they oh, rock as well, oh, don't oh, they? Oh, brilliant. XFM 104.9. Excellent, Ricky Jimmy. Jane's Addiction just because on XFM 104.9. Broadcasting from London, where people prefer to only be off sick when they actually are ill. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever taken a day off sick. Mm. Except when I had that terrible, terrible, terrible tonsillitis. Is that when you went home, stayed yeah. with your mum and dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that a problem? No fact of health. No, I'm not saying it's a problem. No <laughs> yeah, I've got loving family. Oh. So sue me. Uh, what do you make <laughs> 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 Taken. It's just like, oh god, three blokes in a pub. If there's people listening, I can't yeah. <laughs> Are there? <laughs> um, Carl, what do you make of London? Because you, you often say you, anyway, you'd much rather be up north. Well, he wouldn't, or he'd go. Well, this is what I, you know, he constantly says. You've chosen to live there. here, you've lived here for years, you've got a flat here. No. no. I chose to come here because I, I was offered a job that was good money. Yeah. 
I wouldn't have come here if there was no job. So you prefer to be somewhere where there's a good like job, so you've chosen like to live here. here. I don't like being here, though. What? No, but you can leave. I can- to what? Well, exactly! So you've chosen to stay somewhere that's better for you. It's not better for me. Well, it's making me ill, I'm not sleeping. Well, so you say you're ill, I think you call in ill, but I don't think you are. But I mean- <laughs> Are there any stats to prove that? Well, yeah, cause it, sure. you know, it'd be ele- of the eleven days that he calls in sick, I reckon yeah. probably seven of them are genuine. Oh, I'd love it if I drop down dead tonight. Honestly, I'd love it. <laughs> if you drop down dead tonight, you'd yeah. love it. Why are you sleeping? What, well, you're feeling ill now, are you? I That's know, funny, you weren't feeling ill earlier, but you read that and you're suddenly ill. I'm run down. Well, you should take holiday. Oh, oh yeah, you've just had about eight in the last six <laughs> months. Why are you run down? Why are you run down? Yeah, what have you done? You sit in a, a little air-conditioned office. I've got time to tell you. Let's move on. Let's <laughs> get on with stuff. What have we got anyway? Because we, uh, we didn't have a chance to meet up this week. Me and Ricky could have done, but you said you were busy, Steve, yeah, so yeah. that's probably why you don't get run down. But yeah. finishing work at about four o'clock. <laughs> no, so I, I could I could, I could have had the meeting, but uh, we gave you a time and you suddenly decided with very little notice that you couldn't make it. So we'll uh, make it meetings and that. Oh, oh. So what have we got then? What have we got? It's twenty past one. What have we got? We're on till three. Well, we've been talking. We've been doing well. We've been playing some great rock and roll. We've been playing some lovely songs. We've, we've told them, we've explained a survey just for employees. Be careful. Yeah. We've, you know, put that out there. We put a shout out there. People know you I mean, would you say, would you say it was probably safest if you are an employer to never employ Mancunians? Well, I wouldn't would that go that far. I wouldn't go that far fun? because, you see, that's only an average. So I imagine some Mancunians, like, you know, Londoners, uh, you know, are nice, um, reliable people. It's probably just a, a few bad eggs that m uh, throw the stats up sure. a little bit. You know, people that would go, I'm not coming in today, I'll put on some wet trousers. Sure. All right, stay in bed. Yeah. Stay in bed. Yeah. You still got them on? <laughs> yeah. Well, pop them off, <laughs> yeah. put them on the radiator and go to bed with a little duvet. <laughs> That'd be the best thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right, Carl? Yeah. What? What's your attitude? Is it because you're tired? Yeah. Well, why are you tired, though? You weren't saying that watching those Channel 5 films again, were you? <laughs> I'll tell you what, we were, me and Steve were having a little meeting yesterday over lunch about, you know, planning stuff for the show, and, uh, Gary Kemp came up to me, started having a little chat about old times, and, uh, I went, oh yeah, as he went away, Steve said, right, think of this, he said, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, remember that sentence, don't take this the wrong way, so there's a right way and a wrong way I could have taken this comment, he went, nodded to sort of Gary Kemp and went, he's aged better than you. I went, well how could I take that the wrong way? Yeah, it's uh, not offensive. No. Well the, the point is this, he, he does, because he didn't know me twenty years ago, so he's actually saying, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, he looks better than you do. Yeah, well he does. But why say that, Carl? What? Did you really say that? Yeah, although, can I just get, just backtracking for a second, I love the fact you said you bumped into Gary Kemp and you reminisced about old times. What old times did you share with Gary Kemp? Well no, Kemp? he came up and said, did we drop the pops together? And I went, no, I did razzmatazz. He said, oh, we did razzmatazz. I think he was thinking, had he ever met me before? But he, he, he hadn't, cause we hadn't, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And uh. But if you had to make an objective analysis, I, I wouldn't, I think that's out of order. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, you're always slagging me off, but apparently no, you, you no, can't no, do, well, you can't make a value judgment on something else. No. Wouldn't, wouldn't do <laughs> well, because you're, you know, you're morally all over the place. You don't know, you, you know, you don't know where you're coming or going. Yeah. I believe it. Sure. Yeah. You should hear what I say about you, behind your back. So, are you, would you say you're better looking now than you were? Or? <laughs> than I'm what? W would you say you're better looking now than you were? Than I was when? Well, like, like, you know, have you aged well? Yes. You've aged well. Yeah, I've kept my looks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Bit of Dando? Bit Evan Dando, this would be lovely, yeah. Radiohead, go to sleep. That's good, isn't it? On XFM 104.9. <laughs> Brilliant. No, great great DJ in there. Well, I haven't heard it before. Good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, it was good, it was very good, it was very good. Um, I was just watching, uh, cable TV, I do a lot of that, and, um, there's an advert I've noticed. It reminded me of, um, the sort of adverts you used to see when I was a kid. It's one of those attempts to kind of educate young people. But doing the it in the, Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's on MTV, but it's one of those things where it's clearly been made by people who are in their mid-forties. Who have never been cool. Who have never been cool. Yeah. Who've been working really hard to get into TV all yeah. their lives. And, uh, and now are trying to appeal to, you know, funky and possibly wayward young people. Yeah. And it's kind of- Nerdy wows. Yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, it's a kind of, uh, stunning model. 
and two of her stunning model friends. But they're just a couple of average girls, you know, sure. going about their business. And, you know, it says something like, um, and it's all shot very funkily, like a kind of, you know, lock, stock and two smoking barrels kind of thing. And, uh, it's a girl, and she's just grooving along with her friends. And it's yeah. kind of like, the, the captions are things like, you know, Isabella's 17. She's cool. She's quite funky. She's got these great friends. And they're sort of hanging out and laughing. And, uh, she just pops into a tattoo parlor. Sure. Why not? Her friends are like, what are you doing? But yeah. she just goes in, you know, she has a tattoo done. And it sort of says, she's wild. She's crazy. You know, she lives life as she sees it. She takes every day as it comes. She's not tight down or anything. Da -da 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 -da. She doesn't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if, just you think she's cool, cool. if you think she's cool, if you cool. think all this is cool, then then you probably won't want to seek cigarettes. Exactly. If you want to be cool, yeah, then like don't. Isabella or whatever. Except the is. thing with that is that people watching that, the 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 youth watching that will go, well. Bill at my school, he's, he smokes and he's cool. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is the problem with it. Yeah. It's, that it's not that the impulse is wrong. The, the message is fine. It's just this thing. I don't. I can't imagine those things ever working with you, with young people, no. with youths. It's like when you see when you know what was it? What, what it will is that you, you'll get a lot of thirteen and fourteen year olds sneaking out and getting a tattoo. <laughs> exactly. So the parents be going, I'd rather she smoke. Exactly. She might give that up yeah, sometimes. No, That's she's the got life. A, she's got a spider's web on her face now for the rest of her life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's off, It's like you remember, remember that thing when they tried to get pe young people to vote. Do you remember that? Was it Rock the Vote? Was it called oh, Rock the Vote? Was it? was it people like Billy Bragg and, yeah. and people kind of... Yeah. I just, I, I don't know who that appeals to. I don't know, you know, <laughs> some youth uh, is kind of smashing up a bus shelter, yeah. throwing bricks at old people. Goes, oh, Billy, 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 was that Billy Bragg? <laughs> Billy Bragg, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't, I don't believe it ever. I think it was Mick Hucknall was another one. <laughs> What's that, Mick? Oh, dear. Um, well, I, I remember the ones where you just, if, if you're, uh, if you're gonna go off with a stranger, your cat went, well, don't. Yeah. Ask mummy first. Yeah. And I remember, well, I, I was t t trying to jump in cars left, right and centre, but my cat, <laughs> exactly. when I was like five or six, would go, wow, 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 and yeah. I go, good point. Yeah. He, you're right, he could be a nutter. But I seem to remember the, the, the Charlie's, the Charlie says, it was Charlie says, wasn't it? Yeah. Charlie says. Charlie says. I always find them really unnerving. He lived in that really eerie kind of world where you never really well, saw anyone. Yeah, but it was yeah. very kind of, it was really eerie. It wasn't a very kind of comforting no, world. No, but they hadn't spent a lot of money on the cartoon, no. <laughs> they? No. But it was, I always got the sense with him that he was probably really quite lonely. But I, well, I like the fact is that, and that he had a cat and he was so talk. pleased, but well, by the time I came out, they'd gone off and I missed the picnic, but so Mummy was so pleased that I'd asked her, she gave me <laughs> an apple. No, I think And Charlie got something he liked, he gets a fish, yeah. right? I was thinking, an apple. No, I seem to remember it being that, um... I'll get an apple anyway, get me some <laughs> sweets. Yeah, or a tattoo. I always thought it was a con when your parents got you, um, some clothes you needed for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not falling for that. <laughs> exactly. I'd go, look, I'm getting the clothes anyway. But, I want battling tops. But the Charlie says, I seem to remember when, when they were, they asked him to go off for the picnic, by yeah. the time he'd asked mum because she was on the phone, yeah. I don't know who she was chatting to in the middle of the day, yeah. um, <laughs> the kids had gone, one of her, and I seem to remember- One of her clients. <laughs> exactly. I seem to remember, <laughs> I seem to remember that, he, he said, don't worry, it was fine because mum took him and Charlie on a picnic. Not as good. Who would rather go, uh, with your mates, <laughs> yeah. or with your mum on a picnic? And your cat. And your cat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, I don't oh, think they were man, friends. This Scotch egg sinks a fish, well I had to bring it for Charlie. Don't don't bring raw fish in the picnic basket. Well, I think he's, those, they weren't friends of his, they were just local kids who go, let's go and, let's go and ask that weirdo with the cat <laughs> if he wants to come down the park. Let's go and ask the weirdo who thinks the cat can <laughs> talk, can talk yeah. and then run away when he goes <laughs> to ask his mum. When he goes off to ask his mum, they're just going, yeah, oh, yeah. ask your mum, yeah. ask your mum. Yeah. Hello, hiya. Alright, we're the local lads, the cool local lads. We smoke, we got tattoos. Um, do you want to come and play with some puppies in the disused mine? Um, sh ask your mum first. <laughs> yeah. Quick run. Exactly. Look, he's talking to the cat. Look, he's talking <laughs> to the cat. <laughs> they were just round the corner spying on him. <laughs> yeah. They were just laughing. There was no picnic. <laughs> Did you ever go on a picnic, Carl? It was, was there places to go in Manchester or was it like yeah. quarry land mostly? Uh, the problem with those, uh, <laughs> those adverts. Like when I was growing up, they'd sort of give you ideas, because remember the Charlie's one, yeah. right, and we were on holiday, <laughs> right, and I met these two lads who were uh, knocking about with like mates and that, <laughs> and that advert came on, and we thought it'd be a good idea to wind his mam up, because this advert had just been on saying, you know, kids are going missing in Wales, right? Yeah. So we said, oh, this will be a good laugh. We put the kid in the wardrobe, his mam came back from shopping, we said, oh, he's gone missing, we haven't seen him for hours. That's terrifying. I know. That's How old you? How old were you? About thirteen. And what was his mum? She must have been, she, she was, yeah. Yeah, she was going mad and that's when we thought, oh god, we've, we've gone, will we say anything? Will we pretend we don't know where he is? Oh, in the wardrobe, yeah. he'd suffocated. Yeah. That's yeah. horrible, Carl. I know, but Such it's a just what thing. you do, isn't it? It's just what you do. Well, no, you do. What do you mean? It's just well, what you do. I, what was it? Was he in the wardrobe? Was he listening to this? Why didn't he go, mum, it's alright, when he heard her crying? 
No, she wasn't crying, she was just panicking and like yeah. screaming a little bit and that. Uh, <laughs> screaming a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, we'll tell her when the screaming starts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And then, uh, what's the other thing, like, uh, on the same, like, you know, the, all this was going on when I was growing up and, um, one time we're on holiday <laughs> and my mum said, right, if you're going on the beach, it's a big beach, um, but, you know, if you're gonna go out and play there, I need to know where you are. So where are these the bells? Going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, where this cowbell, <laughs> you know? She yeah. gave me a balloon. Good she gave idea. Me a balloon. A balloon. And it just, uh, you know, sort of attached to my arm, so wherever I was playing in the sea and that, you can see the balloon and that. Brilliant. Uh, but then the problem was, <laughs> everyone else thought that's a good idea. Oh. And it was just like loads of kids with balloons and that. Oh, I ruined it. So that, that didn't work. Yeah. That's a been that. Sure. Not idea. <laughs> when, didn't, weren't you in a car park once? Oh no, I, it was New Year, and uh, it, we were all gathering up. You know, like in Trafalgar Square at New Year, everyone gathers and they have a big kind of party and stuff. Well, in Bristol, they do something very similar on a <clears throat> smaller scale. And I was there one New Year's with my friends, and uh, I was I, for some reason I picked up a balloon during the evening. You know, I don't know where I got it from, but I was holding this balloon, and these girls came up to me, and I thought, yeah, nice, nice. You know, maybe a little New Year kiss. <laughs> they came up, they said, uh, hey. Are you going to be here for uh, for a while? And I said, "Well, yeah, you know, probably will." They said, "It's just that we've arranged to meet back at you <laughs> at midnight." <laughs> I, so what do you tall. mean? Because I was so tall, I had a balloon. <laughs> I was towering above everyone else. They said, "I said, I, I said what?" I said, "We're going to meet back at you <laughs> at midnight." This, this is. They said, "Don't worry, you can go about your business because we can see you wherever you are." This is where Nelson's column is. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> no, this is in Bristol. Oh right, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, oh, so I'm sort of wandering around, and then at midnight, they, they, th th these two girls turn up again, and some of their, these lads come and meet them, and, uh, they're sort of laughing and joking, and I'm thinking, oh, they're probably gonna invite me back to a party. I watched them get in a cab. They went off, they had a wild night. Um, but then I did have a balloon, so it was a great new year for me. <laughs> I did have a balloon! Oh! Do you have a little bit of, uh, a bit of Tupac? Uh, yeah, if you want, yeah. yeah. A There's a great lyric in this. It's, it's, uh, picture me rolling, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end, he starts <laughs> saying about, um, uh, look at me now, I've, I'm, you know, drinking Remy and I'm in a Rolls Royce. And he goes, oh yeah, I forgot the DA. Can she see me from here? <laughs> Can you see me ho? And I think that this is like district attorney turning on the radio and two back, yeah. going around going, can that ho see me? She's going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see you. Yeah. It's brilliant. Two pack. I'll tell you what, we should get rolling. <laughs> Rockbusters. No. All right. No. Well, he has done it. He just said that he was worried about it because we said it's the last one. What do you think, Carl? I just don't think. We, I mean, can I just say now, oh, Carl? Seriously, I'm only responding to what we're getting on the email, which is people do not want Rockbusters. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They really. There's one guy here who is. He says um, it's James Pooley. He says he's preempted Carl by giving my answers to this week's quiz. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the clue would be, but his answer is no van ear. Nirvana. Yeah, good. Nirvana, yeah. Uh, that would be, be, sounds like one. Number two, he's just guessed. He's probably, I don't know, again, what the clue would be, but the answer is Kid Creosote. Yeah, that's good. That's that a typical one. That's, that is brilliant. That's a better game. And the last one is Harry Seacum. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. So, I mean, maybe we should reverse it so people the, just, <laughs> then, and, you know. And we have to come up with a, yeah. with a, with a clue for them. You and, we, we, and we win the prizes. Yeah. Did you even, have you got prizes ready as well? It's all there, but... Oh, I feel sorry for him now. Read what the prizes would have been. I'd rather just give them away to the first person to email in, frankly, <laughs> than have to go through the torrent of Oh, God! Look at Carl's face! I wish you could... Oh, can't we get this on telly just for Carl's face? Which, what... Hey, I'll tell you what we could do, Steve. Uh-huh. You know, like Smiley Miley and that used to take the Radio 1 Roadshow out? Oh, man, that would be amazing. Come on. Should we take it out? Hello, Bournemouth! Yeah, how many miles have I done? Don't care. No, <laughs> exactly. should we do this? How many miles have we done? Well, X of down the road. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> should we take it out the road just so they can see Carl Pilkington? To be fair though, I mean, you're not really keen to leave W1, are you? Well, would, we wouldn't. Right, so where where exactly would we take the road show? We'd Into do it outside. Outside the building? Yeah. Right, okay. And what it's, would we do? It's called a road show because it's in the road, and I imagine, right. isn't it? And we'd give away t-shirts? Throw away, throw in t-shirts, and then we'd have a Any band. We'd have, well, we'd have, um, band playing. What was that band playing tonight? Uh, um, I forget, something diesel, was it? Yeah. Is it instantly forgettable? I mean, that was my <laughs> point, really. <laughs> we could have them on. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'd get a couple of celebrity pals down. Someone from, uh, Big Brother 2. <laughs> that would be ideal. Well, uh, Josh, that other, the other little gay fella. <laughs> yeah. He'd come on, just wave. Yeah. I'm beginning to like the idea. Yeah. It'd be brilliant, yeah. So we'll have Josh, something diesel, we're playing the Bull and Gates now, whatever <laughs> exactly, it is. Yeah. Right, we'll throw out some t-shirts. 
Yeah. And then, uh, Carl, Carl will do a live Rockbusters? Yeah? Well, I don't know, do you want it? Um, I, th I just think that ruins it slightly. It would just bring the whole afternoon down, Rick, I think. We'd get it sponsored by someone. Yeah? Uh, no? Well, I'm just trying to no, sure, inject yeah. a bit of- read the prices, what they would've done. There's a- there's a PlayStation game here. Uh, oh. I guess it's maybe not been released yet, it's a little demo of that. Uh, what's this? The American Song Poem Anthology, I don't exactly know what that is again, but lots of songs on there and a couple of compilations, arbitrary compilations, the Club Anthems compilation, the best summer holiday album ever. Wow. Well, oh, there you it is again. You certainly sold it to me, Steve. The best air guitar album again. Brilliant. And an old edition of Only Fools and Horses. So, that's you really haven't put the effort into the prizes, Carl. So if that's the prizes, if that's the whole point of the- Competition, and they're the best prizes you could conjure up. In God's name, how bad are the clues this week? That's why he doesn't want you to do it, Carl. All right, we won't, we won't bother. We got it. Doesn't matter. Good. Excellent. Well, that's resolved. Brilliant. That's excellent. So um, what, what we have got though is educating Ricky, haven't we? Well, another one of my little things. Oh, it's brilliant then. So how long's this gonna last before you wanna get ditched this? Well, we'll see. A couple of weeks. It's not like that, Carl. It's all one. It's all we are- it's one love, man. We're on the same team, man. Yeah, we're just one voice, man. One true voice. Like those- like those lads. Yeah. They could play. Right, well, the, the Educating Ricky, <laughs> They right? could play. Well, let, uh, why don't we play a record and come back with Educating Ricky? The Ricky's. Wind, Cat Stevens. We need to- we need to get the, uh, Beautiful jingle song. queued up as well. Yeah, I'll get the jingle queued up, no, yeah. No, I haven't got Neil Young lined up yet. No, not Neil Young, Cat Stevens, I, I gave it to I, you. I, I, no, I, I, no, we're not playing that yet. Can we just play well, a record? No, well, I told you to. Well, I it's told you to. It. See, what, what, is, what, what, so why aren't you playing the record I told you to play? Because we've just had something chilled, right, from Tupac. Let's lift it up a bit now with a bit, little bit of a blur. Right? Come mm. on, play it. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just have. <laughs> Crazy beat for on XFM 104.9. Right, we're gonna, uh, do Educating Ricky instead of Rockbusters. Incidentally, I on the subject of Rockbusters, we just an email from Phil. He says, I could do with this week's rather shoddy array of prizes, as I'm doing a car boot sale tomorrow <laughs> and need a bit more tact to fill the table. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll send, well, send we, might, we might as well do it anyway. Yeah. But Educating Ricky, uh, it was a feature. Well, actually, um, about a year ago, I started a feature called Educating Carl because we found out he had one E at O level at history. Uh, and uh, I'd educate him on things like Rasputin, um, things that I thought he'd be interested in, you know, Winston Churchill, some of the greats, some scientific facts. And uh, then I said, it's your turn. And he started telling me about people born without legs, uh, some people have got a funny eye, there's a woman whose tongue's longer than her arm, and, uh, really, you know, turning the screw on education. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know what he's got for me today. Maybe a dog born a cat. <laughs> Let's have a look. We've done that one, we've done that. <laughs> uh, is there, is there, cause some, often, we should point out, there's sometimes a crossover between Educating Ricky and F Cheeky Freak of the Week, yeah. just in terms of subject matter. Yeah, so, uh, uh, we've done Cheeky Freak of the Week, we've done all the freaks, what have we done with the freak week? There's a, uh, what well, was a dog? There was a woman that had the back legs of a dog. There was, last week, there was, what was last week? It was the, um, it was the, it was the girl who was born with four eyes, two mouths and three legs. Sure. You weren't that impressed. I thought, if we've got to that and it's not impressing you. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, we are a tough that. audience, let's, let's, admit. let's move on. Um, is there yeah. a jingle for, uh, Educating Ricky? Educating Ricky, oh, um, oh god. Oh, um, oh, you've told me, educating Ricky. Oh. Very similar to some of the other jingles I've done. Yeah. Well, they're made by the same people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, okay, well, uh, one? it's just, I mean, educating Ricky is just stuff that I learn in the week and I think that's interesting. I keep it up here and then I share it with you, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, one of them, right? You know, mm. uh, Mount Everest. <laughs> Go on. I need, uh, I need more. <laughs> right, well, there's a problem. Yeah. Because people are, are leaving rubbish up there and that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, people, whoever owns it is saying, oh, I'm gonna- Whoever owns it! He's saying, forget this. They're leaving a mess and all that. But do you know why it's called Mount Sorry, Everest? Sorry, what was that? That's one, is it? That's one. There's rubbish on Mount Everest. No, How many people go up there? I know Are we talking about people dumping old tellies who's, and watching who's, who's fed up? The Yeti? What, I mean, what are you talking about? No, I, I mean, that, that isn't what I'm educating you. I'm just telling- this is part of the story, I'm just telling you. It's just a bit of context for you. Like, they li they're leaving loads of rubbish up there. Well, they're not leaving loads of rubbish up there, are they? No, they are. They're apparently- Not like trams ones. and washing machines and seagulls flying everywhere. I don't know. 
Anyway. I don't know. But anyway, do you know why it's called that? Do you know why it's called Mount Everest? Why well, it's called Mount Everest? I know the mount bit. It's because <laughs> it's a large mount and if you climb it, by the time you get to the top, you need to have a rest. And that is- that isn't the educating bit. I'm just telling well, it's you. it's not true. Well, we'll- we'll leave that. Well, right. no. Carl, in the name of everything holy, do you think that anyone named it because you have to have a rest when you've climbed it? Well, we'll see. We'll see what people say on email. But well, that, it's definitely not. But anyway, that that's one thing that, that I kind of thought that's interesting. I'll remember that. I'll teach Ricky that so you've learnt that. <laughs> right, now, are you familiar with, uh, the- this thing that they can do if you're dead, right? <laughs> no, no, not if you're dead. It's <laughs> like if you're ill and you know you're gonna die, yeah. right? I don't know what this is any anymore. Extraordinary. Have a rest. Extraordinary. Himalayas. Him Himalaya. <laughs> what, what, what? Uh, Listen, this is an interesting fact, come on. If so, if you're ill but you know you're gonna die. Yeah, you can have this thing done in Detroit where you get put in a fridge. Right. And, uh, if they work out, you know, what's wrong with you in twenty years time, you go, right, that fella is in the fridge, he, he had that, we can sort it, let's get him out. And, uh, they sort you out. That's yeah. Uh, is this the first time you've come across this idea? Yeah, I read it the other day. I didn't, I didn't know. You've about never it. heard of this before. It's so quite, it's quite quite genetically preserved. It's good, isn't it? They take, they they take, they make, they put you at sort of like sub-zero temperatures, so stop all cellular activity. So does do you, do you stop aging at that point? Yeah, you mm -hmm. it's suspended animation. So. Well, what's the, what's the law on it, right? Because say if I, say if I add something, right? Yeah. And, uh, I said, oh, put me in a fridge and, and when, when you've got the cure and that, wheel me out and sort me out. Say if they did that. Yeah. And it was like 40 years. Yeah. And in 40 years time they, they, they get a cure for me. Yeah. Would, would I have to stay with Suzanne? Because <laughs> she'd be 70. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean what are the rules? You can should you be allowed to <laughs> date a younger woman? Well, it's, it's not fair, is it? Or it's like good no, news, good no. news, sort you out. But I don't think she's mine. Mind. Mind. She, she, she'd have the best forty years of her life. Yeah, <laughs> and plus they're never going to find a cure for what ails you. <laughs> that is genius. That is brilliant. You come out, you're cured, and you go, oh no. I love the fact that's what he'd be lying there. If, <laughs> if you can think while he's in that state, you'd be thinking, oh god. She's losing her looks. Yeah. Just, oh dear. But, but everything else as well, like, my job wouldn't, wouldn't be here. No. No. Um. Although the figures would have gone up, uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, flat's probably gone or knocked down or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Most of my family would be dead. Yep. So what's the point? What, 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 how do you know about it? Who's done it? Because, well, famously Walt Disney, apparently. I mean, Walt Disney actually did die, but had his body preserved so that should they one day be able to bring back people <laughs> from, <laughs> from the dead, dead, they need, they need yeah, Walt Disney. Think, hang on, who do, yeah, we, who but, do we have? But with him, nothing is gonna change, because when he comes out, Mickey Mouse will still look the same. Sure. And plug and all that. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Play a record! Play. I, don't, I don't know where you mind this! Play a record! <laughs> It's brilliant, you just say words! <laughs> it's the Aberette! <laughs> 50 Cent. In the club, on XFM 104.9. So, uh, Carl's a little bit fed up today. Actually whinging. I mean, properly whinging. Fed up. Reckons he's tired. Reckons he's overworked here. But, do you know what I mean, Carl? Everyone gets tired. Everyone gets tired. Everyone does the same sort of hours to you. What do you do? Sort of nine till six, seven? Uh, about nine till half seven, eight. Well, no, cos I've- mm, a couple of times this week I've sort of met you for a drink about six. So, it's funny, isn't it? That's yeah, weird. I've, some of the times I've come back after it, just for another forty minutes or something whilst no one's around, try and get stuff done without phones going, without emails coming in. Yeah, we gotta do- I, I, Can I tell you what I think's a disappointment? Yeah, there's a department. You gotta do it. I just think it's a disappointment that Carl hasn't been able to put that aside and rise to the occasion. He's only got to do this show once a week. It's I know. Hours. It's I mean, no one's here. We're tired. We've, 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 we've got, got a, 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 you've got one job. We've got about six. And we're still doing it. Do you know what I mean? We still do it. We still Well, you're a professional, Rick. I mean, that's why you've won multiple awards, is because you're willing to go up there. Even if you're feeling a little bit under the weather, even if you hurt yourself, mm -hmm. you've got an injury of some kind. Yeah. You're, there, you're doing it. You're, yeah. you're entertaining. You're providing yeah. a service. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's a disappointment. Yeah, but I've pressed all the right buttons at yeah. the right time. Indeed. Right? 
That's what I get paid for, yeah. 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 Done that, the adverts have gone out, sure. you know what I mean? I've yeah. made your cups of tea. It's the negativity which is a problem, it's the vibe, you're bringing bring the us room down. Bringing us down. And, the, and bring therefore down. the listeners. Therefore the listeners, bringing us down. If you don't like London, you know what to do. Mm. Well, well. I'm trying, I'm trying to get out of here, aren't I? Try to, we try just bought a new out. flat. That's not, that's, that's not the best matter. way. Buy a flat in Manchester, live there. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, I can always yes. rent it out and make a little bit of money. W w why don't you sell the flat in London <laughs> and buy um, a street in Manchester. Pilkington <laughs> 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 Avenue. Really, you can literally have <laughs> the yeah. Lord, the king of that street. <laughs> <laughs> people could, and people could come to you like Solomon with their problems. <laughs> yeah. No. He's come up from London. He, he's got London ways. Now, so interestingly, do, have you heard, you, do you remember the famous King Solomon story? That, uh, there are two women, they're arguing both over. arguing over whose baby it is. And they present this to them, they say, this is, this is my baby, and the other one goes, no, this is my baby. So, so one, he knows one of them's lying, but he doesn't know which one. And so, uh, and so what does he do? How does he, how does King Solomon solve that? How does he figure out whose baby it is? How, well, first of all, what would you do? They're both white fellas, yeah? Both what? White, white fellas. So one's women, two women. Right, it's a, two white well, women. To be probably, they probably weren't, you know, completely white. <laughs> Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're of the same <laughs> ethnicity. No, well, I'm just working out, working out. Right, all right, then. So, that's yeah. all. all right. And don't think about what King Solomon would necessarily do. Yeah, it wasn't that, it, was, it wasn't that easy. No, it's not, there's not one tall, skinny white one with big ears and so is the baby, the other one's a little short Chinese bloke. <laughs> yeah. It's two women for a start. Yeah. Two women, okay. The baby to look at could be either, he doesn't know which, but he knows one of them's lying, obviously. And, and is the one line saying it's hers or saying it's not hers? Right, okay, uh, this isn't worth it, Steve. I'm gonna tell you what he said, and you tell me if you think it was good or not. He says, well, then what we do is, as King, so what we do is, I'll take a sword, I'll cut the baby into two, and you can have half each. And one of the women says, no, don't do that. And one of them says, yeah, that's fair. Right. Do you see? I uh, saw so which one was it? Who's, Sorry? Who's? What? Well, no, my guess is the one that didn't want it done probably was the mother of the child. The one that didn't mind having the baby cut in half probably wasn't a mother of the child. Why don't you think, you bald little mank twat, play a record? Well, I'm just, uh, oh, right. Although, it's not a very good solution. No. I, that, that doesn't have I think the, woman the woman who was lying could have come up with something better than, yeah, cut it in half. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. you should have done is, yeah, I'll give it to the other one as well. Yeah. Jaded from Aerosmith on XFM 104.9. Just trying to pep things See, up. See, Steiner, you're up. You're yeah. up there. I mean, we've got lots of work to do. We're filming too. We've got loads of things, admin, DVDs, everything like that. We come in here. This is poxy. This is, this is, this is not a drop in the ocean, the sort of work and money we earn. <laughs> right, really? If we do this to keep charitable status. Because, and yet you, you know, Carl, come on. What's the matter with you? Are we doing Rockbusters? Yeah, I'll tell you what. what no, come on, Rick. I'll tell you what. Because it's your special day and I want yeah. you to have a great time today. Yeah. We're going to do Rockbusters if just you. If you cheer up. If you cheer up. Miserable. It just got ratty then. Go, no, don't push it on me, head. Don't put it on me, head. Right, what were you trying to put on me, head? I was trying to put a pair on your head to knock it off with a ball, like William Tao, but it was, th your, because your head is so round and the pair was round, I tried to flatten it a little bit and I didn't know it was a juicy pair. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought it'd be like a, just to crush it a little bit, and then he went mental because he had juice rubbing, running down his face. Oh. Why is it my fault? The pear's a faulty for pear. Exactly. Get proper fruit in here. It worked with the apple. That was fine. And then he gets ratty with me. Okay, let's not waste any time with Rockbusters. Can we really, let's whip through just it. Whip no through it. Just do the clues, so quickly. Quick, go, Rockbusters. Right, go. go. Right, the first clue. Yeah, yes. hurry up, faster. All the police cars are on fire. All the police cars are on fire. What's the uh, initials? BS. BS. All the police cars are on fire. Good. What's the next one? The director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah, okay. What's the, uh, the initials for that? DB. Right, okay. Okay, yeah. Right, go on then. He wants to be a sailor. Why is that? Yeah, well, um, what's the initials there? B. Brilliant. Okay. Give them again quickly, because I didn't quite catch the second one, so but go from the top. Mm. All the police cars are on fire. Yeah, it's B BS. BS. Yeah. The director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah, okay. DB. Yeah. Right? He wants to be a sailor. Why is that? Yeah. B. B. Okay, then brilliant. Okay, now Carl, you gonna cheer up now? Yeah. Email only, Ricky Gervais at virgin.co.net. <laughs> Radio yeah. 1, Roadshow, <laughs> Smiley Miley. <laughs>
smiley mileys mileage game. If anyone remembers that, I mean, here's a man, right, who, who, whose job, smiley <laughs> miley was not a DJ, let me forget. Smiley miley was the guy that organised the vans that carried the equipment to and from the road shows. <laughs> because he was such a crazy personality. Because he smiled a little bit, <laughs> exactly. he got recognition, Carl. Longevity, lots of money, and lives where he wants to live. The town that he wants to live in. Why don't you just enjoy the town that you've chosen to live in, because it's so good? London. Where, what towns have you been to? Have you, have you travelled at all? I've been about a bit, yeah. Right, okay, then. What towns did you like? Okay, forget Manchester. We've, that's safe. You like Manchester. Well, I'll do the big three. Shouting. London, New York, Paris. Okay, you don't like London, even though you live here. Got flats here. Good. Excellent. That makes sense. Have you been to New York? Yeah. What do you think? It's, my, it's an amazing didn't, city, didn't isn't like it? it. It's, it's, it's just noisy. It's yeah. smelly. Right, it's the city that never sleeps. Um, I'm not surprised with all the, all the racket and that. <laughs> <laughs> Paris, the city uh, of love, the most romantic city in the world. Not really. I remember seeing an old woman in McDonald's in there and it put, it put me off. That's where, where that thing happened, where the what? old woman was. What did you say? Tell us. We talked about it before, the old woman in McDonald's. Yeah, what she happened? Was, she was sat in the corner there with her legs open, no knickers on, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Did well, that's that put, that's did, Paris. Did that put you off your cheeseburger? Next city, where, where next? Uh, have you been to, uh, I don't know, uh, oh, the most beautiful city, Venice? Yeah, I've been there, yeah. It's good? No. Why? <laughs> cause, cause they, they sell it, they sell it to you as if it is a romantic city. Where did you see it? Sold? No, I saw, I saw it on, uh, when I was growing up, right? Remember 321 with Ted Rogers? <laughs> yeah, of course. Right, he used to one of the star prizes on there. Right. And he'd say, let's show you the video, let's see what you're going to, let's see where you're going to be loving yeah. it for a couple of weeks. And he'd show you this scene yeah. of, like, the gondolas. Yeah. And all the, it, all, all the city lit up at night. Yeah. Like yeah. a man and woman sat on a boat, loving yeah. it and stuff. Yeah. I went there, bin bags everywhere. <laughs> Oh, it's a mess. Play a record. It's London. That 40. is Wish You Were Here with Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> it's London flooded. <laughs> Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Stop. On XFM. Carl's back. He's cheering up a little bit. Because, uh, he's, I think he's vented his spleen a little bit on, um, cities around the world that aren't as good as Manchester. So, uh... Has any of your family left in Manchester? Because they all moved away, didn't they? You came here. Your dad's moved to Wales, for Christ's sake. Well, your family are all around the... Brother joined the army to get anywhere. Just take me anywhere. I don't know where he is. His sister's moved away, so no Ireland. one... Ireland, yeah. Yeah, there oh, you go, no. you see? So, that's just one family. <laughs> that's just... That's, that's one family who love Manchester. <laughs> exactly. All right? <laughs> Tell you what, Steve. Go on. I did find out in the week. Yeah. Uh, world record, mm. right? Uh, person with the longest trump. With the longest what? Wind. Fart. Right. Right? <laughs> two minutes forty-two is the world record. Okay. Right? Well, I'm immediately thinking about a relative of yours, who I'm sure did longer than who that. Who still lives in Manchester. Auntie Nora. Now, Auntie Nora did it for five minutes, wasn't it? Reportedly, star fight for five minutes. But, unfortunately, she was the only person in the room, where, whereas I think, which one's alive, Ross or Norris McWhorter? Uh, I don't know, actually. He has to be there. Yeah, I think he actually, actually has to he'd be He'd have to be there. Would you want to be there? <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have sort of equipment, and looking at his watch, going, finish, you go, yeah, he goes, well, that was four minutes, Did she go from, seconds. like, a size ten to a size six? <laughs> she just, Did she like, show some old dresses? Like, a, ho like a hovercraft. Exactly. In a, a big dress. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. slightly off. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it has to be invigilated. But again, you know, how was the world, Guinness Book of World Records one invigilated? I mean, who, who was supervising that? Who he said, he said, that? I can fart for two minutes. They went, well, we've got to see this. Went round. And, uh, he just probably let it rip. It's probably circular breathing. He's probably <laughs> sort of sucking in air and swallowing it as he's going. And it's a continuous one, isn't it? It's not like... Yeah. yeah. I mean, it said, you know, that's, that's how Nora's happened, me auntie Nora. <laughs> she had a little bit of wind. It went on for like two and a half minutes. Sure. That's, that's when she called me ma'am. <laughs> As it was still going on. And said, uh, there's something not right here. And, I'm leaking. Uh, she, she said, oh, can you send, uh, your dad round? You know, my dad. Yeah. Sent to me ma'am. With a cork. And, uh... <laughs> With a lighter. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think this would be the best one I ever. I want to show the kids something. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll be there in a bit, get the windows open. <laughs> But what uh, it was down to, because I was talking to him about it. Is she the one with the split tennis ball? 
Yeah. Can we not talk about that again? I was, I was talking to my <laughs> mum and dad about it, saying, you know, why, why do you think it happened and that? And it's because she, she never chucks food away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And she'll sort of mash it all up, mm -hmm. and she's got all these ice cream tubs in the fridge that are just full Cabbage of, like, water. old, mashed-up food. Really? And she prepares everything, right? She doesn't work, she's retired now, she's got nothing to do all day, but everything's got to be ready she's for her. She's still causing well, sick. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Everything's got to be done, even though, it, if you're going round to her house and you're going there for tea, it's like, what time are you coming? And it's like, well, I don't know, maybe five, maybe six. Yeah, yeah well, you're no, late, I, I need you're to late know, when you have to meet us at five or six. Do you know what I mean? That's what so, I'm so, so, when you say she mashes up food, she literally takes the remnants of a dinner, could be sort of some- Anything. And just smashes it all up into a- yeah. And then what does she do with it? He, Put it in the fridge, and she's got it in the fridge, it's like January, February, March, she's got all these ice cream boxes that are just full of- But she doesn't- she reheats it and eats oh, it. Oh, then, then she, yeah, puts I it in the pan. I she's keeping it as a no, souvenir no, 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 no. of each meal she'd have. No, put it in a pan, warm it up. Oh, that's And that's, that's what it is, it's just- A lot of vegetation, is it? Yeah. Why has it only happened once, or does she save it up once a year, just let it go? I, I don't know, I don't know. Well, well, she is mad, she's- Yeah, she sounds potty. She, she doesn't answer the phone anymore in case she's a burglar, checking if she's in. <laughs> it's like, we'll answer it and then they'll know you are in and they won't come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mental. Well, they, Mental. Ha they can't be sure then, can they? What do you mean? Well, if there's no, well, okay, well maybe it's someone just, they are in but they're hiding, whereas if Auntie Nora goes, it's Auntie Nora, we can nick, she'll be farting. <laughs> we can sneak in when she does a loud one. <laughs> Because <laughs> she'd be, we'd be aware of the telly, what's, what's stopping it? It's got a valance around it, it's got, it's got caught on the cat. So, have we got a recap on Rockbusters? And no, just do, has anyone got the right answers? Uh, I've, Has so anyone far, got the right answers? Let me just check here. Uh, here's one from, uh, from someone who just says, uh, he's given an answer, uh, answer to number one, I, number two, don't, number three, care. Right, okay, is he close? Has anyone got three answers? I can't find one with three answers. So, again, you've done something wrong, Carl. No, da, 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 no. This sorry, isn't radio, this isn't radio, play a record. There you, there you go, someone's got it. Give it to them. Fine, okay, give us the clues again, we'll give the answers straight yeah. away. No funny in the rain. Yeah, right. it's really pointless. Number one, all, yeah. the, all the police cars are on fire. BS. BS. Yeah, what was that? I can think of something. Go on. Blazing Squad. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Uh, the director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah. That's Dan Yell Beddingfield, right? <laughs> Dan Yell, Dan Yell Beddingfield. Right, we're never letting him do this again. I told you I washed my hands of it. I know, but Why I just thought- Why'd you let him? Why'd you- Because he was grumpy. But this is what happens, look what's happened. Dan Yell Beddingfield, that's what's- that's the- that's- that's what happened. The director of, so, so, Danny Boy, so Dan, right, it, all that for Dan, but shouting about being, Dan, yell, bed in the field, right? What's the last one? He wants to be a sailor, why is that? Yeah. Beyonce. What does that mean? Beyonce. He wants Beyonce. to be on the sea. Play record. You're like, never doing it again. You've I just signed your death warrant. What have we done? You're never doing Rockbusters again. And if Monkey News about that, we ban that as well. We've And we're serious it. this time. So Joe in Catford. <laughs> stuff off to you. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe what we've done. He's doing the shout out. Who you want? Well done, Matt. What have we done, Rick? What have we done? There's a little sailor fella. He wants to, you know, join the Navy. Why? <laughs> Beyonce. Beyonce. Knowles. Is his surname? <laughs> yeah. Midshipman Knowles. Now, Carl, we're going to do another edition, I think, of Wish You Were Here, because that really cheered you up, didn't it? Um, where else you been? Where else you been? Have you been, um, you've been around Europe, haven't you? You've been to any hot country? You've been to Greece? Greece. Uh, uh Turkey. Done Turkey, yeah. Yeah. Been to Turkey. Uh, little fellas. Little midgets working in the canteen in the hotel I was in. <laughs> okay. Hassling <laughs> Suzanne as well. <laughs> okay. Have you, uh, have you been to, uh, have you been to Scotland? Uh, once. For the, uh, for the Edinburgh Festival. Go on. Um, that's where I looked out in my hotel room, <laughs> saw a traffic warden putting a, a ticket on some bin bags. Brilliant. Because they'd gone into the road. So that's, uh, that's, that's Turkey, Scotland. Uh, what about places, uh, here? Has he been to, have you been to the West Country? Where we, where have you been to my neck of the woods, Bristol? Uh, I haven't been around, what else is around there? Bath? Been to Bath, yeah. Yeah, what do you make of it? Uh, once you've been, well, they don't need to go again. Cause it's sort of old and they don't, they don't change anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know I mean? That'd be so the Roman thing? spa yeah, he's talking yeah. about, right. I think. Yeah. What about, um, uh, Brighton? Uh, mm, not gay people. 
Right, okay, thank you. Uh, next week on Wish You Were Here, uh, we'll go to some other places where there are gay people. Fascinating. And Brilliant. And another extraordinary insight there. Uh, Carl, could we have some monkey news? Well, just before we do monkey news, right, can I do a little, uh, psychological test on you? On me? Yeah. Okay. It's brilliant, though. Someone emailed it in. Brilliant. Right. Little story with a mm. question at the end. Okay. Right? Right. Oh, this, this is gonna be so is... annoying. No, 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 it's not, honestly. It's... Well, it is, cos you're gonna think it's science and it's gonna be trite. All right. well... Go on. Right. Little, little story first, right? There's this funeral, right? And this girl was at a funeral. Same funeral? Yeah. Right. It, it was a mother's funeral. Oh, yeah. Right? She met this fella who she didn't know, right? But she thought this fellow she met was amazing. She didn't know him, right? But she thought he was brilliant, right? Like a dream fella. Right. And she fell in love with him, right? But never asked for his, his number, his phone number. Right. right. And she couldn't find him. Now, a few days later, the girl killed her own sister. Right? Yes. The question is, why did she do that? Okay, well it's one of those stupid things then, isn't it? <sighs> so it's not logic, it's, it's, it's what am I thinking? No, no it's not, so it's, it's a proper, so it's, it's a so proper it's mental logic. test. It's a it's proper a, mental test. A mental test? It does, it is a bit mental. So, so you understand the story, uh, yeah? I kind of, let me just get it right. So there's a funeral, a girl goes to the funeral of her mother. Yeah. Um, she, she meets the guy, or she, she, she meets, meets the guy at the funeral. She, she meets, meets the bloke. She's all, he looks all right. I fancy a bit of that. Right. right. Has a chat with him. Yeah. But doesn't get his name, doesn't get a phone number or anything. So, so, so to cut a long story short, the things are asked, right, so, so the reason she kills her own sister, is this something to do with finding out something about the man she met? Well, I, just answer the thing. Just, why do you, why do you- Oh, okay then. Um, I'll answer it then. Um, she went mental. She, he was a spy called Derek. What do you mean just answer it? Anyway, I'm testing Steve. Right, well she killed her own sister because, uh, her sister, um, had stolen some money from her. And was sleeping with her husband. Is that, is that it? Well, well I, I don't know, Carl, I don't know. It's an answer. It's an answer. answer. What's, what's, what's the answer on the paper? <laughs> <sighs> so, well, come on, what come is- Come on! Well, the, the answer is- No, an answer is- <laughs> That she was hoping that the guy would appear at the funeral again. He'd, he'd go <laughs> to the funeral. Right, that's not a proper psychological test. It is, it's, it's one of those it. stupid little shitty things. It says it's it. like a man goes into a field and dies. Why? His parachute didn't open. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm surprised you'd learn anything. Oh, uh, I love I'm that. Romeo and anything. Juliet. Oh, Juliet's a fish. He said she was hoping that the guy would appear again at the funeral. If you answered this correctly, you think like a psychopath. This was a test by a famous fella, right? Who used it on killers, and most of the killers got the answer right. Did you also well, think that? Was that the answer you gave when you no, first read it? No, I didn't know, I didn't know. But I, I wondered what you would have got. Good, yeah, so that's proof that I'm not a psychopath. Yeah, but that, that's the point, but it's a, it's, a, it's a psychological test for looking at something very, very specific. What's up with that? Well, what, what was the best that could happen? That he'd got it right so he is a psychopath? What annoys me is you're not happy with that, 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 that test, but before you wasted three minutes trying to balance a pair on my head. <laughs> What, what were you getting out of that? Let's play a song and have some money. Oh. Oh. Joe Jackson, is she really going out with him on XFM? Right, it's the time that most people I imagine have been waiting for. Monkey news. Play the jingle. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. Um, Come on. Come on! It should be ready, Carl. Uh, that's amazing, isn't it? It's the, like, uh, Nicholas Witchell. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, ooh, the bomb. No, what, no, that's not the first. Um, come on! No, it's always difficult, isn't it, to, to sort of find something that's good each week, right? Last week, we did the chimps. It is for us, yeah. Did, it, we had the chimps who were running a health spa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, we've covered the one who, who nicked a car to go on to Spain. Yep. To wow. sort his future out. All, all shite. Uh, the hairdresser, I think he's, you know, we've done that one, the little monkey hairdresser. This week yeah. we're looking at monkeys, um, that they're using, do you know like monkeys, they, they, know, they know, they know how like- I've lost uh, the will to live, Steve. Oh, well, I don't want to do it. <laughs> but, right? but, well, come on, just, come on. What are monkeys good at? What are monkeys good at? Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> well, running small businesses. <laughs> Uh, and very good, yeah. yeah, yeah, they love Spain. Oh, and foiling bank robberies. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're great. Well, something else they're good at, right, is like weighing up the situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! If you stick them in, a, in like, a, a field with loads of, like, obstacles on it, right, they're good at sort of, yeah, I can get over that, I know how to climb over that, I'll swing from there to there, that sort of thing, right? Okay. So the people in charge of somewhere... I thought, oh, I thought we can use that, we can use that skill, right? What? And what, what, what they've done is they've got a lo load of, uh, little monkeys, right? They've given an IQ test. Yeah. And the ones that score above 80, right? Get to produce this show next week. <laughs> <laughs> Join the army. Right. How do they join the army and what do they do? They just, um, what they do is they, they set little obstacle courses up for them, they do that, they do a cross-country run, they do, um, the a cross country test. run? Yeah. Okay. And then once they've done all that, they make them a little uniform, made to measure little uniforms. Long, yeah. Slightly longer arms, shorter legs than usual, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, basically then, then they try to use a gun and that sort of thing. Yeah, of course they are. <laughs> uh. You're talking rubbish again. This, this came, this came through literally you know, pretty late, late on, so... So you've not had a chance to cooperate all the facts, as usual? Just have a look. <sighs> right, uh, it's the inter the bit I'm looking for is, well, A, why are they doing it? Why are they doing it? Yeah. Why do we need monkeys in the army? And, secondly, why are we giving them guns? I'll yeah. just check to see if any of that... I don't know if that we only let gays in recently. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Um... Just have a look. I can't read it, I, I, there's too much pressure. But I'm it's rubbish. Just have a, just have a, just have a, but it's a, rubbish. Uh, they don't get- it's, again, it's the way that there are things that, that, that you- there are- there are animal cores, right? There are horses, there are dolphins, sea lions, uh, you know, there are lots and lots of animals in the army, but they don't have to pass <laughs> an obstacle test as such, and they're not taught to fire guns. We'll you straight away assume that they're gonna be, there's gonna be uh, loads of squads of men, and then just one little monkey in the middle. <laughs> Like, you know, he, did, he came second on the test. He's in. <laughs> He's in, boys. What do you think, Steve? You think you've read it? Well, as ever, Carl, this is an arbitrary email sent by one of our listeners. You know what Ricky and I think of them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so we're not really basing this on hard evidence. We're basing it on the ramblings of one of our listeners. Rubbish. Once again, lazy, rubbish, uncorroborated, nonsense, the stupid test that you got wrong. Rick, that sounds like monkey news to me. <laughs> <laughs>